watch is going to be so good, you'll call it... Fetcherific. Though, you can also call it... Cancel. Yep, because I've just been fired. <laughs> <laughs> Jay had just been crowned season three champion, but then... Where's my taco lounger? My brother Scruff Ruffman stole all my stuff! Scruff! And then I get this fax! Dear Mr. Ruffman, you're fired. Saying I've been canned! But hey, we had a good run, right? Lots of happy memories here, so I'm fine. Really. <laughs> Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show, and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. You know, I bet Arthur doesn't have to deal with stuff like this. <laughs> oh, you're right, Blossom. We have to start thinking like fetchers. We need perseverance, courage, and above all, a calm, focused mind. Let's get out the yoga mats. Oh, and we need Chet. Oh, Chet. Chet. Okay, where's Chet? You saw him last in the Fetch 3000? You mean the Fetch 3000 stolen by Scruff? But that means... <gasps> Chet! Where are you? <sighs> oh, he was the best assistant ever! Kind of? Okay, not so much. Oh, what is it now? It's a letter from Charlene! She's finally come to her senses! Oh, she wants me to be her date to the Poodle Ball! Oh, it's a very fancy ball, so I hope you have a pair of fancy pants. Not to worry, I have a closet chock full of... Hangers. Curse you, Scruff! You even took my pants?! Oh, no! She says she wants me as her date because I'm the host of a reality game show! If she finds out I've been fired, she'll dump me and... go with Spot Spotnik instead! Yes, the fact says I'm fired. I can read. Huh, that's strange. It's signed Ha Ha. Maybe it's all just a joke. Or wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at this. It says here our TV station was bought last week by the richest woman in Australia, Harriet Hackensack. Ha Ha. It must have been Harriet who sent this fax. Little is known about the reclusive Hackensack. She never leaves her hotel room. But she's also known to be very rich and a misos... 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 Mis what does it say, Blossom? Misosinist? A hater of dogs. What? How can anyone be a hater of dogs? Of course! Hackensack fired me because she hates dogs! Blossom, our mission is clear. We have to go to Australia, track down Hackensack, and change her mind about dogs so I can get my job back and keep my date with Charlene. Yes, I know Australia is far away. I guess you could call my plan far-fetched. Get it? Fetched? I... All right, so so you're coming, right? Was that a yes? You'll do it? Awesome! Our mission could be dangerous. And all we have is, uh, five cents and a moth. But I, Ruff Ruffman, and my trusty assistant. What? Oh, yeah. Supervisor. We solemnly swear that we shall not rest till Fetch is back on the air! So you've been fired? Now maybe you can get a real job. Grandma, hi! And hey, Fetch is a real job. Look, there's a cat grooming show that needs a fur sweeper-upper. I am not gonna sweep up cat fur, Grandma. I'm going to Australia to get my job back and that's final. Oh, I knew you'd say that. That's why I just bought back your Fetch computer thingy on the internet. You did? How? Your brother Scruff is selling all your stuff online. Oh, no. Someone just bought your pants. Grandma! You're the best! Oh, how can I make it up to you? Oh, you can parrot sit Jerry Geranium for a few days while I go to my spa. Okay. Ralph's out of a job. Have a good time, dears. Ralph should call his grandma more. Not now, Jerry. Chet, are you in there? 
I bet he's coming up with a brilliant plan for getting us to Australia. Green Machines, how to convert your doghouse into an environmentally sustainable vehicle on the cheap. Nice. Let's see, we can use wind power, solar energy, biodiesel? With the right engine, a car can run on used cooking oil? Really? Chet, you're back! So tell us what you found out. Why is Scruff selling my stuff on the internet? Okay, you're getting out some old leftovers, and you're gone. Hey, uh, Chet, you dropped a fried egg roll. What? You want it? It's kind of oily. <gasps> oil! Kowloon Restaurant! They have a couple of barrels of used oil in their back alley! Chet, you're a genius! We are going to Australia by harnessing the power of... Chinese food! Good job, guys. Not quite sure how it wound up looking like a chicken, but good job. All right, time to boogie. So long, backyard. Hello, Australia. Up, oh, wrong lever. <laughs> yes, ocean straight ahead. Not now, Blossom. These are crucial moments. We did it. The first doghouse converted into a submarine car. What? We didn't do the submarine car combo? We only did the car part. Oh, but that means... Oh, Chad, quick! Get something for the water! Okay, now get something useful! Pineapples? Ah, we're all down! Ah. Yeah, thanks for staying positive, Jerry. Don't worry, I'll think of something during the commercial. Oh, we don't have any commercials? Looks like Mike's thinking about the pineapple. Try it, if you want to. Blossom, is this really the time for watching television? He's going with the pineapple. Ooh, the Fetch Season 2 finale. Oh, hey, remember that? Oh, it's floating! <laughs> Who'd have thought pineapples float, right? Wait a minute. Pineapples float! Chet, you're brilliant! Quick, get a net! You know, it just goes to show you it pays to watch Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Because you never know when it'll save your life. Or at least salvage your floating chicken doghouse boat thingy. Anyway, now we can relax. What? We forgot that auditions for season four are today! 3,000 kids are coming to Studio G! Huh? I better call my audition specialist. Murray, hey! Listen, you ready to pick six new contestants? I don't know how you do it, but you are the best auditioner in town. I... What do you mean you're quitting? You got a replacement? Tank? Who's Tank? Wait! Oh, hi. I'm assuming you're Tank. Oh, boy. Murray really picked a winner. So, Tank, uh, out of town right now, so you're gonna have to audition some kids. Not many, you know, somewhere around, uh, 3,000. I need you to pick six to be our contestants this season. You up for that, buddy? Yes? No? Anyone in there? Okay, okay, good luck, Tank. Ah, uh, we're doomed. Ah, we're doomed! Ghost pirates! No, Jerry, we're doomed because a bulldog is running auditions and... You are! Just outside, but now with the internet, I don't have to be shouting from this ship. Well, you're not gonna attack us, right? I mean, my fetcher's lifted your curse in season three, remember? Hey, I'll be letting your chicken ship pass with just one tiny condition. I'll be wanting your parrot. What? <laughs> you mean Jerry? Hey, he's all yours. Uh, but I'll tell you something, he smears you in checkers. Ah, king me, Bobby. That's fine, just so long as I can replace this frog on me shoulder. Ribbit. What is it, Blossom? I made a promise to Grandma. Uh, well, yeah, but I mean, okay. Sorry, Black Buzzle. Deal's off. No parrot. What? I do have the Spiffy Veg T-shirt I can offer. Attack! Hey, don't you have anything better to do? Hey, it's, it's boring out here and see him. I'm awful lonely. Wait, you, you said you have internet? Well, that means you can go to pbskidsgo.org and check out my website. Website? 
You've never been to my website? Oh, it's got games, exclusive photos. It's even got a blog by yours truly. What be this Terminator? Eh, robot Rover? Oh, they're science games. They're awesome. Because, you know, even a ghost pirate needs to know a little science, right? So, uh, have fun with that. I'm gonna go this way. So, uh, bye. I think we lost him. Oh, and uh, Chet's made lunch, so uh, well done, Chet. Mmm. Ooh, that's a good fruit salad. What? Uh, Chet, we're not eating our flotation device, are we? Ah, uh, man, yes, we are. Ah, what's going on? We're stuck in a whirlpool? Yeah! So, Tank, how are the auditions going? Good, bad. Oh, that's a good shake. Listen, auditions are kind of really important. You know that, right? Uh, okay. Anywho, we might be out of town a little longer than expected. Just keep auditioning those kids. Now, guys, it could be worse. Remember how the Fetcher's boat sunk back in season one? But did they give up? No, because they were Fetchers. So, Blossom, Chet, Keep working on that signal fire. If we put it on our website, maybe we'll get rescued. Meanwhile, I'm pretty sure a deserted island means lots of dessert. <laughs> so I'll be right back with some pudding. Great Scott! That looks like a maximum security pound down there. Wait a minute, this isn't a deserted island after all. <gasps> this is none other than the most notorious canine lockup in the world! Hoodle Island! What's going on? Thought you could escape us, eh, Scruff? Hey, wait a minute. I I'm not Scruff. You have me mistaken for my identical twin brother. I'll get 20 years for stealing the pawns off of the famous Rolf Rothman. But wait, no. Wait, did you say famous? Come back! Wow. He actually kept pictures of both of us? Oh. <laughs> Is that cute or what? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's this? I need to hit all the banks? Hit the banks hard? And win glory for the Ruffmans? Oh no! I gotta stop my brother before he gets himself in huge trouble! But how? I'm stuck in here for 140 dog years! Hey, I know you. <gasps> Scruff, you old dog! I should have known! No pound can keep you in! <laughs> This may take a while. You will never believe what I've just been through. But I was pretty resourceful if I do say so, my... Well, guess some of that rough and know-how has been rubbing off on the two of you. All right, let's hoof it. We need to get to Australia and get my job back ASAP, because then we got to find Scruff and stop him from hitting all the banks. So let's go. Oops. <laughs> Wrong lever again. <laughs> Yeah, where are we? Australia! We made it! Woo! Here it is. Harriet Hackett Sachs Hotel. Hmm, but how am I going to get in if there's no dogs allowed? So? Am I a cat or am I a cat? No, not a cat. Oh yeah, cat music. Good idea. Okay. Feeling it now. All right. Definitely feeling it. Look at me. I can bounce just like a cat. Ew. I can lick the back of my paw just like a cat. <laughs> now watch this. I'm gonna leap onto that table and stand in the middle of someone's lunch, just like a real cat. How do you? <laughs> Blossom, we've got a flawless plan. This article says she doesn't like dogs because of rosebud. Nobody knows what that means, but I've brought a whole bouquet. Butter her up, then reveal I'm a dog, and smooth talk my way back into a job. <clears throat> room service. Oh, I wasn't expecting room service. Nor were you expecting flowers from a dog. From a dog. Just a moment. Blossom, my zipper's stuck. What's the meaning of this? I'm calling the police. No, oh, wait. Go to plan B, Blossom. Plan B. We're a couple of cats from Kalamazoo. What am I singing? I don't have a clue. Rabbit and bat, 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 Send more personal guards immediately. Ah, the door is locked. Oh, we're trapped. I don't know who the two of you are, but what you just did was fantastic. Oh, really? Oh, well, I mean, after 
all, I am the star of a... No, not you! You! The quiet one! You! Pudgy cut! I'm throwing you out! Cut! Well, Chet, this whole journey was a bust. Not only am I stuck in a cat costume, but Fetch is gonna be cancelled, and Charlene's gonna end up with Spotnik at the Poodle Ball. The worst part is that Blossom took a job with Hackensack. Talk about betrayal. <laughs> the sooner she's forgotten, the better. <laughs> Blossom! <laughs> what are you doing here? You took a job with Harriet just to get the inside scoop on Harriet's misogyny so you could help me get my job back? Oh, Blossom, I knew you'd never abandon me. Chet, see if we can find some tape. Um, so, why is she a misogynist? Why do I hate dogs when I was just a child? Rosebud was a sled I loved more than anything. One day, a neighborhood dog ran off with it. Since that day, I've detested all dogs. Thanks to that sled stealing canine, Murray. Murray? No wonder he quit when he heard we were meeting Hackensack. He used to always pull an old sled around. <gasps> And the name of that sled was Rosebud! And Blossom! I've been storing it in the basement ever since! This is perfect! I just have to bring that old sled back to Harriet and she'll love dogs again! Okay, people. We're going down. I forgot how much stuff is down here. Oh, there's all my ranch dressing cologne from season two. <gasps> there's the Rosebud sled! Yes! Watch out, Chet! Well, you've activated the treadmill from season two's exercise episode! Sushi trend from season one! The guacamole fetching droid from the time travel episode of season one is about to fall! Get out of the way! Dark guacamole crime. Rosebud! <laughs> Alright, knock out panic. Uh, I've got a slight repair catalog right here. That's white, Uncle Waff. Don't panic. As the elven warlock Mordor would say, Oh, the de Blanc in swimming. Okay, Glenn, what's your point? I am busy here. I have a solution to your woes, bud problem. Wait a minute. You have a really ugly cat in your doghouse. That's me. What's your solution? I need you to be a live action wall player. Oh, a LARPer again? Like when you sent my fetchers to Wings Castle last season? But this time, I want you to be a woozer. You want me to be a loser? No, I want you to wooze. You don't want me to win? Not lose, lose! Look, maybe when you get your braces off, I'll understand you better. Forget my braces! I'm talking about losing! Losing? Losing! Okay, you know what, never mind. Nephews. <laughs> Gotta love them. Okay. I gotta get a new sled. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, toboggans. One horse open sleighs. The luge. The... Wait a minute, hold on. The luge! Glenn wasn't talking about losing, he was talking about losing. Obviously. I have a luge right here. And it's all yours if you enter and win the World Luge Championship. Best as a troll. Of course. I could name your luge the Rosebud 2 and dedicate my sledding win in the luge championships to Harriet Hackensack. Such a noble canine sweating act would heal her memories of dogs and sweats. And she'd give me my job back. Glenn, it's brilliant. Well, I, I mean, it's a little far-fetched. Nope, it's just fetched. With Ruff Ruffman. <laughs> no, don't do it, Lottie. The Ruffmans must always stay away from the luge. Uncle McRuffmintosh, what are you talking about? A thousand years ago, in Scandinavia, a Ruffman ancestor got in a fight with a Norwegian ice fairy. A what? And ever since, a Ruffman hasn't gotten on a sled without a terrible accident. Oh, come on, Uncle, that's just nonsense. Nonsense? <laughs> nay, it's a thousand-year-old Ruffman curse. I don't say I didn't warn ya. So, Glenn, can I borrow your luge? Only if you dress up as a troll. Oh, man. I know what you're thinking, Blossom. I look better in my luge outfit than you. But it's not about fashion. It's about aerodynamics. Check out the new luge game on the Fetch website and you'll see. <gasps> look, that's the mystery luger known only as Racer X. Anyone who rides a luge is called a slider, not a luger. Got it? Hey, uh, speaking of which, uh, wh where are the brakes on the luge? I, I can't seem to find them. There are no brakes. <laughs> See you at the bottom, cat. The 
there aren't any breaks. All sliders line up for the World Nurse Championship. We're gonna go 90 miles an hour and there aren't any breaks? What kind of sport is this? Awesome book! It's Racer X and his partner, Racer Y! Hey! Your partner is just a dummy! Stay out of my way, cats! This is my race! All right, that's it! I'm not a cat! I'm a dog stuck in a cat costume! I'm none other than Ruff Ruffman, reality game show host! You're who? <gasps> Scrum! It's you! What are you doing here? And why'd you steal all my stuff? I needed money to pay for luge training so I can reverse the 1,000-year-old Ruffman curse put on us by a Norwegian ice fairy. Oh, I didn't see that coming. But what happened to hitting all the banks? Hitting snow banks is good luge technique. Oh, snow banks! Well, look, I need to win this race in order to get my job back. Yeah, well, I need to win to bring glory to the Ruffman name. And you're not gonna steal that glory, so get out of my way, brother. Nothing doing. Steer this thing to victory. Scruff, we won! Uh, actually, we came in last place. Wait a minute, then why is the crowd cheering us? Because we've still made dog history, brother. The first all canine luge team. Yup, by coming in last place, you're the biggest losers in the world. And by losers this time, I mean... Yeah, I know. You mean losers. Thanks, Glenn. Too bad we couldn't win. That was our last chance with Harriet. Hello? Miss Hackensack? You're calling because you were so moved by what Scruff and I did on the luge course with the Rosebud 2? Oh, great! So can I have my job back, please? What? Wait, didn't you fire me? But what about the fax? Huh. Harriet says she never sent me a fax. But it's signed, ha-ha. <gasps> so the letter was a joke after all. Who would have guessed? Ha! And do you know what that means? It means Fetch is still on the air. Oh, that's too bad, Ruffy. Oh, I did some sleuthing. If you want your pants back, you just have to call Spot Spotnik. He bought them. Spotnik, of course. He must have sent that fax to distract me, and now he's Charlene's date tonight wearing my pants! Wait a minute. But what Spotnik doesn't know is that those pants are so fancy, they even have a remote-controlled self-destruct mechanism! Pants destroyed. Well, Blossom, Spot got his comeuppance, the Ruffman Luge curse has been broken, and I got my show back. So life is good. Maybe even one day I'll get out of this stupid giant costume! Oh, hey, Tank. Hey, nice work. So these are the phone numbers, right? Well, we've got a show to do, so let's make some calls. Chet, hand me my phone. Hello? Hi, Isaac. This is Ruff Ruffman. Congratulations. You're going to be a new Fetcher on season four of Fetch. That is awesome. Hello? Bethany, great news. You're going to be a new Fetcher on season four of Fetch. Really? Hello? Dahlia, Ruff Ruffman here. Hi. You're going to be a new Fetcher on season four of Fetch. Thank you. Hello? Ryan, you might want to sit down for this one, buddy. You're going to be on Fetch. That's awesome. Hello, Liza. You're going to be a new Fetcher on season four of Fetch. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Sterling, how would you like to be a Fetcher? Well, congratulations. I, I got to tell my room. <laughs> Whatever. Put up with. I mean, just look at what Fetch is up against this season. This old fur. The fur is flying. The meow meow shampoo hour. Ooh, Henry Hotline. Henry, hi! Yes, I know I've got a lot of competition this season, but I've got a plan! The Lost Helmet of Victory! Legend has it that the possessor of this magical helmet will be invincible! Someone to find the Lost Helmet, beat the cat grooming shows and the ratings! Hello? Henry? What is this? <gasps> My person is building a fence to keep me in! How am I gonna find the helmet if I'm stuck in the yard? Ooh, Reality Show Magazine. I hear there's a big article on yours truly this week. 
What? They wrote about Nate instead. The host of Design Squad, Nate is funny and handy with a ratchet, unlike certain orange dogs. <laughs> Can't be talking about me, I got a yellow spot. Wait a minute, Blossom! Are you watching Design Squad? Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find to their alarm a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Jack, you want to stick to filing? And now, for the first time in Studio G, here come the season four contestants! He enjoys sculpture, Brian! Her friends describe her as funny. She'll have you in stitches, Bethany! She has a highly developed sense of smell, Talia! He's good at memorizing, Sterling! She goes bananas for bananas, Liza! His dog Lola can spin around like a ballerina, Isaac! Welcome to Fed! Awesome! Yeah. Yeah. Wow! Six new Fetchers! Hey, Rose! Yeah. Right. What season is this? Four! Man, how the time flies. I feel like it was only yesterday I was telling Khalil uh, to paddle. <laughs> well, you guys know how this show works, right? Yeah. yeah. I send you out on awesome challenges, then I give you points. And then, on the final episode, one of you six fetchers will become the fetch grand champion yes. and receive an amazing prize and will be immortalized on the wall of fame. Oh. Uh -huh. Actually, I don't have a theme song for the wall of fame yet. Oh, uh, I'm sure you guys know Blossom. Yeah. Hi, Blossom. Hi, Blossom. Hi, Blossom. Blossom's been with us for a few years now. Started out as my intern, and look at her climbing the corporate ladder. She so has uh, been promoted and uh, is now my boss. Still stings. <laughs> hey, you guys want to hear something really cool? Blossom has a crush on someone. Oh! Yes, you do, Blossom. Yes, you do. Nate from Design Squad. Oh! It's a PBS kids show about engineering. Nate couldn't even dream of the exciting show we've got today. Yeah! Here is the deal, Fetchers. Hey, Chet. Chet, my faithful assistant, has uncovered a master plan by my person to install a new security system to keep me yard bound by building a fence around my doghouse. That brings me to challenge number one, Bethany and Talia. I need you to learn everything you can about fencing because I'm not going to be fenced in. Your instructions are in the mailbox. Go for it, guys. There you go, nicely fetched. Challenge number two. Isaac, Liza, the way through nice. the new fence is over it. So today, you're learning about pole vaulting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox. Yeah. Go fetch! Bye, guys. Bye. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Brian and Sterling are staying behind in the studio today, but you guys are going to be eligible to win points of your own during the, the halftime, halftime quiz show. show. And in this ultra-secure box labeled Nate Keep Out, I keep the Fetch Fairness Guarantee. All the contestants compete for the same number of points by the grand finale. Outstanding, Brian. For the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the Triumph Tally. So, let's get up to date with Talia and Bethany. Yep, they're gonna help me get past that fence. And the way to do that is to learn about fencing. I think we need to find someone who knows how to build a fence. Um, excuse me, our friend Ruff wants us to build a fence. And we don't know where the supplies are or how to build a fence. Sure, follow me. I'll show you where the supplies are. So you're going to need a post digger. I think it's going to fit in here. Okay, let's go find some posts and the rest of the fencing material. Now we need a post to hold the fence up. This one here. That comes to a grand total of $119.83. Oh, how are we going to pay for that? You didn't give us money, Ruff. This was a bad idea. What are we going to do now? This is a disaster. Wait, what are you doing? You're texting the kids? Fencing Academy? There's a school that teaches about building fences? Awesome! What is that? It's a text. Head on over to the Rhode Island Fencing Academy. It's just a few blocks away. Blossom. 
Well, thanks anyway. Yeah, Bye. Thank you. What? Yeah, uh, I, uh, we had a whole last minute change there. So sorry about that one. <laughs> Maybe we better check in with the pole vaulters. Here comes a man with a very long pole and a helmet. And he's going, whoa, look at that! Oh, man! Oh, thank goodness that cushion was there. He's very lucky. Hey, are you Nate? I'm Nate. That's Nate! So, I'm the host of Design Squad. I'm also a pole vault coach. And third of all, I'm an engineer. So, wait a minute. He can pole vault and design stuff? Oh, man, he's cooler than me. How high do you think I was? 20 feet, maybe. I wish it were 20 feet. <laughs> it's a little closer to 15 feet. The pole vault's all about energy conversion. We want to convert kinetic energy into potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So if we have an object that's going out of speed, it's got kinetic energy. OK, so kinetic energy is energy that's in motion. Potential energy means stored energy. And there's lots of different ways to store energy. You can use chemicals, heat, electricity. And in the case that we're interested in, gravity can also store energy. Potential energy is energy that's stored for later. Got it. I got a lot of stored energy right here. Also, a lot of stored Mushu. So this demonstration will show how kinetic energy can be transferred into potential energy in the form of height. Don't you mean the other way around, that potential energy can go into kinetic energy? Here's kinetic energy going into potential energy. Wait, hold up. I don't get it. If you throw the ball up, then once it's up there, it has a lot of potential energy so that it can come back down. With a lot of kinetic energy. Nicely done, Isaac. Tell me what's going on when I roll the marble down the track. It's rolling. And then it rolled back. When you move your hand over and then it starts moving, then that's kinetic energy. And then when it reaches the top, it's potential energy because it kind of has a tendency to stop, pause, and then come back, creating kinetic energy. So if we wanted this to go as high as possible, what would we want to do? We want to put a lot more kinetic energy into it. Yes, and how would we do that? We'd push our arm a lot faster. Uh-huh. Aha! The faster you go, the more kinetic energy you'll have, which you can convert into potential energy, which means you can vault higher! Is that all? I can clear that fence. Blossom, watch this. Just need to run fast enough. Rip the knee! Ah-ha-ha! Ah, that hurts. Wow, cool! Fencing! Oh, yeah! Fencing! I told you fencing would make a good challenge. Hey, how are you doing? Yes, my name is Alex. Good to see you. I'm the owner here and the head coach. This is Maddie. Maddie's one of our competitive fencers. She fences Hello. actually all over the country. This is James right here, and James is one of our competitive fencers as well. Are you guys familiar with the, the word fencing? Sword fighting? Yeah, it's kind of like sword fighting. It's not only like sword fighting, it is sword fighting. If I hit you with my weapon, I got a touch. You've heard people say touche? Yes. Yes. All right, that's what it means. I've been touched. You guys are going to be fencing what's called the epee. This is the dueling sword. We have this wire. It's called a body cord. And the, the body cord plugs into the epee here. There's some wires that run down the groove of the epee right to the point. When you press this point, a circuit gets completed. The body cord goes through his glove right here. It's actually up his sleeve. So the body cord comes out of the back of his jacket and actually plugs into the reel right here. So anytime James hits someone, the light comes on. Let's take a look at some of these weapons. Let's be careful, ladies. Do you know what the weapons in fencing are called? F.A. F.A. is correct. That's the one you guys are going to use today. We saw James and Maddie fencing that. The one that's really skinny and fast. That's the saber. I don't know what the third one. The foil. All that remains for us to do now is teach you guys how to move, stand, walk, talk, and act like a fencer. These are beginner poles. We're not going to worry about bending them yet. OK, looks like the beginner's poles are a little shorter. Before the pole hits. What we're going to do is run through some drills. We hold the pole like so and we run square to the pole. All right, let's just walk down and back. It's kind of weird. It does feel a little bit weird. You gotta get used to it. Looks like you're charging the gates of Mordor. And next we're gonna learn how to plant, and this is a really critical part of the vault. It's gonna be oh, here. they're gonna learn how to plant their poles in the ground nice. so they can swing up. We're gonna start with our right foot. Right foot. We're gonna say okay. and, 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 two, two, and, and, one. One, leg up. Oh, little step. This could be dangerous. Ready? And go. And two. And two. Nice. I'm sure once I start doing the runway, I'll get a little tense. Wow, don't be tense. You've got Nate there. He can do anything. He's perfect. Isn't that right, Blossom? Anyway, we're back here in Studio G with Brian and Sterling, yeah. who are about to earn points of their own in the first halftime quiz show of season four. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, let's break down the rules here. 50 points are available. I'm going to ask you 10 questions. Each question is worth five points. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know the answer to a question, you can skip it. If we have time, we'll come back to it. You work together as a team. Put those brains and meld them into one brain. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go. Then, let the halftime quiz begin. 
Touche! What does that actually mean? It means touch. Excellent. How high does Nate jump? Over 15 feet. Yes! Potential energy is either energy in motion or stored energy. Stored. Yes! What is the pole vaulting term which describes putting the pole in the ground? Mount. Oh, sorry. True or false? The faster something moves, the more kinetic energy it has. True. True. Excellent. What are the three types of weapons used in fencing? Epe, foil, and savior. Nice. Nate's pole was different from Isaac's and Liza's in what important way? It was, it was, it was taller and like longer. Yes, good, good. True or false? Energy can only be converted from potential energy to kinetic energy. True. False. 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 Yes. Now we're out of time. Ah. Oh. Oh. Man. I'm exhausted. All right, gentlemen, keep those chins up. Let's go over the one you got wrong. What is the pole vaulting term which describes putting the pole in the ground? I was looking for plant. Plant. But hey, you got seven out of ten. That is 35 points. Pretty good for a first quiz. These are crucial points that'll make the difference in the grand finale. Now let's see if Talia and Bethany are ready to take a stab at fencing. <laughs> Get it? I'll <laughs> stab. The first position we have to learn is called the ready position. So your heels actually touch one another. The front foot points straight ahead. It's like the letter L. Take your weapon hand, right like this, elbow bent. Take your non-weapon hand, put it up over your head like so. My it looks like heel, ballet positioning. Not, not that I would know anything about that. This is called the on guard position. When you're on guard, do you notice that your body is sort of turned away from me? All right, that's good. Uh, if you face me straight on like this, how easy? More surface. There's more surface to hit, right? Now also, when I'm standing like this, look where my weapon is, right? In front of you? It's right in front. So anytime you want to get to me, you got to deal with the weapon, right? I'm going to tap the foil on the ground. When I tap it once, you'll make an advance. Good. When I tap it twice, you'll retreat. Oops, back foot first, all right? Okay. It's kind of like Simon Says, but with ginormous swords. That's retreat, retreat, retreat. Ah, attack, attack, retreat, retreat. Attack! Forwards! Backwards! Forward! Oh! Oh! oh Talia went backwards, but she should have gone forward. You guys are natural fencers. Wow, did you hear that? Natural fencers! And their first challenge! It is time for you to choose your weapon, ladies. There you are, very nice. This is so exciting, Ralph. We're gonna get to this swords. One, two, three, presto! <laughs> ah, the magic of television. So are you two ready to start practicing against real people? Yes. Okay, easy. Oh, man, here we go. So advance. And advance again. Good. Let's see. Reach out. Can you touch him? If not, take another advance. Good. Extend and touch. Pow. There you go. Recover. Hey, Blossom, want to fence with me? Wait, why do you look so enthusiastic? All right, what we're going to do is put up the soft bar. It's a bungee. It's just stretchy, so if you crash into it, there's no problem. The most important thing we're worried about right now is speed, so we're going to use a stopwatch to try and estimate how fast we're actually going on the runway. So you ready to clear some heights? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that looks dangerous. Get up there, Isaac! Uh, ah! yes. oh, yes. So you back. lost a little bit of speed as you came in. Yeah, yeah, slow down right at the last second. So keep that speed up all the way through, and you'll, and you'll get the peak height you need. Oh, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Go, baby, go! Over, baby! Oh, nice work. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it, you can do it! Oh, oh, easy. Ah. You slowed ah. down a little bit on the way in. Yeah, yeah you can see you're slowing right. down right at the end there. Come on, Liza, speed! <laughs> Nicely done. Yes, you did go over. Yay! Nice work. Oh, well, Nate's gonna try. Yippee. Not so good. What am I doing wrong? You guys tell me. Coach me. Um, you're chopping your steps at the end. That gave you less kinetic energy, so you had less potential energy going into the air. Who knew there was so much science involved in pole vaulting? And there goes Nate, up and over. Show off. Yeah, you made it that time. Woo! Well, let's take this information and compare it with the speeds that we recorded for the runways and actually graph it out and see if we can see a relationship between kinetic energy on the runway to potential energy in the height. All right. Cool. Um, we could do a line graph. On the x-axis, we have kinetic energy, kinetic energy for the speed. Mm -hmm. And on the y-axis, we have potential energy for the height you went. OK, so our speed is the number of feet we went divided by how many seconds it took to get there. So you can figure out your speed if you know the distance you've traveled and how long it took. For the first one, I ran 22 feet in 1.9 seconds. So that gives me 11.6 feet per second. And I rose five feet. Now my second point, I did 22 feet 
and I ran that in 1.75 seconds, mm -hmm. which would give us about 12.6. And then so, what was the height you cleared? Um, I cleared six feet. So it seems the more speed that I have my kinetic energy directly corresponded to the potential energy I had or how much height that I made. The more speed, the more height. Okay, so I had 21 feet divided by 1.85 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's about 11.4 feet per second. And I rose 0.6 and, and then I had 21 feet divided by 1.69 seconds, which is about you did, uh, 12.4. 12.4 feet per second. And that time you jumped about five, five. six. It seems like her correlation was like exactly like mine. I think you can still see that correlation of more speed co corresponding to more height. All right, let me call these guys. <clears throat> what's happening? Hey, Ruff, what's up? Hello, Nate. Hello, Ruff. Guys, think you're done? Yeah, pretty uh, much. Yeah, we graphed all our points. Well, you're not done yet. You think you guys could clear, let's say, a fence? What do you think? Sure. All right, well, we're going to find out. I'm going to send you guys a fence. Tank's bringing it. Good job, Tank. Oh. <laughs> Think you can clear it? Yes. Thank you, puppy. High five. That's why we have Tank. He's a bruiser. And looks good in a vet shirt. When you're on guard right here, when Maddie sticks out her arm to hit you, you're going to push her blade away. After you've pushed her blade away, guess what you're going to do? Lunge? Yeah, you're going to hit her. Go for it. That's right. After a parry, you lunge. Wow, okay, I blocked your shot. Now taste some of my thunder! Well, I may not be able to jump over my fence, but I think I've found myself a couple of bodyguards. <clears throat> hey, guys, come on over here. Now, look, you guys are doing really well so far, but you're not done yet. I am making you the two Fetchketeers. There will be a battle. One will stand, one will fall. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> one of you will be on Team Rough. The other will be on Team Blossom. <laughs> Your gear's around the corner, so let's do it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I apologize oh for the Rick James hairdo. Sorry, Ruff, but I'm on Blossom's team. And I am on your team. That's right, Bethany. Now, Blossom, I know I look scary in this outfit, and you're not very experienced with this, so I'll go easy on you. Okay, where are you? Ow! Take this! Yeah! Ow! Yeah! Ow! Do you want to go first? No, you can. That's it. Whoa! Oh, uh, oh man! Is he okay? I don't think it worked. Oh, he's all right. Okay. You slowed down a little bit in here. Remember our kinetic energy? Yeah. Got to get that stuff up so you can get the max potential energy. Liza, you're up. You ready? Come on, Liza. As you can zone it. Hello! Yes! Who's over the fence? Whoa! You did it! She went totally airborne. That was awesome, Rob. Thanks for the fence. Hey, my pleasure. Isaac, I think you have it. Are you ready? Be the pole. Be the pole. Over that fence, buddy! Yay! Yes! Awesome! Yeah, Ruff! Yeah! Ruff, that was wicked fun. I'm gonna do it again. That's the way to get this show going! Yay! That's right, Liza. I'm gonna be just like you. I'm gonna pull vault over that fence. I'm gonna find the helmet. Great job, guys. That was incredible. Thank you so much, Nate. Very welcome. Thanks a lot. See you guys in the studio, G-Ruff. Thank you, Nate, for helping them. You're very cool. He's smiling at Blossom. Everybody, this is Bethany. She's going to be representing Team Ruff. Woo! Team Ruff! All right, and over here we've got Talia, who's going to represent Team Blossom. Yay, Talia! Boo, Blossom! Oh, Blossom, I'm kidding. And now, the battle will begin. On guard. On guard. Go! Fence! Fence. Oh, there's some contact. Very good. Oh, here's a lunge. Lunge and a parry. Nice parry. Good lunge. Oh, we have a touch. Touch. Oh, Team Blossom has yes, drawn yes, first yes. blood. Yes. Oh, all right. Touch. Oh, all right. Touch. One for the Team Ref. Oh, all right. Touch.
have a point, and it's Team Blossom! Woo! Yeah, Blossom! Um, yay! You both did awesome! It's great to have you here, guys. Thank I you. hope we get a chance to see you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Head back to Studio G, and we'll see you there. Uh. All right, Talia. Okay, Bethany, we'll see you back at Studio G. Great job on your first challenge! And now let's bring back our fetchers! No fence could stop this duo, Isaac hey, and Liza! Welcome back, guys! Welcome back! Hey, where are your poles? Uh, oh, we kind of left them there. Ah, uh, man, I wanted you guys to pole vault in. <laughs> yeah, uh, like we could pole vault through that thing. Uh, good point. They turned a little old game show into a swashbuckling adventure! Bethany and hey, Talia! Lunch, ladies, lunch! So, the first show, are you ready to dish out some points? Yeah! Isaac and Liza, we'll start with you for being good sports and learning from a host who's much cooler than me. Oh. 20 points! Yeah. And for trying and trying again until you converted enough kinetic energy into potential energy to bolt over that fence, 60 points! Yeah. That gives you a total of 80 points! Yeah. Bethany and Talia, for daring to have weapons swished in your direction, 30 points! Yeah. And in the final duel, Talia came out on top five to three. I am awarding 10 points for each touch, so that means Bethany gets 30 points, and Talia, I knight thee with 50 points. Yes, that brings your totals to 60 points for Bethany, 80 points for Talia. Good job. What time is it? Bonus points! Today's five bonus points go to the contestant who managed to exhibit grace and panache, even while crashing into a fence. Whoa! Uh, yeah. Isaac, with 85 points, you're today's daily winner. Yeah. Yeah. Now then, Isaac, I have here two photographs of Nate. Under one Nate, a fabulous prize. Under the other, the worst prize ever. Ever! Ever, ever. ever. Which Nate is it gonna be, Isaac? I'll go with B. Then step on up to the mailbox and retrieve your prize. Ralph, there's nothing in there. Oh, oh, man, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, there you go, try it. Okay. Oh, what is this? Oh, oh nice. bummer! A signed poster. Well, I guess you didn't get the that good so prize. Cool. Yeah, what? That's cool? You, you like that? Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, well, to each his own, good for you. Enjoy the poster of him. All right, folks, well, that's the end of an exciting episode of Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Great yeah! job on the challenges. We will see you next time from Studio G. I'm Ruff Ruffman. We're out of here. Yeah! Bye. 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 Well, I didn't learn about fences, but I did learn how to pole vault over them. What's this? An inscribed pole vaulting pole? Dear Ruff, thanks for letting me be on your incredible show, Love Nate. Wow, we should bring him back for every episode. Oh, wait a minute, what am I thinking? Oh, Blossom, I'm kidding. Nephew, I've got a new clue on the whereabouts of the helmet of victory. But we have to act fast, the various forces are... Are what? Uncle! Blossom, Chet, we have to go... F what, it's the end of the show? Ah, man. All right, another time. Are you feeling hungry for lunch? Then Ruff's got a hunch what you're wanting. One little nibble will show. Your old kibble will have to go. So order your Ruff meal today. It comes with a handle cause it's heavy. The Ruff meal's the best in the world. The Rough Meal's great, it's really great, so buy the Rough Meal. Yeah! That commercial was gold, solid gold. Well, okay, it did seem to be missing a little pop. You know, a little zing. Chet? Sorry, buddy, your kazoo just isn't cutting it. The problem is the Rough Meal itself. But Blossom, look at all the exciting packaging. In fact, I think I'll have a Rough Meal right now. Just as soon as I can get through this wrapper and this one. Ah. Okay, where's the food? Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. 
didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Uh, Jed, probably should have stuck with a bicycle. And here come the contestants now. She said I was good at mimicking people. Wait a minute, that was her mimicking me. Anthony. He might be embarrassed to hug his parents in public, but would he be embarrassed to mime on national television? I say... His favorite juice? Grapefruit. Sterling! She says she blushes a lot when she feels self-conscious. Liza! His favorite dessert is ice cream sundaes. Brian! She tried to train her neighbor's cats. It didn't go well. Are we surprised? Tell ya! Let's get an update on the scores. Tied for fourth with 35 points is Brian and Sterling. Bethany in third place with 60 points. Liza and Talia tied for second with 80 points. And Isaac in first with 85 points. Hello, Fetcher. Hey! Well, today's episode is definitely going to be lunch-erific. Lunch-erific? Three of you are going to help launch my new lunch in a box. It is called, are you ready for it? The Rough Meal. Oh! Dun, dun, dun. Delicious. In fact, lucky contestants, it's nothing less than challenge number one. Yeah! Isaac, Sterling, and Talia. Over to your left is a big box of rough meals Whoa. that Tank put in the red wagon early this morning. Now, don't worry, the packaging ensures the rough meal can last 50 years without spoilage. This is Rolando. He's a master chef at the renowned Johnson & Wales Cooking School. Your job, contestants, will be to record all the huge compliments Rolando makes about the rough meal, because then I can use those comments in my advertising. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go fetch! Hey, hey guys. guys. Bye. <laughs> go see you. Careful with that, careful. Now then, fetchers, getting Master Chefs excited about the rough meal is only one challenge. Who else do we need to get excited? The entire population of America! Yeah! And thus, challenge number two. Bethany, my rough meal commercial is nothing without a good jingle. Ooh. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Yeah, Bethany, I'm going alone today. What's up? That is a very important stick. Do not lose it. Uh, trust me, you'll find out when you get there. Is she gone? <laughs> Bethany doesn't know this, but she's going to be working on the rough meal jingle with Keith Lockhart, the conductor of the Boston Pops. Woo! And as determined by the Fetch 3000, Brian and Liza have stayed yes. behind in the studio today, but they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. And for Brian and Liza, not only will they receive free rough meals, but with every rough meal, the Fetch Fairness Guarantee, which states all the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. So, for the four contestants out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake and the triumph tally. So let's get on the old monitor and have some lunch. Hello, Hello yes I am. What do we have here? So we rough have meal? some rough meals. Okay. Courtesy of Rough Rough Meal. Mm-mm, the rough meal. That's a big package, let's, let's open it up. How's that? Yeah, that works. Look at how perfectly wrapped they are. Rough meals are Turkey, ham. The rough meal is for the gang on the go. You open it, you eat it, and you throw it away. What could be better? Look at that. Ah, this is a, like a packaged lunch. Turkey sandwich. Fruit juice. Cheese and crackers. Strawberry cereal. Oh, and a banana. How many people do you think this meal is for? One. Let's look at packaging. What do we have? Well, Aluminum, well, right? Plastic. Paper. Styrofoam peanuts. Yep. Get your styrofoam peanuts and your peanut peanuts. Yeah, I know. Everything is individually wrapped with plastic or some sort of uh, material. But it's to protect it. If you will please notice that uh, nothing broke. Do we need all no. this packaging? No. no. It's not very healthy for the earth. Okay, so we need to think about that. There's Keith, the famous conductor. Trombone. French horn, trumpet, I know my instruments. And here comes Bethany. Bethany, how are you? Welcome to Tanglewood. You must be Keith. I am Keith. From, from the 4th of July. That's the one. Look, I'm a conductor. Not a conductor. The conductor of the Boston Pops. Hello, super awesome. Your challenge today is to learn how to be a conductor. Now, what is this? Um, uh, it's a stick. That is an official fetch with Ruff Ruffman stick, my friend. 
You can use it for conducting, or you can carry it around in your mouth. Uh, Ruff was right. We do use a stick when we're a conductor. But uh, this is a slightly fancier stick. It's called a baton. And baton is the French word for stick. Baton means stick, and I gave her a stick. Just, you know, just a little more sticky. What would happen to an or orchestra if there was no conductor? The job is like, a lot like two other jobs you might know more about. One of them is the coach of a sports team. You can have really talented athletes all over the field. But if you don't have one person saying, I think this is the play we should run, then it's a disaster, right? The last thing you need is like, you know, your French horn player, he cuts right, you're throwing left, next thing you know, the oboe is taking the ball back the other way and scoring a touchdown. Or a director of a play. You could have great actors and actresses on the stage, but if nobody was saying, this is what this means, you should be turning and dealing with him, looking at it from the outside, then it would, the, the play would make no sense. So a conductor is kind of like a director. Right on the set, please. I need more energy from you, Blossom. And action. Action. Banana. From, it's from Costa Rica. Why is it bad if it's from Costa Rica? Because it had to be shipped. So they had to ship, ship it. it all the way here, which burns Take gas, fossil which fuel. is fossil fuels, which also emits CO2 in the air. We can get some of our food from far away, but we just don't want to get the bulk of our food from far away. Right. Because when we burn fossil fuels, it contributes to global warming. Some food like has to come from a faraway place, right? Yeah, because of the climate. So, you know, in New England, we can't grow citrus fruits, so we have to get it from Florida. And we're going to pull out a map so we can really look at this. The USA. Let's grab the raisins. It's California seedless raisins. The raisins are coming from the San Joaquin Valley. This region produces about one third of the produce in America. Let's see the cheese. Cheese regions are Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and then Vermont is another one. Yeah, the pineapple. The majority of our, our pineapple comes from Hawaii. This one's made in China. Yeah, that's about as far as ways you can get to this country. So it takes a tremendous amount of fuel to get that. So that's probably not a very good green product. Yeah. Green? Of course my meal isn't green. Look, banana, yellow, sandwich bread, white. Green means good for the environment. Oh, uh, OK. So we want to reduce the packaging and minimize the energy that it takes to produce the food. Right. So we're keeping us healthy while keeping the environment healthy. Yeah, it's like the best of both worlds. Yeah. Since you're a chef, where do you get all of your like cooking ingredients from? The foods that I prepare in my fine dining restaurants are focused on local, fresh ingredients because they're at the peak of freshness and they always taste better. Local, fresh ingredients are good for the environment and they taste better. Well, my rough meals taste good. Um, sort of. All musicians in the orchestra interpret the music, so eventually somebody has to say, I think this is how fast fast is in this piece. I think this is how slow this is. And that's my job. None of them were looking at you. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing. Well, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me tell you how, how important it is that they look at me. Ready? Everybody close your eyes. <laughs> uh, what? Hey, I don't hear anything. Wait a minute, they're not playing. Wow, they really need a conductor. Without him, they wouldn't even know when to start. What musicians do is they use what's called peripheral vision. You know how you can see your hand over here? They have to watch the music. You see how many notes they have to play in this piece? They look at the music and they look over the top of their stand and they see the gestures. And it's my job to make the gestures clear enough so they don't have to take their eyes off the music and look at me like that. Okay, I'm using my peripheral vision to avoid walking into the Barker Lounger. I Whoa, check! Oh! oh, man, I didn't see ya. Hold the baton in your right hand. Keep your arm nice and relaxed, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you to imagine kind of a funny thing. An invisible table right here. Now, your baton rests on top of that until it's ready to go. Now, you might ask, how do they know how to start at exactly the same time? It takes this amount of time to go to the top and the same amount of time to go back. So when it comes to the top and starts to turn around, they say, oh, I've got exactly that much time till I play. Oh, okay. Okay, if I take the hand away, Let's have you try this. Maestro, if you please. Bravo! Bravo! A beautifully conducted note. Hello? Hello, Fetchers. Hello, Chef Rolando. I bow in your presence. Well, Ruff, I will not endorse these packaged meals. You won't? Why not? We can produce a meal for 50 people on less waste than what we have in these two box lunches. Oh, you can, can you? 50 people. Well, I just happen to have 50 kids at the Boys and Girls Club who are waiting to test out my new rut meals. No, that's not good! Oh, that's not good! Fetchers, you must make rough meals that create less waste, use local, fresh ingredients, and still measure up to the Rough Roughman high standards of deliciousness. So, go 
That you better meal. We have to make it out of the foods that he had because those are gross. Yeah. We could probably find similar foods that are a lot healthier and a lot more local. Where so. would we go to get those foods? One of those open air markets where there's like tents. Are you talking about a farmer's market? I don't know, yeah? yeah? But before we get our ingredients, let's find out how much waste we have here in these boxes. Okay. 14, 14 pounds. pounds. It's like 14, yeah. It's like seven pounds per meal. Huh, maybe I did overpackage them. So do you think we can beat that? Yeah, Definitely. I think Definitely. we can beat that. Let's right, go! Okay. And as they go to the farmer's market, we will go to Studio G, where Brian and Liza can earn some points of their own in the halftime quiz show. Oh, yeah. Let's brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Then let the quiz begin. All right. Name two reasons that my rough meals weren't environmentally friendly. They had way too much, like, styrofoam and stuff, and then they also, um... Oh, they were from different states. Yeah, so, so it took more time it to get CO2. CO2. Correct. Why is it bad for the environment to get most of our food from faraway places? Because it emits CO2 in the air when you bring it over from yeah. ships and planes and such. Yes, yes, yes. Name two jobs that being a conductor is similar to. Um, being a, um, director on stage and being a, um... Uh, what is it? Skip. Skip. Okay, where do the raisins and the rough meal come from? New York, New York. California. They were seedless Californian raisins. Yes! Raisins. How much waste did my two rough meals That's produce? Right. 40 pounds. Yes! What does baton mean in French? Stick. Good. Tell ya, Isaac and Sterling have to produce a meal for how many people? 50. Yes! Where did Talia, Isaac, and Sterling go to get ingredients for their lunch? The farmer's market. Right. Name a kind of horn in the orchestra. French? The French horn, yes. Oh, we are out of time. Oh. And the Fest 3000 says, 8 out of 10, yeah. 40 points. Okay, let's go over the one you got wrong. Name two jobs that being a conductor is similar to. You got director of a play, and we were looking for sports coach. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, will Bethany get a handle on conducting? Or is she ready to pass the baton? Let's find out. All right. Music is divided into regular intervals of time that we call bars or measures, okay? Now, a march is in two. There are two beats in every one of those measures. Why is a march in two? Because you have two feet. Yes! <laughs> You're about the first person who's ever gotten that question right the first time. What if you have four feet? Say, Chet, do you even have feet? One, two, one, two. So we need to come up with two different directions for our beats in each bar. So they always know which one is the first beat and which one is the second beat. Because when I'm conducting in two, you'll see, here's my first beat. And then it kind of skips out to the side and my second beat hits the table again. Your first beat goes this way and your second beat goes that way. How oh, she's doing it, Bethany is conducting! Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, well, you got a lot of stuff right, but, it, you know, you, it's a hard thing to learn to do in an hour. Okay, uh, Bethany needs a little practice. All right, now I'll give it a whirl. And I need practice, too. Here we are at the farmer's market. We need to see what we have first before we come up with a menu. That's the best way to do it. One thing that we always keep in mind when we're producing a local fresh menu is that we want to keep it simple and let the flavors and the ingredients speak for themselves. I got two students from the Green Collaborative at Johnson & Wales, hey, Catherine, hey. Catherine and Stacy, and they're here to help. Hey guys, look what Ruff gave us. It's some reusable bags for the produce at the market. And some money to buy lunch with. Yeah. A little green so we can go green. <laughs> All right, here we have the bread, some uh, l lettuces. Do you guys have any ideas for these, for the menu? Maybe some, like, sandwiches with lettuce. So how long ago was this stuff fixed? We fixed them earlier today, this morning. Nice, fresh local ingredients, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Uh, we grow our garlic on our farm. It's about 70 miles away. We actually make six different varieties of pesto with our garlic. We can use some, like, bread, right? Yeah, bread. Like a sandwich? Yeah. None of this stuff is packaged, so it doesn't yeah, eat there's, waste. there's no packaging, right? Yeah. These, are, these are natural products, and it's, it's very, very healthy for you. So make chocolate. Yeah, look at that. That guy's selling chocolate from his bike. Like a choco sickle. This is a bicycle, and that's how you transport all of this. This is how I came from my factory. Well, that's a bicycle. I didn't, oh, I didn't even see that. Like, it's like really good for the environment because instead of using a car, you like ride a bike, so it just emits fossil fuels and stuff. Cool bike. Too bad dogs can't eat chocolate. What do you guys think about a menu? You have any ideas? Yes, the menu. Ooh, can we have that candy that fizzles in your mouth? Now? Could we make like a pesto sandwich? Cause it's really fast. So just spread the pesto on. We're gonna start out with a soup. All right, we're gonna make the soup out of berries. And in a berry soup. Okay. Yep. And then we're going to finish it off with a sandwich made with a pesto mayonnaise, beautiful sliced heirloom tomatoes, and fresh mozzarella cheese. Oh, you have me at mozzarella. Now, another thing conductors have to show is dynamics. Dynamics are how loud or soft 
something that's... Wait a minute. You can increase the volume while they're even playing! Hey, let's put together what we've learned so far, okay? You think you can do this? So am I gonna be speeding them up and slowing them down? You can do whatever you want. You're the conductor. One, two, three, up. Hey, Bethany's actually getting this. When Bethany's hand goes higher, the band plays louder. And when it goes lower, they play softer. But she's maintaining the same tempo. Tired. It was harder than it looks. Most of them are. When I, when I watched... oh, let me give Keith a call. Hmm, just a second. Hello? Hey, Keith, it's Ruff. Ruff, how you doing? So, what do you think? Is she ready for the next challenge? Yeah, I think she's ready. Okay, I'll see you on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the next guest conductor of the Boston Pops. Yup, the next guest conductor of the Boston Pops. Check it out. Gotta have the appropriate wardrobe. Wow. I'm getting nervous. You'll be great. I need to, I need to sit down. Okay, we have 30 minutes to produce this meal. Ruff sent these over. I have hair nets. Looks like Isaac made it a nose there. Oh. And I have aprons. <laughs> what I want you guys to be mindful of is that we need to have three piles of waste. Recycled products, trash that's gonna go into the landfill, the things that we can't recycle. And we also have just compostable products. All right, so you're making the soup. You two are making the sandwiches. First we wash our hands, then we start cooking. Okay, we've got 30 minutes to make a healthy lunch for 50 kids. Hurry. Sure. Don't spill any of the fruit, guys. Get it in there in the blender. Let's go, let's go. We have like zero time. This is fresh mozzarella. I got seven slices out of that one. We have five minutes until we have 50 mouths to feed. So fetchers, hurry! Okay, we have the cheese and tomatoes and bread. We have soup. That looks beautiful. These are very different from my rough meals. Okay, guys, these were made from recycled materials. Time's up! Yep, and we here we go! Okay. There are the sandwiches. The There's the soup. Oh, oh, man, there are the kids! Oh, hello, beloved fans of my program. Hi, guys. We got plates. Here you go. You're welcome. Okay. This is a totally organic, healthy fruit soup. It looks tastes really good. It's very good. Delicious. Woo! This is like the best thing ever. We would bring some back to you, Ruff, but they kind of ate it all. What? No soup for me? Oh, can you save me a sandwich at least? Are you ready to do this? Yes. Okay, I got three things for you to remember, okay? Number one, keep the rhythm with your body. Mm -hmm. Number two, make your gestures really clear and consistent. And number three, have fun. We'll see you out there, okay? Okay. That's right! Have fun! I'm just wait, I'm, I'm just waiting for, to get a chance to go out on stage, and I'm I'm actually really excited. <laughs> I got to conduct a, um, the Boston Pops. <laughs> ah! Ah! This is Bethany. Look at them cheering her on. Oh, my. Bethany is going to conduct. Blossom, hold my hand. Wow, listen to that entire orchestra! That sounds so good! Oh! Oh! Bravo! Bravo! Somebody throw her a flower! Somebody... Don't a bow! Oh, I love it! Great job, Bethany! <laughs> See you back in Studio G! We have to weigh the trash, the, the waste that we made, and we have to compare it to Ruff's meal that he made earlier. We're dealing with compostable spoons and bowls and plates, so that's gonna all go in the compost pile. Wait, what's he mean, compostable? Compost is material that breaks down and becomes part of the soil. So Wait, so those plates can eventually feed no plants? Ah, that's pretty cool. No need to thank me, just keep watching the show. <laughs> this is our waste. We got recyclables. Uh, I think these are compostable. And then those are just waste. Wait a minute. The only stuff that's not recyclable or compostable are those lids? That's the only waste they have? 
Even though we use paper plates, which took energy to make, we can put them back into the environment. Excellent. Let's weigh our oh, waste. Look at it. Look at it's actually about not even a half an ounce. Less than half an ounce? For 50 kids? I had 14 pounds for two kids. You won the challenge. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. job, Fetchers! Yeah. 50 lunches in the bag. And you didn't even use bags. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See you back at Studio G, Russ. Head on back to Studio G. Nicely done. Let's welcome back our contestants. These hard-working foodies weren't just noodling around. They're Talia Sterling and Isaac. Hey, guys. And who just conducted the pops? Bethany. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Let me see that bat ball. Conduct me. I think it's time to give out some points. Yeah. Tally time. We start with Talia, Isaac, and Sterling. I'll put none of this stuff as package. You chose your ingredients thoughtfully, oh, then created a lunch for 50 while creating less waste than a rough meal for one. For your successful efforts in making a sustainable lunch, 85 points. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Bethany, not everyone goes out and conducts the Boston Pops, you know. You know what they told me? What was that? I'm the first kid in history to get to conduct the Boston Pops. Ever? Ever. That is awesome. You deserve to be the first kid conductor, and you know what that means? 80 points! Yeah, yeah Bethany. Bethany. But is that all the points a dog can give? No. 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 Bethany, would you conduct me into the next sentence? What time is it? Bonus points! Yes, today's five bonus points go to the contestant who had the game-making idea for where to buy the lunch ingredients. What about one of those open-air markets where there's, like, tents? Talia! Yes! With yes. Points, you're today's daily winner! Now, Talia, I have here two identical new, improved rough meals in biodegradable packaging. So which will it be? Rough meal A or rough meal B? B, B, B. Okay, I'll go with B. Your prize is now in the mailbox. Go get it! Uh, oh, no, really Talia, you have won tickets to see the Boston Pops Holiday Show. The yes! Show. Congratulations! Thank you, Ross. Well, that is our show. Until next time, I'm Ruff Ruffman. See you, Fetchers! Bye! Bye. Oh, it's from the Boston Pops. Dear Mr. Ruffman, you may not use our rendition of Stars and Stripes Forever for your Rough Meal jingle. We got a better offer from Hairball, the new cat grooming show. That leaves me back with... Chat. Oh, you got a saxophone now? Okay, well, I've watched Bethany, so I think I can conduct this thing. Uh, wait, Chat, follow the baton. Chat? Oh, well. Rough mealy doo be the doo doo wah A less pack of genie doo doo Shatley doo ba da ba de doo I've grown okra, I've made okra cookies, and now I've even written a book. How to get the most out of your okra. What, Blossom? How to get the most out of your orca? What's an orca? Orca, also known as killer whale. Oh, no, I've made a huge typo. Okay, don't panic, don't panic. I'll just get Tank to take the books back to be reprinted. Tank, I need you to take these books to the printing house and get them to change orca to okra. Can you do that, buddy? And get a receipt, please. You can handle that, right? You understood? Is that a yes pant, a no pant? Hello? Anyone home? Okay, thank you, Tank. Boy, I'm telling you, my assistant sometimes. Blossom, replace Tank with someone smarter like a pig? Now, Tank isn't the brightest bulb, but no pig is smarter than a dog. Really, Blossom, I am shocked. Wait a minute. Orcas are one of the most communicative members of the animal kingdom? Interesting. Hello, SeaWorld. I think I might have a job offer for a Mr. Shamu. Life was missing its mystique, my squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro! They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed! Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great! And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Ah, oh, check that seven planes will cut you off. And here 
become the contestants now. She writes books in her spare time. Bethany. She enjoys working with Clay. Liza. You can boogie down with this venture. He's won dance contests. Isaac. Give him the recipe and he can cook anything. Brian. He never learned to ride a bike, but he can ride a horse. Sterling! She once had a pet snail named Hector. Talia! Let's get an update on the scores. In fourth place, Brian with 75 points. Liza and Sterling tied for third with 120 points. Bethany in second with 140 points. And Isaac and Talia tied for first with 170 points. Hello and welcome to the groundbreaking reality game show hosted by a dog, not... A pig. Of a course. Dog. Definitely not a pig. Yeah. Can you imagine a game show hosted by a pig? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, well, Blossom here seems to think that pigs are smarter than dogs. Yes. <laughs> that is an outrage! And dogdom will not stand for it! What, Blossom? No, not dog dumb. Dogdom, you know, the kingdom of dogs. <laughs> we are going to prove Blossom wrong. So, challenge number one. This is Garth. He's going to help you discover the most intelligent four-legged creature on Earth. And here's a hint. I'm one of them. And he's waiting for Brian and Bethany. Your instructions are in the mailbox. So go fetch! Hey, I'm going to you to challenge number two. Okay, lean in a little bit. Okay, here's the deal. I'm having a little trouble with one of my employees. Uh, you're familiar with Tank? Kind of new here. Bulldog. Nice guy. Nice. Love him. I love him. Missing a few sacks in the sack drawer. We're looking into some other options. Uh, pig, maybe. Uh, perhaps another mouse? I've got another option, and I need two of you to go to Florida and scout it out. Two plane tickets are in the mailbox for Liza and Sterling. So go fetch! All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Isaac and Talia have stayed behind in the studio. Yeah. Also, you'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. And of course, we still have the Fetch Fairness Guarantee. Now in six flavors, including nacho cheese. What? Ew. Mm. All the contestants will compete for the same number of points by the grand finale. So, for the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the Triumph Tally. And looking at my schedule here, it looks like I have my first phone interview with Shamu. <laughs> right now. Uh, hello, Shamu. I'm reviewing your application here, and it says that you consider yourself to be a great communicator. Have you seen my television show, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman? <laughs> That's me, Ruff Ruffman. Now, uh, what do you think you can bring to the table to help my show? Uh, that wasn't really a yes or no question. Uh -huh, uh, right, right. Uh, okay. Yes, well, that's, uh... Blossom, do we have a way on the English dictionary? Okay, Shamu. Um, <clears throat> we're not on the same page here. I'm gonna let the fetchers know that they need to find a way to communicate with you. That's gonna make the interview process a whole lot smoother, I think. I thought you said whales were great communicators! I don't even know what we were talking about! Hey, there's Garth. He's going to help the fetchers find out who is smarter, pigs or dogs. I know where my vote's You're going. On a farm? You need to look like farmers. I'm an official farmer. You're a good-looking farmer, Brian. There's a pig! We have a little pig in here. We've called this pig Rondo. He likes apples. How big do pigs get to grow? An adult pig can weigh five, six hundred pounds. Really? Five to six hundred pounds? Ooh, that's a lot of mooshu pork. They like mud, but... Why do they like mud? Pigs don't have any sweat glands. If they don't have sweat glands, how come there's the saying, I sweat like a pig? They get bad press. When we're hot, the way we cool off is our body sweats. The best way for them to cool down is to roll in mud. If you look at a pig, what do you think its senses are good at? Hearing. Hearing. Yes. Look at the size of those ears. ears. They can hear well. Oh, what smell. else? Smelling. You've got a good sense of smell, Blossom. Guess that means you smell like a pig. <laughs> ah, what? It's comedy. Come on, that's good stuff. Whoa! Shamu, hi kids. Yeah, Ruff sent us. He's looking for a new assistant. He heard whales are really good communicators. That's right. Whales are great communicators, and I think Shamu can help you learn a lot today. What do you say you go get a wetsuit on and help me out? Well, this is Shamu. She's a, an adult female killer whale. What do you know? Shamu is a she. And they're really smart animals. Yes, you are. What are you saying? 
They're very sensitive to feeling. They love when we do this. What do you say you scoot up here and do a little rub here with her? Oh, look at that. A little rub that down. That's cool, huh? They are mammals, they're not fish. So Shamu is a mammal. Hey, remember Calvin, the dolphin from season two? Mammal. Uh, no, don't tell me. Uh, mammals are, are warm-blooded, breathe air. Most don't lay eggs. They nurse their young with milk, and they have at least a few hairs somewhere on their bodies. Didn't think I'd remember that, did you, Blossom? I remember everything. Where are my keys? We actually have nine killer whales, and they live within seven million gallons of water. And seven million gallons? How am I going to build a pool that big? I'm actually on a scale, and if you could help me out, look over there and tell me what Shamu weighs. 4,620 pounds. Wow. Wow, Shamu weighs the same as, like, two cars. Now, they eat a lot of different types of fish. Herring, capelin, smelt sometimes, and even salmon. This is a herring. What the size of that herring? Sterling shoots the herring for two. No good. Sterling again. Yes. Now Liza from downtown. Yes. Well, we thought that we'd come up with a way to test intelligence between a dog and a pig, so we made a maze. I think we should have, um three rounds, one with um, just a really easy one. Like the straight one. Yeah, yeah, one that makes it more challenging, yeah. but not like extremely hard. And then we could have a few dead ends for the third one. Okay, the fetchers are going to determine which animal is smarter by seeing who can get through the mazes faster. Let's meet the challengers of dog versus pig. Here comes the dog representative, the one, the only, Kylie! Isn't she pretty? She's gorgeous. Get her phone number. Oh, and her email address. And here's Rondo the pig. The dog actually has an advantage in that it'll come to its owner's call. But the pig isn't going to understand that. We had to show the pig, you know, by treating it with apples, that there was reward at the end. Are we going to time them going through the maze? That's what we'll do. We'll time them. Kylie and Rondo will go head to head in a race through three different mazes. Kylie is motivated by her owner calling her name. And Rondo is motivated by food. Oh, that's ridiculous. Who needs food as a motivator? Oh, hey, is that a spare rib? Wow, it moves by itself. Maze one, the simplest maze. We're gonna time the dog, Kylie, and see how quickly it gets down there. All right, Kylie, go for it. Oh, 3.8 seconds. 3.8 seconds, that's gonna be some kind of world record. Seems very intelligent, don't you think, Blossom? I said, don't you think, Blossom? Ready to test the pig? How do you think it's gonna react? Because it doesn't have an owner down I think there. it's gonna be slower. It's not a parade, Rondo. Let's go, second gear. Come on. There's food at the other end, buddy. Rondo, today. 25.2 seconds. 25.2 seconds. That's just on trial one. Who's smarter up top, Blossom? That, that, that means, I mean, high paw. In celebration of the dog's victory, fine. They make a lot of different sounds. Those sounds are actually coming out of her blowhole. Listen to this one. Oh, now where is that whale to English dictionary when you need it? We don't really know what those sounds mean. Just a way that they communicate with each other. We actually have our own kind of communication and language with these animals that we can interact with them too. When the animals are young, we start off interacting them and teaching them different behaviors. And when we do that, we put it with a hand signal. Ah. How about a paw signal? Is that okay? Let's see what this one means. That means to say hi. When I blow this whistle, it means what she did right there was really good. So when they do something well, they get a lot of great things, rub downs and food. The basic thing they need to know is they need to understand that when you do something well, you get something good. We can then teach them to do behaviors like a bow when they jump out of the pool. And you ready? Yeah. yeah. Put your finger like this. Down. Cross your body. And she's yeah. do behaviors off of sound as well. Dawn can use hand signals or sounds to tell Shamu what to do. This is a tone box. What do you say you press number three right there, Liza? Yep. yep. Did you hear that sound? Well, there go the whales. Guess what? They're going to go do that bow behavior. Bow! Synchronized leap! Awesome. Do me a favor. Press number one. Guess what that means? Come back here for some great reinforcement. You ready? Yay, yeah, Shamu! Yay, yeah, Shamu! So sound does travel in the water as well as above? It does. The animals can hear above the water and below the water. Some of those vocalizations that you heard earlier, we can hear those sounds underwater too. 
Oh, I can't hear you. They have an external ear, but then they're also able to hear in their lower jaw as well. So killer whales have external ears like you and me, but they can also hear with their jaw? So sound travels really great underwater, and that's actually because of how sound's produced. Sound is actually produced by vibrating objects. So when something vibrates, it sends and pushes through the water in the air, creating what they call compressions, which is when the molecules of either air or water are pushed close together, or refractions where they're spaced further apart. That compression and refraction makes a pattern called a wave. Those waves come back to the animals, they receive it in their ear, their ear and their brain process it, and that's how it turns into sound. So they feel the vibrations with their jaw, and then the jaw sends signals to their brain, and that's how they hear sound? Absolutely, those vibrations are sound to them. I'm going to give you some materials, and you're going to need to come up with two sounds that Ruff can use to communicate with Shamu. How does that sound? Nice. But before I communicate with Shamu, I need to communicate with Isaac and Talia during the halftime quiz show. We're back here in Studio G, normally a swine-free environment, yes. where Isaac and Talia are ready to earn some points of their own. Let us brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. You two ready? We are ready. Right. Right. Gonna be smarter than a pig? Hopefully. Well, then let the quiz begin. True or false, killer whales are mammals. True. True. Excellent. How many gallons of fresh water does Shamu's tank hold? Zero. Correct. How big do pigs get? Uh, 500 to 600 pounds. Yes. About how much does Shamu weigh? For that, no, 20. 20. For Close that's enough. 20. It's good. Name two ways that trainers can communicate with killer whales. Sound and the noise. Yes, and yes, noise. yes. True or false, sound can travel through water. True. True. Yes. What motivates Rondo to finish the maze? Uh, uh, uh. when molecules of water or air are pushed tightly together. Compression! Wow! True or false, pigs have no sweat glands. True. Yes! What motivates Kylie to finish the maze? Uh, her trainer at the other end, calling her. Oh my goodness! a pig, you're smarter than a dog, you're smarter than the entire animal kingdom! Woo! Yeah. 10 out of 10! Yeah! This is great because now I don't have to go over the ones you missed because you know how many you missed? Zero! Zero! Oh, congratulations to both of you fetchers! That was awesome! Are Brian and Bethany going hog wild over at the swine unit? Let's find out! Shoo! So we've changed it so that the dog has to turn and go around and go to the owner instead of going in a straight line. Round two, the medium difficulty maze. That means it's kind of hard, but not really. Go! Come on, Kylie, let's go! Come on! Here, here, here! Come on! Good girl. That was 5.9 seconds. So Kylie did the second maze in 5.9 seconds. Wow! Okay, Rondo, let's see how you do in round two. And uh, Rondo, for round two, wants to take a pre-test nap. Rondo! Go! Hi, welcome to the trial there, Rondo. Again, casual stroll. Perhaps Rondo does not sense the urgency. 21.5. 21.5. Once again, Rondo is slower than Kylie. Things are looking good for dogs. Round three, the difficult maze. This one has dead ends. Go! Wow! wow. She got there at 4.3 seconds. 4.3 seconds? What? That's faster than maze two. Okay, one word comes to mind. Dog genius. Hmm. Go! Go, Rondo. There we go. Yeah. Life is apples, Rondo. Come on. <laughs> what, Blossom? What? Is Rondo still going? Oh, a minute and 10.5 seconds. Okay, Rondo and Dead Ends do not mix very well. It took him one minute, ten and a half seconds to the maze. Well, it took Kylie 4.3 seconds. This is amazing. <laughs> Get it? It's a maze, so it's a maze. Fine, back to the whales. Come on in, it's time to get wet. Okay, guys, time to get in the water. What's the matter? All right. Killer whales live in all oceans of the world. This is 52 degrees. This is an awesome temperature for them. I'm sorry, what's the temperature of that water? 52? Pretty soon your feet will go numb. Um, your feet 
are gonna get numb. You'll get really used to it, all right? Now, now, Sterling, you're a fetcher. Let's be tough. So I've got a bag full of all different materials. You get to pick which ones you think are gonna make the best sound, okay? This is a hydrophone. This is just an underwater microphone. Let's turn it on. I'm gonna show you how easy this is going to be. Listen. Hear those keys underwater? Yeah. All right, this isn't part of your bag, so you gotta look in there and see what you think the whales are gonna listen well to. Okay, there's a horn. We have a plastic cone. We have a triangle. Bubble wrap. Love that. Ah, some rocks, really? Now, the cool thing is, you can hear the whales all throughout the environment. So you might hear some of their sounds, but I'm sure between them speaking to each other, you'll be able to do your challenge really well, okay? Sterling will test the toys above and below the surface of the water, and Liza will report how well she can hear them through the hydrophone. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, it's much louder in the water. Uh, Shamu, hi. Can you and your friends uh, keep it down a little bit there, please? Okay, we're conducting a test. Thank you. All right, now I'm doing the bubble wrap. Yeah, I can hear it. I can't hear anything. Yeah, I can't hear that one at all. It's way too soft. Yeah, I can hear it good. Yeah, it's almost as loud as it is on the outside. Yeah, I can kind of hear it. Kind of Now below. Oh, it's louder underwater. Yep, not as loud as the horn, though. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear that good. Guys, pipe down to the back, please. Maybe we should test the memory by making, making him go through it again to see if he can remember which way he went and how he got through it and where the dens dead ends are if he chooses a way that has a dead end. So you think we should do this one again? Yeah. Good idea, Bethany. They're going to have Kylie and Rondo go through Maze 3 again to see if they can improve their times. If they're faster the second time around, it means they're smart enough to have learned where to go. Round 4 begins now. Yeah, there we go, Kylie, that's it. What? Kylie, 6.6 .6 seconds? What happened? You actually got slower. That is not looking good for us dogs. Go. And here comes Rondo. Yeah, Rondo. Go, Rondo. No, you're not going to get through there. Turn. Go. Yes. Yes. Yay! Wait a minute. Wait, what's the time on that? Wow, that was 45 seconds. That wasn't bad. It was better than the yeah. first time. All right, well, you know, just being fast doesn't make you smart. The trick is you have to improve. It looks like Rondo may have been able to learn to beat his own time, and Kylie got slower. Oh, no, does this mean pigs are smarter than dogs? No! Tell me what you thought about the toys. I saw some of them were, like, louder above water, and some of them were, like, louder below water. The, um, the horn was louder above water. I think the rocks were below the water. Rocks and horns, all right. Well, that's what we're going to use. Rocks and horns would be the signals that you want to use with rock. Rocks and the horn. You know, I can also rock the horn, by the way. In a rate of renovate. Bounce these conditions, that will great. On the road of fame. I have a show to do. What do you say you come with me and see all these things that you learned today? I'll, I'll start with the audience. Okay. Sound right. good? Yeah. We predicted that the pig would be really slow and would kind of get lost, but it turned out to be very different. For the dog, we predicted that it would go faster. We were really focused on the speed at first. We weren't really focusing on how smart it was and whether it improved or didn't improve by the end. Out of what I saw today, I think the pig improved itself. Yeah. And the dog just kind of got worse. Uh, so maybe Rondo's smarter than Kylie. But that doesn't mean every pig's smarter than every dog, does it? What do you think? Experts generally think that, that humans are the smartest. Humans think they're smarter. And that pigs are somewhere below that. They also believe that they're somewhat smarter than dogs. Wait! No! They believe that a pig has the intelligence of a three-year-old child. Experiment. Yeah, we're gonna crown the pig. Rondo, you are smarter than a dog. Get that crown away from that pig. He doesn't even want to wear it. He knows he doesn't deserve it. This is not fair. I want a rematch. Why don't you guys head back to Studio G? Great job. I'm gonna watch the whale show now. Oh, good. The show's about to start. Whoa, look at Dawn. She's riding on top of a whale. Wow! Oh, now she's giving her a treat for doing a good job. Oh, and a little kiss. It's so sweet.
Okay, Fetchers, great show! Come on back to Studio G. One little piggy went to market, and other little piggies aced an IQ test given by Bethany and Brian. Get in here! Hey. Yeah, Woo. digging the hats. Hey, y'all! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they found their way back to Studio G with just the sound of my voice, Liza and Sterling! Hey. Hey guys. Well, I got a whole bucket of points here, and Shamu can't eat any of them, so let's get on with the triumph tally! Yeah! yeah. Liza and Sterling for getting in close and personal with killer whales and finding out how they communicate. 50 points! Yeah! And you found two signals I can use with Shamu when she becomes my assistant. If she becomes my assistant, at 15 points a signal, that's 30 points for a total of 80 points! Yeah! Yes. Now, Brian and Bethany, you presided over a slightly embarrassing day for dogs. Sorry. But still, you made keen observations, you designed a fair test, and you analyzed your data to answer a question. For all that, you're getting 80 points! Yes. Yes. And is that all the points a dog can give, is no. it? Really? What time is it? Bonus points! Today's five bonus points go to the contestant who redesigned a scientific test on the fly. Maybe we should test the memory by making making him go through it again. Which means Bethany with 85 points. You're today's daily winner. Yeah, Bethany. Now, Bethany, I have here two identical porkas. Porkas. Those are pig whales, as imagined by resident artist Chet. Under one porka, a fabulous prize. Under the other, something only a porka could love. So which is it going to be, porka A or porka B? A, 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 A. Please step to the mailbox and retrieve your prize. Good. Bethany, you have won tickets to a water park. Good for you and your family. Yes, now you too can show off your orkin underwater communication skills. Or, you know, just go on the big slides. Well, that's it from Studio G. Thank you. Robert. See you next time, guys. Bye. Look, Tank's great, but both Rondo and Shamu are more impressive. I'm gonna have to replace them. Eh, it's no big deal. If I hire the pig, I'll need a mud pit, and if I hire Shamu, I'll have to flood the doghouse. Okay, here I go. Hi, Tank. Look, buddy, we've had some great times together. Really great, but, uh, uh, I can't do it. You may not be as smart as a pig or communicate as well as an orca, but you're a dog, and dogs have to stick together. So keep up the good work, Tank. Okay, I'll catch you later, buddy. Dogs. Irreplaceable, don't you think? Today's program to teach you about an important topic, global warming. When certain gases enter the atmosphere in sufficient quantities, they act like a blanket trapping in heat. That's global warming. And it all starts with me, carbon. Chat. I hook up with oxygen, or O2. When the carbon and the oxygen here bond, voila, carbon dioxide, a heat-trapping gas. OK, that's lunch, people. Uh, Chet, the key to this lock's on the table. Can you get it, buddy? Great. Wait, no, not the heating great. Great meaning good, Chet. OK, don't panic. Now I keep a spare set of keys in the band of my sun hat, which I took on my outing last week and didn't bring back. OK, Chet, it's only 500 miles from here. Go fetch my hat. Hurry, Chet. <laughs> right, Blossom. Let's swing to the ledge. Uh oh, the thermostat. Oh, it's getting hot in here now. <laughs> oh, the plug to the freezer. The ice is melting. Blossom, carbon dioxide is a real problem. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam, my destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Can somebody tell me what happened in the singing cat? Here come the contestants now! He enjoys playing wiffle ball. Brian! His favorite place in the world? Hershey Park. Isaac! He thinks he can break the world record in powdered donut eating. Sterling! She doesn't like eating mush. Really? Bethany! 
If she could have any superpower, she would want to stop time. Liza! What does she want to be when she grows up? Just an author, photographer, and entrepreneur. Talia! Let's get an update on the scores. In fourth place, Brian with 155 points. Liza and Sterling tied for third with 200 points. Isaac and Talia tied for second with 220 points. And Bethany is now in first with 225 points. Hi, and rough. welcome to wow. another episode of Friends with Ruff Ruff. <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you swinging in the air? Ah, uh, hold on. Blossom, try to grab onto that candelabra. Oh. Oh. Poor Blossom, she's changing you. What about poor Ruff? Poor both of you. I'm suffering too. Anyway, I'm gonna blame global warming. And Chet. Yes, Blossom and me. It's all very simple. I'm sure this happened to at least a few of you. Haven't you ever given a lecture about climate change? So of course you and your partner dress up as carbon and dioxide and you lock yourself together, but then you lose the key and smash the thermostat and break the freezer so everything keeps getting hotter and hotter while your living room is flooded? <laughs> yeah, all the time, Ruff. I mean, that's every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really happen, does it? No. Not all really, right, no. well, it doesn't matter. Blossom's got an awesome CO2 racing game set up for you guys. And we'll just have to watch from up here. Ow! Blossom, you're choking me! I need air to do this show! And speaking of air, you'll need to keep the air clean in this race. What? Your goal is to travel 50 miles using all different kinds of transportation. If you can do it without emitting much CO2, you'll wind up doing something very cool. If you release too much carbon dioxide, you'll wind up doing something, but that something won't be cool. Cool? Okay. Cool. cool. Okay, you need to find pizza boxes. They have puzzles in them. Blossom provided the puzzles, and I provided the pizza boxes. You're also looking for people wearing official Fetch with Ruff Ruffman t-shirts, driving official Fetch with Ruff Ruffman vehicles. Then here we go. Talia, Isaac, Brian, Liza, Sterling, and Bethany. All your instructions are in the mailbox, so go Fetch! Yeah. Let's go! Bye. And remember, don't put out too much CO2. We're already getting hot in here. Bye, bye, bye. bye guys. <laughs> For the six kids out on our challenge today, up to 100 points are at stake in the Triumph Tally. So let's swing on over to the 3,000 and get the latest. Ah! Is it in here? Up here? here? Welcome here, to the first Fetch Green Race. Here's how it Yay! works. I'm splitting you up into two teams. You're each traveling 50 miles. The team that emits less CO2 in 50 miles wins. Yeah. Now you're looking for puzzles in pizza boxes. The puzzles will determine your mode of transportation. Each time you get a puzzle yeah, right, yeah, your yeah. vehicle will emit less CO2. But if you get the puzzle yeah. wrong, you'll emit more stay CO2. Stay green! That's right, Bri. Stay green. Get the puzzles right, emit less CO2 than the other team. Okay, here are the teams. Brian, Liza, Talia, you are Team BLT. Yeah! Isaac, Bethany, Sterling, you're Team Ibs. So find your pizza boxes. And what the Fetchers don't know is that they're racing to an amusement park. The team that emits less CO2 on the way there gets to ride on the cool rides. The team that emits more CO2 will be on rides far less cool. Like the dangling cat and dog ride. We. If you answer this first, you're riding in one car. If you answer it last, you're riding in three. There are nine squares to fill using the numbers one through nine. Okay, fill in all nine squares with the numbers one through nine. Got it. Every way you must add up to 15. Oh. All right, so it's got to add up to 15 up, down, across, and diagonally. Hey, like tic-tac-toe. Colors are the key. It's so easy. Do I have to spell it out for you? But how do you spell with numbers? Yeah. Wait, so the colors are the key? I don't get it. Colors are the key? I don't get that either. What does that mean, Blossom? You can tell me. It's my show. Oh, blue. B-L-U. Four. Blue's got four letters. That's tricky. Okay, now the other colors. Red is three letters. Three. It's P U R P L E six. Okay, so five. Red plus green plus purple. Four plus five plus six. That's fifteen. Okay, three and five is eight. This is a nine. This is a nine. Four plus, plus three is seven. Yes, we got it. We got it. We got it. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Over the pizza box. Nine, two, three, five, seven, eight, one, two. Team BLT gets it first. They did that a lot quicker than us. They ride in just one car, while Team Ibs has to ride in three. Congratulations. You get to travel in one car instead of three. You will only emit 2.5 pounds of CO2. Proceed to the Bunker Hill Monument. Team BLT is getting a bag of charcoal. Now it's two and a half pounds because their one car emits two and a half pounds of CO2. That's good thinking, Blossom. 
Sorry, you each have to ride in your own car. Your CO2 emission will be a lot more than the other team. Proceed to Malibu Beach. Ah, Team Ibs gets a seven and a half pound bag of charcoal because they're emitting seven and a half pounds of CO2 with three cars. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it. It's like a huge tower. Yeah. I, see. I know. Excuse me? Did you guys see any clues? No? Oh, okay. Excuse me? Oh, please say yes. Have you seen a clue in a pizza box? Oh, okay, that's okay. No. Thank you. Um, have you seen a pizza box? Over there? Oh, um, we sure have a yes. Okay. Oh, a squirrel didn't run off of my pizza box. Oh, I see it. It's over oh, here. Wait. Looks like the ingredients to a sandwich. Good thing Team BLT got this clue. If you get this right, you're riding in a pedicab. If you get it wrong, you're riding in a taxi cab. Put on gloves and start your stopwatch. They get it right? Pedicab. Wrong. Taxi cab. Blossom, is a pedicab like a pedicure? Oh, it's like a tricycle wagon thingy. So a pedicab wouldn't emit any carbon because it doesn't burn any fuel. Your pedicab driver is particular to his sandwiches. Okay. Or you can have them. turkey, lettuce, tomato, and cheese. Uh, the bread has to be on the top and the bottom. You know, it'd be great if we could play along. Okay, you got all the sandwich ingredients on you. Of course you do. So it's like logic. The lettuce is above the turkey and below the cheese. Lettuce above turkey, below cheese. Lettuce above turkey, below cheese. Remember that. The cheese can touch the bread. This is a puzzle sandwich. Cheese touches bread, but bread can't touch tomato. So that goes like this. The lettuce can touch the tomato, but not the turkey. No, the tomato goes in between because this can't touch the bread. Yes. Yeah. Right. Did they get the right order? Bread, cheese, lettuce, tomato, turkey, bread. I got it too. Oh no, I wanted to eat that. Come on. Oh, but guys, we oh. have two minutes. Were we over? We're at three minutes, 20 seconds. Uh-oh, they didn't get it in time. I look sad. Sorry, you have to travel in a taxi cab instead of a pedicab. Your CO2 admission will be five, five pounds. Proceed to the bus stop at the corner of Bunkle Hill Street. Well, let's see how Team Ibs is doing with their seven and a half pounds of CO2. And Blossom, do you realize your claws are in my shoulder right now? It's very painful. Pardon me while I scream. Ow! What is that? This is. Okay, they found the pizza box. If you get this right, you're riding on scooters. If you get this wrong, you're riding in a big car. Start your stopwatch. They get it right. Scooters. Okay. Wrong. They're in an old car. Carbon dioxide and methane are GRE71892. Uh oh, what's this next one, Blossom? We need a PhD to solve it? These must be the letters of the alphabet. You know, one is an A. Yeah, the numbers stand for the letters of the alphabet. Ha <laughs> ha, Blossom. Uh, wait, wait, what's the 92nd letter of the alphabet? Wait a minute, there's a chart with lots of letters. Oh, look, this is the periodic oh, table of elements. Blossom, what exactly is the periodic table of elements? It's a table of all the chemical elements arranged in order. And, of course, you have one on you. All right, let me see this thing. Oh, hey, there's me, carbon. And look, you, oxygen. So the first element on the periodic table is hydrogen. We could put the H there. Wait, the numbers represent different elements. So G-R-E-E-7-7. -E oh, that's nitrogen. N. N-H-O. 92 is U. 34 is S-E. Green. House. 31 is G-A. And 16 is... 16, 16, 16. 16 is S. Contribute to C-L-I-M-A-T-E-N-G. -G. Okay, stop the stop. Oh, Carbon dioxide and methane are greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. Ha! The secret words are greenhouse gases and climate change. We had two, two minutes. minutes. One, eight. One, eight. One, eight. One, eight. They did it! They get to ride scooters. Okay. Well, it's looking better for Team Ibs and not so much for Team BLT. <laughs> oh, Blossom, I think I'm allergic to you. Wow, that sounds like a tugboat. That trunk just magically opened. Uh, hey. And there's a guy. Wearing an awesome shirt, thank you very much. Ruff wanted me to give you this, and the scooters are in the trunk. All right. Okay, congratulations. You get to travel on scooters instead of a big luxury car. Proceed to UMass Fox Point Pavilion. Team Ibs get scooters and no additional charcoal. They are still at seven and a half pounds. We're energy efficient. Team BLT and Team Ibs are now tied, both at seven and a half pounds of CO2. Okay, we're at Bunker Hill Street. Oh, there's a pizza place right there. Oh, there's a pizzeria. Bound to see a pizza box here. Oh, there's Is this a pizza oh. from Ruff? Okay, they found the pizza box, Blossom. If you get this right, you're riding on the bus. If you get it wrong, you're riding in a limo. I want to ride in a limo. Now, now, you can ride a limo at your prom. Let's get to the puzzle. All right, start your stopwatch. All right, Carbon yeah. dioxide has 13 letters, and right below are 13 sticks. Without removing any, members make the 13 into 6. Blossom, I don't get this either. How do you make 13 into 6? 
Six what, though? Make oh, the... thir six is written in um, letters, three but letters. 13 is written in, in numbers. In numbers. Does that have anything to do with it? You have to make six. Oh! Ah, they need to spell out six with the 13 sticks. Oh, All right. come on, you got it right. Wait, I have this. Yep, sorry, oh, Brian, you got it right. Six. That would be five minutes, 41 Ooh, seconds. Yeah. Now, how long did they have to do you this? They had two minutes. Oh, they went over the time limit. I guess we're riding in a limo. Does it have more CO2 than a bus? Yeah. Blossom, why is a limo worse than a bus? Doesn't a big bus emit a lot of CO2? Huh? Oh, if all those people riding in the bus each had their own car, it would add up to much more CO2. Gotcha. Thank you, Rob. Rock. You're welcome, guys. But you know you should be feeling guilty yeah. about riding in a gas-guzzling limo. And if I rock so much, how come I'm handcuffed to a cat? <clears throat> ah, there's Team Ibs with seven and a half pounds of CO2 in riding scooters. Okay, that's quite landing. I think this is it. There it is. Look. Okay. Ooh, they found their next puzzle. If you do this, you're in a sailboat. If you don't do this, you're in a motorboat. Wind power emits no CO2. Using your lungs, blow this feather 30 feet in 30 seconds. Gosh, I sure hope they don't blow this challenge. <laughs> Get it? Blow the challenge, Cassie. Ah, never mind. Go. Man, that feather's really moving. Sweet biscuits. <laughs> it worked. We did it. 15 seconds. 15 seconds? That's some powerful lungs those three have. I think I saw some boats down there, so let's go. Ah, oh, what a lovely day to sail. Wouldn't it be great, Blossom, if we could be out sailing instead of hanging here, stuck to each other? We're taking the oh. sailboat. Congratulations. You get to travel in a sailboat instead of a smelly motorboat. You won't release any CO2 in the atmosphere. Proceed to the Kowloon restaurant. Ah, Kowloon, my old stomping ground. No carbon emissions! <laughs> Team Ibs is in a sailboat. No additional CO2 for them. They're still at seven and a half pounds. But Team BLT... Guys, we got more coal. Their CO2 is piling up. That's five more pounds. Now they're at 12 and a half. Proceed to Franklin Field. And they have to listen to horrible elevator music. Well, it's all I can think of to punish them in a limo. No celebrating. I've never seen Fetcher so happy to lose. I'd rather be in the sailboat than the limo. You don't have to stick your head out any windows on a sailboat. There she is. Oh, yeah. Let's plant a tree together. Why are they planting a tree, Blossom? What does this have to do with the carbon game? We took a limo to plant the tree. That's what I wondered. This is where we're going to be planting our tree. So we're going to need to start digging this hole. And then you're going to put all the dirt right onto this to keep the ground neat. As the tree gets bigger, it turns CO2 with the sunshine into leaves and bark. They call it biomass. These trees are really important because they help make oxygen, right? That's don't, right. Yeah, don't they, like, breathe in carbon dioxide, too? Nice. That's the other side of it, definitely. So trees breathe in CO2 and breathe out oxygen. What's that, Blossom? It's part of the carbon cycle. Does that mean that, in a way, carbon dioxide is a good thing because that's what trees breathe in? And... Yes, it's just the amount. As we've been driving cars more, heating our house more, we've been taking some of that carbon out of that earth, and it's coming out into the environment. And that's something that we just don't have the capacity to deal with. Oh, I see what's going on. Fossil fuels like oil and coal are made of carbon. As long as that stuff stays buried underground, it's not bothering anybody. But once it's taken out of the ground and burned, it adds more CO2 to the carbon cycle. CO2 that wouldn't have been there in the first place. Worms are a good thing. <laughs> Here's another one. Oh, that's so gross. You can put those three in the shade under that bush. So, now you guys get your shovels again, and we're gonna take all the dirt and we'll put it in the hole. Oh, it's a shame I'm not out there. I'd love to spend some quality time with that tree right about now. What? I'm a dog. You realize how long we've been up here? Well done. And they did it! They planted a tree! The U.S. Forest Service says that each tree can absorb 13 pounds of carbon per year. 13 pounds? Wow! And by planting this tree, you get to take five pounds of your coal left. Yeah! BLT goes from 12 and a half back down to seven and a half. Nice job. Have you seen a pizza box? Yeah, I saw it over there somewhere, and I think I saw it by a big pot of plant. OK, thank you. Yeah, it was kind of that way. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Nice job. Bye. Team Ibs should be back on land by now. Hey, nice shirt. An official fetch vehicle. Hey. Here. Hey, my car doesn't run on gasoline. It runs on vegetable oil. Oh, oh, a car that runs on cooking oil. That, that's a grease car. Restaurants are full of vegetable oil. Could you get me some? Sure, sure. Okay. Thanks, look. Uh, I ran my whole doghouse on cooking oil. I 
we're looking for vegetable oil. Vegetable oil? Yeah, this is what this is what I ate, yeah. And uh, what you guys need this for? Oh, we're trying to fill a car. Oh, you probably want to take the big ones because it's more fuel. Be careful, heavy. Take care. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Wow, that's a lot of vegetable oil. Okay, we got the vegetable oil. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. For helping me out, I'm going to uh, take five pounds of carbon from you. Team M's takes off five pounds. They're down to two and a half. So the reason I'm doing that is because this car actually helps reduce my carbon footprint. It's burning a plant oil. And those plants, when they're growing, take the CO2 out of the air. Hey, just like the tree. How do you put it into the car? I'll show you. He's using oil from plants instead of from fossil fuels underground. So he's not putting any new CO2 into the atmosphere. And that's because burning the oil makes exactly the same amount of CO2 that was absorbed by the plants during their growth. Hey, by any chance, it's roughly a pizza box laying around? I didn't see it, but knowing Rafi just hit it around here somewhere. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. Team BLT hey. found their clue. Oh, oh I see it. so did Team Ibs. If you get this right, you're riding in a hybrid car. If you get this wrong, you're riding in an SUV. Carbon dioxide has people talking. See how many words you can get out of it. Using the letters carbon dioxide, write out all the words you can in two minutes. They have to be four letters or more. Awesome. Right. Okay. You gave each team the same puzzle? How about bone? Bone? Ooh, bone's you know good. I, I would have thought of that eventually. Race? Race, Race. good. Dare. 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 Ooh, I like that. That's a good one. And brace. Ride. Ride. Oh, they're getting a lot of words. Crave. They're both doing great. Diode. Diode. OK, stop. Time's up, guys. All right, time's up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven okay. words. Okay. Had to get. Sterling, Bethany, and Isaac have eleven. Nope. Now call the other fetchers and see who got the most words. Oh, call Hello? the other fetchers. Awesome. Hello? Sterling? Yeah? Flaza, how many words did you get? We got eleven words. Yes! Yeah! Team! Team BLT wins 15 to 11. They don't know it yet, but they're going on some roller coasters. Rats. I guess this is our ride. Mm. Yeah. Gas guzzler. Whoa! Hey guys, I've got something for you. Compliments are rough. It comes with a note. Sorry, you have to travel 35 miles in a greasy truck instead of a greased car. That's 35 pounds of CO2. Bless. Ah, that's 35 more pounds of CO2 for Team Ibs. That's 37 and a half total. Here's the hybrid. There's their hybrid ride. Congratulations, you get to travel 35 miles in a hybrid car. That's only 17.5 pounds of CO2. Wow, that is so much less. Yeah. 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 Who gets to go to Canopy Lake Amusement Park? Well, I guess they like going there. Yes. Wow, you don't even need keys. Just push a power button. That's cool. Team BLT is emitting less CO2 than Team Ibs. They're going on the cool rides. Accumulated CO2 weighs 25 pounds or less. You can ride this ride. Yes! yes! Oh, but Team Ibs, not nearly as cool. You can only ride the teeny tiny rides. Come on, Rob. I got all the way for nothing. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> okay, it's not as slow as I thought it'd be. It'll slow down, trust me. Rob, you might want to plug your ears. I plug them, but I'm handcuffed to Blossom. Team Ibs, not exactly flying around. Rob, these are the rides I try to avoid. We're expecting even more CO2. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Well, not all their carbon footprints are large, but they better wipe their feet anyway. Welcome back to Studio G, Bethany, Isaac, Brian, Sterling, Talia, and Liza. Hey, Rob. Hey. hey. All right, I think it's definitely time for some points. Yeah. yeah. Sterling, Isaac, Bethany, let's do the math. So you have a potential 100 points, minus 37 and a half, and we have uh, 62 and a half points! Yeah. Uh -huh. Half a point? That's Good. Half, half a point. Rub. We can get half. You can get a half point, you can get a quarter point, I mix it up! Okay, now, Brian, Liza, and Talia. Yes! You three started off in one car, went some miles in a cab, cruised in style in a limo, planted yeah. a tree, and then hightailed it to the amusement park in a hybrid. In 50 miles, you created 25 pounds of CO2. Nice guy. Yeah. Okay, so we have 100 potential points. Minus 25 is 75 points. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah. But you guys were enjoying the gas guzzling limo a little too much. Sorry. Where was the guilt? We planted a tree after. Yeah, yeah. we did. Not enough. I have to deduct 10 points. Sorry, oh. guys. 
but still that leaves you with a respectable 65 points. Nice. Hey. That's not bad. But is that all the points a dog can give? No. What time is it? Bonus points. All righty then. Today's five points go to the contestant who didn't shy away from a worm. <laughs> Liza, with yeah. 70 points, you're today's daily winner. Yeah. All right. Now, Liza, in front of me are two egg rolls cooked in oil that may fuel a grease car. Under one half an egg roll, a fabulous prize, or hot mustard. Under the other, a less fabulous prize, or hot mustard. So which will it be, egg roll half A or egg roll half B? B. B, B it is. Then, Liza, you may go to the mailbox and retrieve part one of your prize. Part That's right, one. part one. Okay, I have an envelope. <laughs> Oh, the envelope is good. The magic of the envelope. Liza, you have won an ice cream party for you and the Fetchers. Yeah! That's right! Yes! Now, the other half of your prize is over on the scale near the license plates to the okay. left. Oh, it's an ice oh. cream maker. Yes! Oh, oh it's me. Oh, and you, like, so cool. kick around. It is a carbon neutral ice cream maker. Because you don't plug it in, you don't release any CO2. Yeah! yeah. Somebody finally found a way to combine the awesomeness of soccer with the awesomeness of ice cream. The ice cream maker! Yes! Until next time, watch those carbon footprints, Fetchers! Blossom, we just have to face the fact that we're stuck together forever. But it's okay. Think of the fun we'll have. You can come to all my yodeling lessons with me. When a dog yodels, you want to be right there next to him. And you'll be able to see my new cologne experiments. I'm working on something now I call Ooda Chunky Beef. It's a humdinger. And, uh, oh, Chet, you have the key, thank goodness. Here, toss it up and I'll unlock us. Oh. Is he Blossom? I am a dog of many um, talents. Okay, maybe I am getting a little obsessed about it, but I know this. If I'm ever gonna find it, I need to be in top physical shape. Quick, Chet, put on some exercise music. Try again, Chet. Oh, that's better. Wait a minute. Is this ballet music? <laughs> Turn it off! Yes, it's true. I have a terrible fear of ballet. It all started years ago. I was going to star in the greatest action-adventure ballet piece ever. Through dance alone, I would quest for a golden idol, twirling past a rain of spiders, crossing a perilous gorge, and leaping over a pit of alligators. But on opening night, Spot Spotnik replaced the fake spiders with real spiders. I never finished my dance. The show flopped. And to this day, ballet sends me into a cold sweat. <gasps> what? Dogs don't sweat, they pant? I tell you, never look for sympathy from a cat. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show, and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Last time you think my insurance will cover this? Here come the contestants now. She worries about germs. Don't worry, Chet just vacuumed the Studio G carpet for Talia. He designs websites in his free time. Just call him www.isaac. He likes pizza, doesn't like sandwiches. Well, what about a pizza sandwich, Sterling? A devotee of karate. Her ambition is to break a cinder block with her bare hand. Bethany. She is not a fan of cockroaches. Not even the cute ones. Liza. He enjoys looking through microscopes. That's good. I hear Fetch is very popular with bacteria. Brian. Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in the basement, 220 points. Sterling has dropped to fifth with 262 and a half. Liza up to fourth with 270. Isaac holding in third with 282 and a half. Talia in second with 285. And Bethany still in first with 287 and a half points. Hi! Welcome.
Welcome to another hair-raising, spine-tingling, terrifying episode of Fetch with Ruff Ruffman! Why is that scary? What's so bad about Why? it? I'll tell you, it'll be so scary that uh, I'm gonna take a pass. Chad! Take over, buddy. I'm out of here. Hi, Chad. Hey, Chad. Hey, Chad. Chad. Hey, 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 Blossom thinks I should confront my fears head on. Let me tell you why I'm upset. Long ago, I, Ruff Ruffman, was supposed to leap over a pit of alligators and cross a thousand foot gorge on a single wire. But because spiders started raining down on me, I couldn't do it. But now, Brian, you're gonna do it for me. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go fetch. Yeah. Oh, and Brian, yeah. make sure you ask for Cosmine. Okay. Now we come to challenge Ooh. number two. This one's a toughie. I I can't lie to you. You see, it was supposed to be fake spiders that fell on me, and I have no problem with fake spiders. But my old pal, Spot Spotnik, switched them out at the last second for real spiders. Horrible. Oh, they're my worst fear. I'd be like... Really? So if I, I sent you on a spider-type challenge, you, you probably wouldn't like that, would you? Okay. Um, <laughs> this could be a problem. Hang on a second. Uh, Blossom, is the Fluffy Bunny challenge ready yet? No? Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to do this one. Bethany and Sterling. This is Professor Greta Binford, and she's waiting for you. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go! Fetch! Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, guys! Have a good time! Bye! Now, as determined by the Fetch 3000, Isaac, Liza, and Talia have stayed yeah. behind in the studio this nice. week. But they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. Yeah. And as a great American said long ago, you can't have fetch without the fetch fairness guarantee. Oh, oh that. wait, wait, that, that great American was me. Oh. <laughs> anyway, all the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. For the three kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's get the latest on Brian. And wow, hello, flexible. Are you Cosmin? Yes, you must be Brian. Yeah. This is Hanok. Hi, Hanok. Let me show you some exercises and check your flexibility. How many pounds do you think you can lift? 90. 90 pounds? How many pounds do you think Hanok can lift? Looks like you can lift a building. <laughs> Wait to see what Hanok can lift. What is it? Is it a horse? It's a, it's a girl. He's, he's gonna lift her? Oh. Well, someone looks smitten. Am I gonna be dancing off? Yes! You're gonna get down! That show off's holding her up with one hand! One, one hand! hand. Wow. What do you think about that? That's really impressive and I'm jealous. You cannot dance like that? Can you rough? Of course I can dance like that! I was born to dance! Blossom, I need you for a sec. And a one, and two. Now lift! Ah! Oh, come, get off me! Get off, get off! So, for how long do you think Hannah can hold Hannah on one hand up? 20, 25 seconds. Let's check it out and go. How you holding up there, Eric? I'm doing well. I'm just holding out here. I do it enough that I uh, get used to it. All right. I should try this with Chet. Start with a mouse and work my way up. And ha! Oh, sweet biscuits! <laughs> Wait, stop moving, Chet! I'm falling! Ah! Oh. 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 Ah, Chet! Oh, when was your last bath? How you feel up in the sky? I'm all right. <laughs> 40 seconds. Well, it's all training. I have a present for you. These are ballet slippers. Today, you're going to be my student. Yes, put on your dancing shoes, kid. We're supposed to be going to the Middlesex house. Spiders, as soon as you enter the place. Spiders. Come on, Ruffman. Keep an open mind. Spiders. Open mind. Hi, I'm Professor Greta Binford. Welcome to the Spider Lab. I'm an arachnologist. It's a, a biologist who studies spiders. So come on in. Why couldn't it be like gerbil or something? Gerbil challenge. <laughs> uh, maybe next year. Okay, so I thought we'd start with some toys. Yeah, even the fake spiders look awful. What about that makes it a spider? It has eight legs. And it's eight it too many. Eight legs, yes. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's fake. What is that, a spider chew toy? I draw the line. So the basics of a spider are that you've got two body parts. This part is called the cephalothorax, which just means head and thorax fused together. And you can always tell that part because it's got the legs attached. This part is the abdomen. Oh. Now, how many eyes do spiders have normally? Do you know? They have eight. Eight eyes? 
That's one for each leg. Ugh. And you can see here, this represents something called the spinneret. Any idea what it might do? It makes the spider web. It makes silk, exactly. A single spider, some of them can secrete seven different kinds of silk. There are actually 40,000 species of spiders in the world. 40,000? That's a lot of spiders to not like. And those are only the ones we know. There are actually species out there that we're still discovering and giving names to. And as a scientist, that's really exciting. You know what else is exciting? Ballet. Especially when there are no spiders. Ballet is like music. You have to learn some exercises. And when you put all these exercises together, you create a little dance. You create a little dance. Unless it's ruined by Spot Spotnik. Let me start first to teach you the foot positions. Foot positions, okay. This is the first position. You can hold the bar and you straight your knees. I remember nice these positions. Tight. The second position is when you spread the legs a little bit more. Then we have the third I position. I haven't done this in a long time. Then we have the fourth position. Heel to toes, toes to heel. And this That's one the hurts. Position. And then the last one, sixth position. Ah, that's a little more comfortable. Ah. Oh, Blossom, you're such a show off. No, plie. Now what? Plie. Oh, isn't that the. You got it. Oh, plie, you have yes. It. Plie means to bend. Plie. And straight your legs. And side. Close. You know what? I'm just going to watch. I'm not doing this challenge anyway. He is. Perfect! You see, you're natural. You have this. It takes a lot of effort and concentration. And it takes a lot of effort and concentration to get over my arachnophobia. Okay. Spiders are arachnids, but spiders are not the only arachnids. This is a harvestman. Some people call it a daddy long leg. <laughs> this is an example of an arachnid that's not a spider. Wait a minute. Daddy long legs aren't spiders? One thing that's different about it is that it has no venom. Thank goodness. And it doesn't make any silk. Why do they have silk and venom? Silk to make a home to live in and to capture Catch. flies or whatever so they can eat them. Yes. Why do they use venom? It makes them like paralyzed so they yeah, can't yeah, run like, away. What do you think is in venom? Something that... Poison? Yeah, poison. Ah, poison as in venom, not the hairband from the 80s. <laughs> Ask your parents. I'm sure there's an embarrassing t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> Every spider has to catch and immobilize live prey. So the silk and the venom are the tools that they use to do that. Ah, can we stop with the arm and the crawling? Boy, I gotta get over this. Spiders are so very different from us. They don't have a mouth that they can open. They have jaws, and then there are little fangs at the base of the jaw, and that's how they inject their venom. So then they vomit out digestive enzymes from the mouth, which is a different spot. And that, that helps to liquefy the prey. And then they drink it up. They throw up on their food. And then they drink it. I'd like to see some ballet, please. Jete and close. So you have to, to you have to bang your leg. You bang your leg and you bring it up. Ruff, I'd like to see you try this. Well, I'm not gonna. So keep dancing, buddy. And now I want you to jump over the trash can. Let me watch. Run, 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 and I jump over the can. Whoa! Try not to kick the trash can because if it's full of trash, you have to clean up. All right, so let's not make okay. a mess here, Brian. Let's Ready? go. And go. Run, run, run. And open. Yeah. Good, not bad. And run, 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 open. Oh, he's back job. over. Okay, Nicely done. Now what I want of you. Yes, not bad. Okay. Okay, so this is a tarantula. Oh, Bethany, come back to Studio G. Bethany, I guarantee it's safe. So if you look right there, see, remember this is the cephalothorax and the abdomen? And see those black things right there? Yeah. Those are the fangs. What, does it grow bigger? It does grow bigger. Uh, they have their skeleton on the outside, so they actually have to do something called molt. Their skeleton is on the outside? When they molt, it means they shed their skin. Oh. And this is the skin of the spider. You can touch it to very gently because it's a little bit fragile. Dried spider skin. Can this get any grosser? I feel like I should wash my hands. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I'm all for that. Now we're going to uh, actually give these spiders some prey and see how they catch the prey. Is it, is it the crickets? Yeah. But wait, before mealtime, let's go back to Studio G for halftime. Ruff Ruffman with Liza, Isaac, and Talia. Yeah. We're about to put three brains together and take on the halftime quiz show. Let's go over the rules. 50 points are available. You work together as a team. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. I'm going to ask you 10 questions at five points apiece. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Then let the quiz begin. A biologist who studies spiders is called what? Um, an, an, ara an arachnotologist. Incorrect. You found a critter that has eight legs and three body parts. Could it be a spider? No. Correct. What does plie mean? To jump, to um, bend, to bend. What's the final answer here? To bend. Good. How many foot positions are there in ballet? Six. Five. How many? 
Final answer, come on, guys. Five. Five. Five main ones. Incorrect. What are spinnerets used for? To, to, to make silk. Yes. How many known different species of spiders are there? Over 40,000. 40, 40, yes. Spiders use their venom to do what two things to their prey? To um, in, in mobilize their food and to like throw up on it and suck it back in. Yeah. Good enough. How long does Hannah hold up Hannah for? 40 seconds. Yes, scientists study venom in order to discover new what? Medicines. Yes. And we're out of time. I'm out of breath. Oh, mercy. Fetch 3,000. What do we got? Seven out of ten. That is 35 points. Very good. 35. Let's go over the two that you did not get right. The first question, a biologist who studies spiders is called what? Arachnologist. Oh. Also, how many foot positions are there in ballet? The answer is six. So, couldn't give it to you. Seven out of ten. Good score. Yeah. And so, have spiders gotten any more adorable since halftime? Probably not. But let's check in on our fetchers anyway. This is one of the central tools that we use in spider labs. It's called a pooter. A what? A pooter. Now what we're going to use it for is to transfer insects into spider homes, and then we can observe how the spider captures its prey. Oh, go oh, mercy. So we're going to connect the smaller tube, pushed into the bigger tube, and then we have some extra special pantyhose. The pantyhose oh. keeps a cricket from going into your mouth. Oh, okay. You don't have to touch the cricket or the spider. So if we have some crickets in this container. Now. The world's first cricket slurpee. Okay, so now it's in there. Can you see that? Where is, oh, it's right in that too. And now I'm gonna put it in with this jumping spider. Do you have to blow it again you to just get blow it to it right in. pop out? Yeah. Did you see that? She just shot a cricket at that spider. So jumping spiders are one kind of spider. They're very common and they have big eyes. So they're very visual. They stalk their prey like cats. And so you'll see the spider orient toward the cricket and then walk up to it and pounce on it. Oh, there it goes. Did you see that? It pounced on it. I was not prepared. So once the spider jumps on it, it's going to bite it. It's going to inject venom. Oh, heavens to Betsy. See, spiders only eat living bugs. If there weren't any spiders, there'd be so much more bugs and you'd be like, bugs. And down. You enjoyed my class upstairs, now you have to join my boys' class. Ralph, what did you get me into? Uh, ballet. Get in there. Entendu. Point. And jeté. Close first. Point your feet. More up and uh, back. Close. Fifth in the back. Back at the leg. Fifth. And uh, side. Brian, I see you getting lost here a little bit. It's okay. Ballet's really that. not for me. Brian, what are you talking about? You're doing great. On my first try, I did a lot worse than you. Why do you like ballet so much? I, I love jumping. It just makes you feel like you can do anything. Yeah, the image of it is like girls in tutus. So when you say, oh, I do ballet, they think, oh, oh, you must wear pink tutus and everything. Whenever they say that, I always say, well, football players take ballet to strengthen their feet. It's a, it's a really good exercise. And so now we're going to see how many spiders you can find in five minutes. Oh, man, there must be thousands of spiders there. Jumping spiders and lynx spiders and little crab spiders. I don't like spiders. Oh, no. I don't want to go in. No, you don't have to. I'll tell you one thing, though. The, the spiders around here don't tend to bite people. And uh, there are none here that if they did bite you, um, it, it, that would hurt you. You don't have to go in if you don't want okay. to. Okay, Sterling, you and I are going to spend five minutes out there. Put this on. That's why you've got a teammate. So if you look in the pocket that's right here, there are some empty put this, vials. Put the spiders in here. Take okay. It. This is a sweep net. Just sweep it across the grass. I was wondering if maybe you guys could go and get them and I can put them in the tubes. Absolutely. Yeah, we can bring them back and you can help us put them in the tubes. That'd be great. Yeah, Bethany. We'll get over our arachnophobia together. How's it going? <laughs> uh. Maybe I might try to catch them in there. Maybe. We can see what you feel comfortable with. Okay, let's go in the meadow. Oh, a ballerina here. Oh, a present for you, Brian. I have a ballet gram for you. What's this? I don't know. Open it up. Show everybody. It's showtime. Brian, you and the class will perform in 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yes! You'll be performing Indianapolis Roughman in the Temple of Tutus. So you are the star. Aw, rough. Look, look at the design. Use all eight eyes. <laughs> She's going in. Wow, that is courage. High five. Uh, I mean, eight. Uh, actually, just just one. How you doing? Good. Okay, so the other the other piece of equipment we'll use is something called a beating sheet. We're using a kite. Oh, see that? Oh, yeah. Wow, look at all those. Yeah, oh, yeah. I see this spider. It's a jumping spider, actually. Oh wow, it does jump. Let's spend five minutes and see what we can find. It's not that bad. 
They are definitely sweeping the field. This is a thorough inspection. Wait, Bethany sees something. What do you got? Oh, look, a spider. Oh, yes, it's another green one. Look at you. <laughs> so impressed. I'm getting better. <laughs> look, she's capturing spiders. There's no reason to be scared of spiders. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to marry one, but uh, what? Can I show you guys what you do? Here you go. Oh my gosh. You bow and you turn here to Brian. Now I want you to, to run. Keep the arms in the, sh in the same place. And you go here with the arms and you push them away. And you come here and you start. Tum, 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 tum. All right. Let's try it once with the music, all of us. Da ti ta ta. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, done! And here you have to jump. And run. Pose. And start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, Brian's awesome. <laughs> Great, we have this mite. We have the, the green or the, oh, yeah, the green spider. The green spider. You wouldn't even have known five minutes ago that Bethany was afraid to come out here and look for spiders. Well, thank you so much. I've had a great time today. Thank you, too. And thank I you. have a gift for you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, cool. What is it? Nice. Okay. Well, look, I got a spider. You what? See you in the garage, Rose. Bye. See you later at Studio G. Okay. More spiders. Yay. <laughs> That's great. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Jose Mateo Ballet Theatre. Today, you're going to see the Rough Rough Man Dancers. Oh, this is so exciting. A performance of Indianapolis Rough Man in the Temple of Tutus. <laughs> now, here's the story. It all started with two magic birds who wandered far from home. They were intent on finding the Temple of Tutus. They flew up. They flew down. But no luck. When suddenly... Zombies! Legions of zombies came after the birds and locked them in the temple. But never fear, for Indianapolis Roughman has found the giant key to the temple gate. He has broken through the gate, but watch out! Spiders on the floor, quick! Now twirl past the poison dart. There's a river. Okay, cross by hopping from one crocodile to the next. Yes! Oh no, one of the zombies has the bird. But Indianapolis saves the day and sends the bird on her way. And here we have the final triumphant zombie dance. Yes! A standing ovation! Bravo. That was awesome. See you back at Studio G. And I'm back. And Blossom, let's take this thing home. Yeah, da la da ta da ta I'm lovely. Da da ta you're very strong. And now, let's bring our contestants back to Studio G. Right. Yeah! This intrepid duo made me love spiders all over again. Sterling and Bethany. Hey, what's hey up, guys? guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do not sit next to me with those. Don't worry, spiders are okay. You know, except for the throwing up on their food and feeding it thing. What, you have to admit, that is, that is gross. All right, now, leaping back to Studio G in one single grand jeté, Brian! Hi guys! Nice set. Oh yeah, nice yeah, shoes. Yeah. I tell you, I'm ready to dish out some points. This was an incredible day. Yeah. Shall we? Points it is! Bethany and Sterling, for your awesome challenge, I'm giving you both 75 points. Yeah. Nice! And Bethany, for facing your arachnophobia head on, yeah. another five points. Oh, nice. Nice. nice! Which leaves Sterling with 75 points and Bethany with 80. As we know, Bethany had a tough time on this challenge. If you ever come across a challenge that takes you so far out of your comfort zone that you don't want to do it, it's okay. Yeah. And Bethany, yeah. I am supremely proud of you. Let's give her a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Now then, wow. Brian, I felt like I was back in ballet all over again. It was incredible. The feet positions, the plies, the leaps over a perilously filled trash can. You did it all. 80 points. Yeah. Yeah. But. Is that all the points a daintily toed dog can give? No. What time is it? Bonus points! Yes, today's bonus points go to the new incarnation of Indianapolis Ruffman for handling a solo performance with grace under pressure. Brian with 85 points, you're today's daily winner. Yeah! yeah.
Now then, Brian, I have here two tutus. Uh, two, 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 two. Yes. Go on. Two tutus. Under one tutu, a terrible prize. Horrible. Under the other, the anti-terrible prize. So, which tutu do you choose? One or two? Two, 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 two. Two, two, two. two. Oh, with two? Well then, your prize, Brian, is in the mailbox. All right. Oh. right it's on. It's a Whoa. spider. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that is oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can oh, scare that so looks many real. people like this. It is a remote control oh, tarantula. Look, this is awesome. That is I'm so I'm glad cool. you like it. Dude, that's awesome. Well, that's all the time we have today, Fetchers. So, until next time, Brian, if you would please, dance our Fetchers out of Studio G with grace. <laughs> Nice, nice. Follow Brian, everyone. He's had training. Thank you. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for the biggest, most spectacular live TV event ever. Spider Lake, the first ballet performed exclusively by spiders. I've been training them for weeks. You know how hard it is to get eight-legged tights onto 20 spiders? Okay, it's time. Cue the music, Chet. Go, spiders, go. Okay, quick change of plans. Uh, mouse leg. Come here, Chet. Let me get these tights on you. Hey, Chet. Okay, uh, Lake. Thank you. What? What am I doing? I'm rocking out in front of my fans. I have to rehearse. I'm booked for a rock concert in South Carolina. A typo? You think they wanted to hire my cousin Roof Roofman, the internationally celebrated environmentalist and rock star from Sweden, instead of me? Ridiculous. Hello, Roof. How are you? Hey, Roof. Blossom here thinks the folks in South Carolina made a mistake. Yeah, correct. He's the kitty cat. They want me, not you. Oh. Well, can I still go to South Carolina and be in your band? Dude? <laughs> Young Scott had an iron box selling me bun! <laughs> Was that a yes? Translator! I would rather have a jar of herring in my band than you. Uh, okay, there, there's some wiggle room, don't you think? Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and BAM! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Ah! Now that one better than the last take. Here come the contestants now! He enjoys playing football with his family, except when his sister tackles him. Sterling! She once needed a magnifying glass to see her pet brine shrimp. Talia! She's fascinated by the concept of levers. Just hearing about levers gives her a lift. Bethany! She writes plays and performs them with her siblings. Liza! He doesn't like cilantro. He doesn't like parsley. If you're green and used for garnish, you're no friend of Brian. He likes music you can jump around to. Isaac! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian and Liza tied for fifth with 305 points. Isaac down to fourth with 317 and a half. Talia down to third with 320. Sterling all the way up to second with 337 and a half. And Bethany still in first with 367 and a half points. Hi, and welcome to Fetch, the only game show where the host can also lay down the awesomest guitar solo ever! We can play guitar? Uh, I can't, but I can make guitar noises with my mouth. Rock and roll! Yes, yes! You guys are great! It has always been a dream of mine to be in a band. And I happen to be cousins with the famous Swedish rock star, Roof Roofman. Who's that? He's the one that wrote, If you go to sleep now, that won't be right, cause I still need one more walk tonight. Yeah. Anyway.
Broadway. Okay. I'm really hoping he lets me rock with him at his one night only show in South Carolina. He just sent this video message. Cousin Roth, I have decided you can come rock with us after you learn to rock, of course. But you need to find me a place to stay while I'm there, and it needs to be green. Yeah, bye now. Okay. Nice. Ha! Rock stars. I want to prove to Roof that I can fit into his band. So that brings us to challenge number one. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sterling, Liza, I yeah. challenge you to rock out. Yeah. Your right, instructions guys. are in the yeah. mailbox. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Challenge number two. Two. Ruth and his band are currently sailing to South Carolina from Sweden because a plane from Stockholm to Charleston would use a bajillion pounds of fuel, and Ruth is a big booster of conservation. So, where is he staying when he gets to Carolina? Talia, Isaac, you'll be the first to find out. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox. So, yeah! Bitch. Yeah, guys. See ya. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Happy South Carolina. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Bethany and Brian have stayed behind in the studio, and you're going to be eligible to win points of your own during the halftime quiz show. Halftime quiz show! And the Fetch Fairness Guarantee needs no introduction. All the contestants will have competed for the same damn number of points by the grand finale! Woo! So, for the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally! Yeah. So let's turn up the volume to 11 with Sterling and Liza! Ah, the school of groove. All right. Oh, I'm Trevor. It's my good buddy Ivan. What's up? All right, you guys play instruments? I play guitar. How long have yeah. you been playing? About like a year. Sterling already plays guitar. What do you do? Um, singing and piano. Well, you guys want to learn how to be rock stars today? Yeah. yeah. Let's rock out. Ah! You think you can do it in a day, Ruff? If they can do it, I can do it. Two, three, four. Da 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 da. All right, Sterling, you're coming with me. I'm gonna teach you some guitar. And then Liza, you're gonna follow Trevor. He's gonna teach you some vocals. Oh! Well, Trevor's either gonna teach Liza to sing or burp. I'm not sure which. Today we're gonna write a song. So do you ever play any shows or anything like that? Are you actually like a musician already? I did Cinderella. Cinderella, 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 Cinderella. All right, I should really play this guitar instead of making noises with my mouth. Ooh, that was not good. Well, uh, what kind of music are you into? I really actually listen to the Beatles a lot. So do you know any lyrics from those guys, or do you write any of your own lyrics? Is there anything you like to say? Not really. Not really! Not really! Wow, this guy can make a song out of anything! Not really. Okay, let's write something great. Let's do something rock. Oh, man, that's rocking hard there, Sterling. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. I got rock in my blood, man. <laughs> now, the basis of rock is blues. So why don't we write a 12-bar blues? Yeah. So now I'm going to give you a rhythm to play it. OK, that's incredible, man. Perfect. Cool, Sterling. OK, Blossom, I found the perfect place for Ruth to stay and sent it to my pal Beezer. Look at that green roof. <laughs> now we just need Talia and Isaac to set it up for him. I'll call Roof and let him know. Hey, Roof! So check out where you're staying in South Carolina. The latest in log dog lodges. It's green, just like I asked for. Ruff, Ruff, man, where have you been? Green building mean environmentally friendly, not the color green. That lodge will not do. You must do better if you want to rock with us. Environmentally friendly? Oh, no! I'm gonna have to catch the kids when they get there. Are you Beezer? I am. Dahlia, Isaac, over yeah. here! Hey, Ruff, what's up? Look, Roof just saw the doghouse I sent, and he is not happy. I guess I misunderstood him when he said green. I'm sure it was his accent. But we're in good hands with Beezer. He's going to give you the lowdown about green building. Okay. Kay. So what's bad about this house? It's got an asphalt roof, which is dark and therefore absorbs energy. Is that bad? Makes the house very hot in the summer, especially. Okay, okay. So that dark green roof absorbs a lot of light energy from the sun and makes it hot inside. That is not good. This wood looks like it's California redwood, and we're here in South Carolina, which means this was probably shipped across the country, burning up fossil fuels. Oh. It does not have any renewable energy source that I can see, and it doesn't give back to the environment in any way. Uh-oh, Roof was right. This house isn't very green at all. So your challenge today is to build Roof a green doghouse. 
one that stays cool in the summertime, uses renewable energy, and to somehow give back to the environment. Give back to the environment, huh? So if you take something from the environment to use in the house, then you must also return something? I wonder how we can do that. This particular building, Half Moon Outfitters, is a very greenly constructed building. And we tried to look at every aspect of the building so that it would stay cool in the summertime, warm in the winter, and use the least amount of energy possible. Do you guys see anything in this room that strikes you as green construction? Well, there are, the the yeah, there are a lot of windows, so you don't need to use as many lights. Yes, we're trying to let as much sunlight into this room as possible so we don't need electricity to power lights. Or heat. Exactly, and in the winter time, the sun passes low in the southern sky and comes straight through these windows and heats the building. Clever! The sun's lower in the sky during the winter, so it shines straight through all those windows and heats the room up. Okay, what do you guys think about the, the wood that you see in here? Is it from South Carolina? Yes, this is South Carolina harvested pine, and then this is South Carolina harvested cedar. Wow! If the wood is from South Carolina, then it's local and doesn't use a lot of energy to transport it. When you sing, you want to make sure that the person in the absolute back of the crowd is going to be hearing you, and they're going to be like, whoa! Liza blew my head out. That's right, they want to hear you in the cheap seats. Now I'm just going to hit G. And you're just going to belt, go G. 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 You want to do A? A. Come on, bring it up. I got to hear you. A. Come on, Liza. We need to find her inner scream. So let me teach you how to write down this 12 bar blues. This right here is called a measure. There's four of them in a line, and there's three lines that makes 12, 12 bar blues. We want to play four beats inside every measure. It'd be like, on top, I'm going to put a chord symbol. That's A. We're going to do that four times. Okay. The next one is a D. Then switch back to the A. Yeah. The next chord we're going to encounter is an E. E. Then back to the D, then to the A, and then back to the E. Right. <laughs> and back to the If you folks at home think this is difficult, try doing it with pause. Okay, the E, the D, the A, and the E. Yeah. Like it. Oh, oh that's right, baby. Yes. He got yeah. the blues. Ah. Ruff, I think I got it down. You know, I think I'm ready to write a song. Sterling, you're going to write an awesome song. I want you to run around this building as fast as you can and tell me how many green elements you see. Okay, so we got the windows, we got yep. the cedar. The trees. And the, the flowers and plants. The boat. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, it's a rowboat. So, yeah. it so no motor. energy. No motor. No, they've got a lot of trash. Not a lot of trash. Oh, that's all the kids. It's catching rainwater. All the water's going to there. So it's yeah. like collecting the water. It's good. Yeah. Oh, look, they're recycling. So that's, oh, that's there's one of those special energy conserving bowls. I think those are solar panels on top of that. Really? Wow, Beezer sure thought of everything. I need to hire him to make Studio G green. No, 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 Chet, not, not the color green, not the color green. What do you okay, got? Okay, we got solar panels. There was the water that you caught from the rainwater. And it went to awesome. these big, like, tubs. Yeah, those rainwater barrels are enough to irrigate these plants and flush our toilets. Did you hear that? Collecting rain to water the plants and flush the toilets means they use less water from the faucet. I guess that's how they give back to the environment. Do you guys know how solar panels work? Something with electrons? That's exactly right. So light energy in the form of sunlight hits the panels, knocks loose electrons from the PV material, the photovoltaic material, and creates electricity, which is then put right into our electrical system offsetting the power we need from our local utility. So it converts sun energy to whatever other energy we need. Exactly. That's right, Blossom. Solar energy is renewable because it doesn't get used up. So maybe they can use one on Roof's doghouse. Now it's time for them to get to work building. Guys, I'm here. Hey, Ralph, what's up? Hey, I've got a great location for this doghouse you're building for Roof. Head downtown to the Children's Museum of the Low Country. Look for Larissa and Sarah from Earth Force. They'll get you started. Okay, thanks, Ruff. We'll get it done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Beezer. Ruff Ruffman rocking out here in Studio G with Brian and Bethany. It's time for you guys to earn some points of your own in the halftime quiz show. Yeah! Let's brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. You guys ready? Yeah! Then let the quiz begin. What are the three requirements my cousin Roof has for his green doghouse? It has to be cool, has to be energy efficient. Energy efficient, and, and it has to give back to the environment. Yeah, give back to the environment. Not specific enough. True or false? The Half Moon Outfitters windows face north to get the most sunlight and to get the most heat in the winter. 
False. Good. Beezer mentions two types of wood from South Carolina. Name them. Cedar wood. Cedar and pine. Pine. Good. Name two things wrong with the doghouse I sent. They had an asphalt and it was um, cedar wood. Yeah, and they had a ship from California yeah. there. Good, good. Name three green things Talia and Isaac find on the outside of the Half Moon Outfitters the building. Toes, the toes, the windows, and, and the grass. And solar panels. Okay, good. How many lines of music are there in Trevor's 12-bar blue sheet music? Four. Incorrect. Half Moon Outfitters collects rainwater to water their plants and to blank. And to... And to... Flush their toilets. Yes. Yeah. Why is a dark-colored roof bad for a doghouse? Because a black roof absorbs, absorbs the energy. energy. Yeah. Right. What musical did Liza appear before she was a fetcher? Um, Beatles. No. no. According... Oh, we're out of time. We'll confirm with the best 3,000 and see how you did. Ah, six out of ten. Thirty points, guys. That's okay. Now, let's go over the ones you missed. What are the three requirements Roof has for his green doghouse? You said energy efficient, which means it uses less energy, but Roof wants his doghouse to use renewable energy. Uh, yeah, two I out of three. Also, how many lines of music are there in Trevor's 12-bar blues sheet music? Three. Oh. Also, what musical did Liza appear in before she was a fetcher? I did Cinderella. Oh, Cinderella. Cinderella. I thought... You said music group that she liked, so I said the Beatles. No, music calm. Okay, are Sterling and Liza looking more Rolling Stones or Rappy? Let's find out! You want to write a song about rough? Yeah. <laughs> this is basic song structure right here. All right, playing rock and roll or going over Liza's report card? <laughs> no, we're playing rock and roll. Now, AA, this usually stands for like verse, like what the song is about. These are lyric structures, okay. The B is like, it's kind of a chorus. It's like a heavier part. What do you want to say to rough? Well, Ruff is pretty awesome. This is Ruff true. Ruff is awesome. That's as good a lyric as I've ever heard, so we'll say it twice. Twice is now nice. Now is your chance to stick it to Ruff. Uh, he's a bad dog. Wait, he is not a bad, bad dog, I'm a good dog. dog. Ruff is awesome, Ruff is awesome, but he's a bad dog. Wait, is that bad meaning bad or bad meaning good? Does he hang around the neighborhood? Does he pick up after himself? Yes. Does he like Chinese food? Noodles. Ruff, do you like Chinese food? It's okay. Ignore these boxes. So the chorus is what you remember. Chorus is the most catchy part of the song. We gotta come up with something good that is gonna catch everybody's attention. Mm. Pressure's on now. So I think we might want in the shade, maybe, to keep it cooler. Hey, so hey guys! We don't want... I'm Harissa. And I'm Sarah. So what exactly is Earth Force? It's an organization that works with students to get them involved with their community and find solutions to environmental problems. Cool. We have to modify this doghouse to make it environmentally good. Well, maybe we should bring some, some ideas. Cool. So our three criteria are to give back, keep the inside cool in the summer, and have renewable energy. We want some wood that's grown here so it doesn't okay. have to ship over. Mm -hmm. Right, local so, wood. Solar panels maybe to, for renewable energy? Yes. Okay. Do you think maybe there's something we could um, use with the solar panels that the solar panels could um, power? Oh, like, so like a fan or yeah. AC? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And the fan would help keep the house cool. A grass roof maybe? Would that be like giving back? Because it absorbs CO2 and lets out oxygen? Yeah. yeah. Grass on the roof? So the grass absorbs carbon dioxide and gives back oxygen, which is what we all need. So this house will have a green roof, too. <laughs> Very smart, Talia. Some water? Oh, yeah. And then we can maybe put the water in the organic garden over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. This way we don't waste the water. Butter there. Yeah. Ruff, I think your cousin's really going to like this. It's going to be cool, and it's going to be really environmentally friendly. Good, because the cooler you make that place, the cooler Ruff will think of me, and then I'll get to be so cool and play in his band. All right, Sterling, if you don't rock, you cannot hang out with us. All right, guys, do our best. Nice wide stance. Be a pyramid. Now that we're a band, what do you want to call ourselves? My nickname is Zaza. Right. My stage name is Diesel. You guys want to put them together? DZ. Give it up to DZ. Hello. Love it. One, two, three, four. Ruff is awesome. Ruff is awesome. But he is a bad dog. There you go. Bad meaning cool. Noodles, egg rolls. Hey. Noodles, egg rolls. Noodles, egg rolls. And his favorite food. Hey. They are. Ooh, I'm tough! You hear that, Blossom? I'm tough. Ow, ow, blister from playing guitar. Anyway, I think they're ready to rock the town. The zone. Hey, Trevor! Ruff. Ruff! What's up? Tell my fetchers. They are going to perform in front of a packed house tonight at the hottest spot in town. They get to play a big gig in front of a whole bunch of people later? Oh, yeah. That's crazy. So, you know what that means? That practice. Right. But I gotta practice for my big show, too! So here's our plan. Let's All right. build the frame first. Do you guys know where this wood came from? South Carolina. Yeah, it actually came from right down the street. Oh, There's really? an old cigar factory, and this is where the old plywood came from. Cool! So it's local and recycled wood. 
We've got some power tools. Oh, great. Wait, uh, do we have to okay. use this? Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. Why even the drill is green? But in this case, we do mean the color. I feel so much, like, stronger. Good thing the girls are there to help them with that screwdriver. Okay. Wait till Ruth gets a load of this. This acts like a protective barrier. Cool. There's the grass instead of the asphalt roof. Oh, Rob, this is disgusting. Come on, nice. Talia. Don't be sod. <laughs> Get it? Sad? Sod? <laughs> uh, funny. Okay, now put the solar panel on. Okay. Oh, there we go. Hey. A solar awesome. powered fan. Sorry, Chet. You're still going to have to be the one to power our fans. Check this okay, now they're setting up a system to collect rainwater. There we go. You yeah. got it? That way, like that. So I yeah, I have to get the two. Oh. Wait a minute. Somebody's calling them and it's not me? Hello? Um. It's one of the inspectors. He says that we have a green doghouse that he wants to inspect. Wow, this is the ultimate test here. My rock and roll future is riding on his approval. You guys ready? Yeah, I am. All right, good. That's I'm good. nervous in a good way. Use it, it's good energy. It's in your heart, let it out, you know? All right, cool, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm nervous for my fetchers. Wow, a lot of kids here. Welcome to the Here comes Sterling and Liza. You guys have a dog house here. It inspect us. It had to give back. It had to keep the inside cool in the summer. And it had to have renewable energy. It has a solar panel. And that powers the fan, which keeps the inside of it cool. Except our fan's not working right now because there's no sunlight. Because there's not a lot of sun, but that's not our fault. And this was renewable. Well, in fairness, you probably don't need the fan working until the sun comes out. And then giving back was the water. It collects the rainwater instead of wasting it. So that he could use and the rainwater. So and he could, like, drink that water. Sure. He could that's drink it. Cool the grass that absorbs CO2. Yeah. Oh no! Is that dog an inspector too? So your environmental impact of this doghouse is very low, and you're also giving back, so that's excellent work. Hey. Excellent work! You guys rocked the dog lodge! Roof is gonna love it! Thank you for coming here and inspecting our doghouse. Do yeah. good work. Thank you. Proud of you. And we'll see you back in Studio G, Ralph. See you back in Studio G, guys! Uh, by the way, can't use that doghouse. It's for my cousin Roof. Sorry. Ruff Ruff been rocking out back here with Brian and Bethany. Yeah! yeah. Hey. Let's bring back our contestants. This duo grew things on a roof. Isaac and Talia. Hey, yes, hey. Welcome back, welcome back. If they played rock, paper, scissors, you know what Sterling and Liza would choose? Rock! Yeah, rock. That's right, get in here, guys. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Rock stars, rock stars. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but before the show ends, I think I should give out some points. Yeah. Isaac and Talia. Have you satisfied the stringent demands of Roof? Roof? Yeah. They exceeded the design goals? Yeah. And they found two ways to get back to the environment? Yeah. Collecting the rainwater and reusing the drippity drops. That is good. And the uh, green roof? I like so much. 80 points! Nice. Now then, Liza, Sterling. We have a saying in Sweden, when the rock is in your bones, the herring is in your soul. What? What? Are you sure you're translating that properly? Yeah, and these two clearly have the rock and the herring. Ruff is awesome. For writing a killer song and putting on an Ruff epic performance. Awesome. Ruff is awesome. 75 points. Nice. Nice. Is that all the points a dog can give? No. What time is it? Bonus points. Yes, today's five bonus points go to the contestant who turned my green roof into a green roof. A grass roof absorbs CO2 and lets out oxygen. Talia, with 85 points, yeah, you're yeah, today's daily awesome. winner. Oh, yeah. Nice. Now, Talia, I have here little houses made of rock. Under one house of rock, a rockin' prize. 
under the other, a prize that will not make you dance. Which House of Rock will it be? House of Rock A or House of Rock B? A. B. Okay, I'll go with A. Excellent. Then, Talia, your prize is in the mailbox. Oh, I can't wait to see what it is. Oh, oh, it's like a awesome. radio slash flashlight. Yes, that is a hand crank radio slash flashlight. Yeah, awesome. thank you, Rock. Congratulations. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. Until next time, we're going to be rocking our way out of here on that oh, yeah. thing. It's Mystique. So, Rob, audition time is now. Hit me with your shot. That is best. You got it, Roof. Okay, guys. Yeah, that is good stuff. I will see you in the band tonight. Really? Not you. I speak of the kitty cat and the mouse. Don't be late. Oh, guess it's back to the old kazoo for me then. Whatever. Can't believe it. I want a golden blobby. A golden blobby. What's a golden blobby? Only the biggest award in the dog world. Hello? It's also not the heaviest. Oh. Whew. So, what do you think? I got it for best <laughs> screaming by a dog during a luge race. What? It's not ugly. You want it off your desk this minute. Okay, I'll, I'll get to it. But, uh, uh, can I just use the bathroom first? Because it was really a long ride and I... You want it off your desk this minute? Fine. Where, where should I put it? Chet, can you help me out here? Put it in the bathroom? Ooh, great idea. Two birds with one stone. I'll just put it on the shelf above the toilet. Ah! Ah! The blobby broke the toilet! Quick, call the plumber! They can't come until tomorrow, but I really have to go! Blossom, when a dog uses a litter box, he's no longer a dog. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find to their alarm a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. I'll get the fire extinguisher. Come the contestants now! He says he has bad handwriting. Sterling! He enjoys solving puzzles. Brian! He was once attacked by a shark! Luckily, it was just a dream. Isaac! One reason she admires her dad? He runs into fires and rescues people. Bethany! She once trained her frog to climb through one of her bracelets. Liza! She finds it annoying when people ignore her. Natalia! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in fifth place with 335 points. Liza in fourth with 380. Bethany and Isaac now tied for third with 397 and a half. Talia up to second with 405 and Sterling in first with 412 and a half points. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, I know you're going to do well today, because you're all whizzes. <laughs> Whiz? <laughs> What's that, Whiz? Blossom? You're making peas for lunch? Save me a pea. Yeah, a big pea. Love it. I have a wee question. I'm making a wee bug pipe for your wee mousey. It's got a wee tussle and a very wee blunder. And ah! Not now, Uncle. Chet, will you please turn off that water? Ah! Thank you. Ruff, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm actually just fine. I, I, I couldn't be bladder. I couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Do you have to pee? No, 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 no. I just, uh, <laughs> my toilet broke. But I will not <laughs> use kitty litter, and I refuse to go outside. It's okay for other dogs. In fact, that'll be challenge number one. Help some of my dog friends with their duties. Uh, duties. Du ah, Sterling, Liza, you're in the business of helping dogs with their business. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go! Yeah. Oh, Close. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hurry up, guys. Go, 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 go. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.
Challenge number two. Oh, challenge number two. I need a new toilet. <laughs> one that won't break. I mean, NASA should be working on this. What, Blossom? NASA is working on this? Stephanie Wilson's on the phone. She's an astronaut? You've got a real astronaut on the phone. Hold on a sec, Fetchers. Hello? Stephanie? Hi, Ruff. I heard you need some help? Uh, yes, I do need help, as a matter of fact. Uh, with a rather delicate situation. <laughs> Ruff, I think I can help you out. We have to go to the bathroom, too, when we're in space. Why's that really help me here? <laughs> we have some very smart engineers working on this very problem. I'm going to put your fetchers in touch with Bob, my colleague at NASA. Absolutely! I said, Bethany, everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Yeah, guys. guys. Go, 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 guys. I love you, but you got to move. Bye, Bye Ruff. Oh, all right, great, thank you very much. Okay, as determined by the Fetch 3000, Brian and Talia have stayed yeah. behind in the studio for today's yeah. show, but you'll be eligible to win points during the halftime win show. Win show, win show. <laughs> the Fetch Fairness Guarantee is still in effect, of course, guys. All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. Oh, I need a finale. <laughs> for the four kids out on the... Stop laughing. <laughs> for the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the Triumph Tally. So let's get going already and get the poop from Sterling and Liza. The scoop from Sterling and Liza. The latest <laughs> instance of terminating information. Hi. Hi, I'm Drew. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm a pet butler. Wait a minute. Pet, pet butlers? This is Fenway. Hi, Fenway. And I'm going to teach you all about taking care of dogs today. Well, look what we have here. Oh. Sorry, folks. Didn't see that one coming. What do you think that is? Horse poop. poop. Horse poop? And why do you think the owners of the horse didn't pick that up? Horses are allowed to poop wherever they want to, apparently, in the nature e world. <laughs> yeah, the main difference is it's vegetarian-based, because that's all they eat, it's hay and grass. Fenway's poop is protein-based because he eats meat. And with that, there are diseases that could contaminate the water streams in the area, and that could be very bad. That's why I'm very careful about where I go. I clean up after myself. I don't have a butler do it. So you guys ready to walk Fenway on your own? Yeah. You know, I may have to change my thinking about going outside. Uh, walk is starting to sound good right about now. <laughs> well, we're going to have you walk Fenway and some of Ruff's other friends. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> Look at all the dogs. This is Kaya. This is Lucy. This is Riley. Anybody want to take Maggie? There's a couple more over here you have to take. <laughs> this is Zoe. Who wants Chloe? Alrighty then. All right, guys, guys, let's help my fetchers out here. Let's not get tangled. Ruff, this is a lot harder than it looks. Hello? Hey, Sterling. It's Rob. How's it going? It's a little complicated. I'm walking three dogs at once and they're getting all tangled up. Well, don't worry. I'm sending some assistance to you. It's family feud time. Family feud time? A little help from mom and dad. Hey, guys. <laughs> There's Sterling's dad and Liza's mom. They're here to help. Chat, do you have to have lemonade right now? Seriously? Okay, let's check in on my space toilet. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that must be Bob. I'm Isaac. Hi, Hello. Isaac. I'm Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Welcome to NASA. Ruff Ruffman sent us. He's having a problem. His hydrant broke. Oh. My toilet. My toilet. Just looks like a hydrant. At NASA, we've been working on ways to take astronaut urine and collect it and turn it back into clean drinking water that they can use over and over again. Oh, that sounds Wait, delicious. what? Look, I just need a toilet, not... Ugh. Have you heard of something called the water cycle? Yeah, yeah, like when water evaporates and then condenses into clouds and then right. it precipitates to come back into the soil. The water filters down through different dirts and sediments in the earth and you wind up getting a purification of that water as it goes around in that cycle. Now on Space Station, we've had to come up with a system to do that a lot faster and to take up a lot less space. So how does it work? Well, we evaporate urine, and then we condense that water, and then we process it through filters that remove solid materials. We call those particulates. We then send it through multi-filtration devices, and all the different contaminants that are in the water get removed by those materials. Well, you look at all those machines they need to take the bad stuff out of the urine. Do you have any idea how much water the average person uses every day? 10 gallons. I e even more than that, 35 gallons of water every day. 35 gallons? Wow, that's a lot. What do you think we use that water for? Uh, stay hydrated. What else? Uh, washing your car. Exactly, washing. Doing dishes. Doing dishes, watering plants, watering your lawn. That's a lot of water. 
Now, on space station, astronauts still need about three gallons of water per day, but it still adds up to a lot of water over the course of the year. So we figured if we could come up with a way to use the water that's already on space station and use that over and over again, then we could put more important stuff on the shuttle. And why don't you go see my friend, Mary Beth? She can tell you all about it. OK, okay cool. thank you. All right, see, see ya. Chad, do you have to water that plant right now? The first part of this challenge is an obstacle course. What? It's the yellow team against the orange team. And the first one to the finish line wins. But there are obstacles there. It's a canine obstacle course. Dog walking is the first dog duty they need to master. We've got a trail with lots of canine distractions. There are other dogs, banana peels, some picnickers, tennis balls, and small children. The yellow team takes all the dogs. Here you go! On your marks, get set, go! Oh, oh that's close. Maybe I shouldn't say go. Come on, doggies. Come on, ducks. Okay, first obstacle is another dog. Control him. Control him, Sterling. Slow down. What are oh, these banana, banana peels? peels? Oh, no. All right, let's not trip on those. Ooh, pizza. <laughs> no, no, pizza. Now, if I can't eat that pizza, well, then you guys can't eat that pizza. Oh, no. Tennis balls. Ooh, no dog can resist them. No. Oh, oh, watch out for the girl. Oh, oh man. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay, orange team, it's your turn. They're pretty excited about what's out there. <laughs> Another dog. Other dogs are very distracting for some reason. And uh, well, one of the dogs slowed him down. There we go. <laughs> There's pizza. No, and don't no, eat no, the no. pizza. No. Uh, that, that, put down that no, plate. Stop. That's not your plate. Sorry about that. Uh-oh. The tennis balls. <laughs> Good to get it through. Here comes the finish line. Thank you. Oh, and Liza's <laughs> exhausted. Well, you both did a great job. Sterling, your team was a little out of control. You wiped out a little girl. Sterling, what's that up with so that? Good. You took a kid out. Now, Liza, you got through the dog walker fine, but one of your dogs ate a slice of pizza. Your time was a little bit slower, so I'd have to say that Sterling's team is the big winner. And Team Yellow wins. Sterling and his dad take it. Check. Do you have to test out the sprinkler system right now? This is the payload operations center where we can command experiments and talk to the astronauts. I'm building hardware to make the space station into a home. I work on bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens, and then on life support, recycling air and water. Right now, the space station holds three crew all the time. We're going to be able to go to six crew because we're going to be able to recycle urine. That doesn't seem too healthy. Yeah, I agree with Isaac. There's so much salt in your urine that salt is the trick. The system is going to take care of all of that. By the time it's been processed through Bob's system, it's perfectly clean, pure water. In fact, it's cleaner than what you get in the bottled water. Cleaner than bottled water? Does it go through something and then it just comes back out into like a faucet or something? Sort of, yeah. You pee into a, um, essentially like a vacuum cleaner hose. Um, don't do it at home because it'll make your mom's mad. A vacuum cleaner? Are you kidding? I hate vacuum cleaners. And there's a little bit of airflow that pulls the urine away from your body and into a tank. And then Bob takes over from there. Okay, they're going to learn how to filter liquid waste. <laughs> now, we could make a multi-filtration bed just like those ones out there, but those are kind of expensive. So maybe we could build something that uses materials that Ruff can afford to buy. That would be good. I'd like to keep it within budget. So we have activated carbon, gravel, sand like you would find on a beach, crushed stone. Ah, so the rocks and sand and stuff will filter the dirty water. Kind of like how rocks and sand filter water in the water cycle. And we have uncooked macaroni. Wait a minute, wait a minute, we're filtering tea we're making pasta? We've got a wastewater here. We've put some sand in to simulate particulate matter. We have some salt. We have some hair. In fact, it's cat hair. Ah, cat hair! Oh, this keeps getting worse! And then for one final touch, we've added some food coloring. Thank you for making that look so real. Your job is to turn this water into clean water. The first thing we'll want to look at is whether it, it looks clean. And that'll be able to tell us a lot, but it won't be able to tell us everything. So we've got a special instrument behind us that we can use to measure the purity of the water. It's a measurement we call electrical conductivity. Yeah. That fake pee can conduct electricity. And I can conduct the halftime quiz show. Hi, Rob Ruffman here at Studio G. You guys want to get some points? Yeah. Now let's brush up on the rules, shall we? 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. OK? Yeah. Then let the quiz begin. How much water does an average person use in a day? 35 gallons. 
My goodness, an astronaut aboard the space station needs how much water in a day? Five! Incorrect! Water is naturally purified on Earth through a process called the water cycle. Name three steps of the cycle. Precipitation. Precipitation. Condensation. Yes! What's the first thing that gets removed from wastewater in Bob's system? Me. Oh, solid okay. material. Oh, good, yes! Name three of the dogs other than Fenway who lies on Sterling Walk. Chloe. And? Chloe. And? Come on, three of them! I need two more! Pass! True or false? The recycled wastewater on the space station won't be as pure as bottled water. False! false. Yes! Bethany and Isaac will measure blank to check the purity of the water they treat. What are they gonna measure? Solid material! No, 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 no. Why is dogs waste protein based? Because they eat vegetables. They no, eat... because they eat meat. Which is it? Vegetable or meat? Meat, meat! Yes! Oh, we are out of time! Oh, Bet 3,000, how many did they get right? Five out of ten! That's yes. 25 oh, points! Yeah. Let's go over the ones you got wrong or skipped and missed. An astronaut aboard the space station needs how much water in a day? The answer is three gallons. You skipped uh, number five, Dave, three of the dogs other than Fenway, Chloe. who Liza and Sterling walk. There's a lot of them. There was Chloe, Lucy, Riley, Maggie, Zoe. Also, Bethany and Isaac will measure blank to check the purity of the water they treat. Electrical conductivity. Oh, that's what I'm kind of Let's call it a decent halftime quiz show. Yeah, we'll call it, we'll call it half full. Yep. And now, will Isaac and Bethany find a way to recycle wastewater, or will future astronauts have to use kitty litter? Let's find out. Okay, so let's brainstorm some things that we want to add. What if we take some of these things? Coffee filters? I was thinking maybe we could we could cut off this end, and then we can put like something like this on the end. Okay. Aquarium gravel. I was thinking that maybe we could use the macaroni. A little bit of activated carbon. A little bit of macaroni. Look at that huge hunk of hair just floating there. Oh, okay, come on. It's only urine and hair. In fact, it's not even wow. real urine. It's fake. Oh, and kids, if you're trying this at home, I think your parents would appreciate you using fake urine, too. Look at the water coming through. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I think it looks more yellow. Bob. How's it going? Not so hot, Bob. We've we figured out how to strain it, but that's the easiest part. Well, let's see. <laughs> Well, I'll bet it's cleaner than it looks. <laughs> this is a conductivity sensor. If your water has a lot of contaminants in it, this sensor will read a lot of electric current. Let's check to see how the sensor works by first measuring how clean a sample of what we call deionized water is. Deionized water? What's that? Oh, it's water that's had all the ions removed, like salt. Thank you, Blossom. See that number at the top? That means its conductivity value is about 1.1 micro siemens per centimeter and that's just the fancy unit of measure we use for conductivity okay so the clean deionized water comes in at about one doesn't conduct electricity too well this is a sample of your wastewater so we're going to check the conductivity of that now next. this is the unfiltered contaminated you water stir it around a little bit to make sure you're getting a good sample whoa yeah about 13 and a half yeah 13 and a half that's much more than the clean water. It's a lot more contaminated. A Ew. lot more contaminated. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the processed water. Now, this is the water that they poured through their filtration system. I think that's going to be like nine. Well, let's see. Stir it around. What's it looking like? It's, it's just 13.15. Wow, we didn't take like anything out of it. Oh, man, it's about the same. It's a start. Um, uh, it's a start. I have to finish. If you had to do it again and, and used a lot more of the materials, yeah, you would have really done a good job cleaning that water up. Oh, Blossom, the filter's not going to cut it. You need to get me one of those vacuum toilets that Mary Beth was talking about. <laughs> You've used your brains a lot today, but I'm wondering if you could do me a favor and maybe use your muscles to help us out at NASA. We have a special test facility here where we get volunteers to come in and exercise for us. We use that to test our space station water recovery system. <laughs> Let's check in on Team Liza and Team Sterling. We're here at the second part of our event today. Oh, look at those trees. It's like a land full of toilets. We're gonna pick up after what dogs do best. <laughs> You're gonna have a bucket and a spade. You're gonna pick up as many piles as you possibly can. All right, challenge number two. Literally, it's the poop scoop relay. Have you take care of dogs, you gotta clean up after them, and this includes their poop. Oh, come on, Liza, it's not a big deal. On your marks, get set, go! Oh, looks like their strategy is to pick up the poop with their hands. It's okay, they've got gloves, calm down. Come on, this is important, guys. I know it's not pretty, but you gotta clean up after your dog. Stop! Time's up! Let's see who wears the poop scoop crown. Oh, wait, you probably wouldn't want to wear that. 
That was a great competition. Liza's team won by a poop. Liza's team by one poop! One poop made a difference. Wow! <laughs> that was the closest poop scoop race I have ever seen. And the only one. Whoa! This is our test facility where we get people to come in and exercise for us. And by exercising, you generate a lot of sweat, and you breathe heavy, and that water vapor is collected, and it's turned into condensate. That thing's gonna suck the sweat right off them. Go, Bethany, work that sweat! Come on, Isaac! Come on, guys! We gotta help these astronauts! Two, three! They are working up a sweat, which an astronaut may eventually drink. Mm. Oh, Chet! Must you install a Roman fountain in my doghouse right now? <laughs> okay, Fetchers, we're at the third part of our competition. This is their final dog duty. The mess them up, clean them up relay. If you're gonna take care of dogs, you gotta keep them clean. Liza and Sterling and their parents will each get the dogs as muddy as possible. And then they are swapping dogs. The team with the cleanest dog at the end wins. On your marks, get set, go! <laughs> Oh, yeah! Oh, <laughs> oh, you guys weren't ready for the shake! <laughs> nice! Switch! Here you go. Right. Yeah, one dirty dog. Come on, Sophie. Now, this will be a little bit harder. Dogs love to be dirty. Oh, why did I give them a challenge involving a hose? Is that a chocolate lab? <laughs> Wow, Liza, that's a fetcher who wants victory. Well, now we gotta dry it. Oh, there we go. Dry off the fur? Good. Liza Sterling, you did a great job. But I have to say, Liza, your dog wins. The cleanest Ooh! and most beautiful oh, canine. <laughs> Thank you for teaching us so much about dogs today. Hey, Sterling. See you at the garage, Ruff. It's Studio P, Liza. Oh, I mean Studio G. Oh, I'm going crazy. <laughs> Where do you think all that sweat went? Here. That's right. It all came out right here. We're processing it through the Space Station Water Recovery System. Wow. You guys did a lot of work for us today. This is a sample of the water that's produced by our Space Station Water System. And since you guys work so hard, you guys get to drink some of the water. Hey, what? Oh, oh, please don't drink in front of me. Oh, no, Blossom. I don't think I can hold it anymore. You've got to call NASA again. Please, I need that toilet thingy right now. I don't care if I'm afraid of vacuums. I'll use it. What? What do you mean my vacuum toilet is on the space shuttle? Which is launching right now? No! No! My toilet! <laughs> Go back! Well, isn't that always the way? You finally get a replacement toilet, but it winds up in orbit on the space shuttle. Now, the duo who did their doggy duties with Daring Do, Sterling and Liza. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. It was fabulous, Rob. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, hitching a ride back on the space shuttle, none other than Isaac and Barry. We brought something back for you. What is that? I have some purified water made of only the best ingredients. Oh. We have urine, perspiration, mm. uh -huh. but no carbs or calories. Well, Isaac, the last thing I need right now is water. But uh, pop it in the mailbox anyway. So, why don't we give out some points before I explode, kids, huh? Yeah. yeah. Liza. You showed why thousands of kids want to be a contestant on Fetch. Because who doesn't want a chance to pick up dog food? 15 points. <laughs> and Sterling, you completed that obstacle course with speed and agility. 20 points. Yeah. Now, Liza and Sterling, both of you took good care of my friends. They didn't get tummy rubs, but it's still good enough for 60 points for each of you. Bringing your total to 75 for Liza and 80 for Sterling. Bethany and Isaac, you showed why thousands of kids want to be a contestant on Fetch also. Because who doesn't want to drink recycled astronaut urine? Me. <laughs> for your commitment to the scientific process and your bravery, 75 points for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that all the points a dog can relieve? I'm not yeah. <laughs> What time is it? Bonus points! Today's 10 bonus points go to the contestant who had knowledge of the water cycle at his fingertips. Which means, Isaac! With 85 points, nice. you're today's daily winner. Yes. Now, Isaac, I have here two identical space hydrants. Under one space hydrant, a prize that will make you go wee. Uh, uh, it won't make you go wee. <laughs> It'll make you say wee, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Under the other hydrant is something not as good. So, which will it be? Space hydrant A or space hydrant B? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with B. Nice choice, sir. Please step up to the mailbox and retrieve your prize. Uh. 
It's a collar with like bags, so when I take my dog for a walk. Right? You even customized it wrong. Hello. Oh, that's so sweet. How sweet. Under the other hydrant, there uh was an all expense paid trip to the moon. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay guys, I gotta go. And when I mean go, I mean I gotta I think we've had enough pee jokes today. So I will uh, see you next time, guys! Okay. All right. All right. The plumber will be here in an hour? Oh, I think I can make it. You know, Chet's been living here for a while. What's he been using for a bathroom? <gasps> Blossom, Chet's bathroom is incredible! A stylish, state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly composting toilet! Ooh, I think I can make it if I can just get my head through the... Oh, oh, I'm stuck! Oh, why didn't I just use the backyard after all? Okay, lesson learned. You guys get me out of here. Blossom, Chet, help! <laughs> Still haven't found the helmet of victory, and the cat grooming shows are whooping us in the ratings, but that's about to change. I've just landed a major photo spread in Canine Weekly magazine. The real rough rough men. They're gonna get a glimpse of the dog behind the dog. Is he as charming and handsome as he seems on TV? Turns out, he's handsomer. What's this? Oh, it's a beauty cream. Let's see, old shoe. I have newt, a little ketchup. Chad, did you get a turkey feather? A turkey vulture feather? Eh, close enough. Where'd I get the recipe? From Enchantment Weekly. To enchant means to charm, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with these reporters. Charm them with my beauty. Ooh, they're almost here. Better slather on the cream. There, how do I look? What, why are you making that face? Turkey vulture in glasses. Oh, to enchant also means to cast a magic spell. This magazine's for sorcerers. Ah! Okay, no problem. There's time to wear off the spell before the reporters come. Chant, don't let them in. Okay, this could be a problem. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam, my destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. I don't like vacuums, but we're gonna need them. Here come the contestants now! He gets annoyed when people are talking and trail off in the middle of the... Uh, but, oh, oh, Isaac! Her favorite smell in the world? It's her own mother! Well, don't change your soap, Mom! Liza! Don't call her squeamish. She can bait a hook with a live worm! Bethany! He's happy to do any chore in the house, except clean the bathroom. Ryan! He can raise his eyebrows individually. Sterling! She'd be embarrassed if she cried in public. Oh, just wait for that onion chopping challenge. Talia! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in sixth place with 360 points. Talia down to fifth with 430. Liza up to fourth with 455. Bethany up to third with 472 and a half. Isaac up to second with 482 and a half. And Sterling still in first with 492 and a half points. Whoa, what happened? Happened? You're like Whoa. a turkey. <laughs> Hello, Fetchers. Well, how did this happen? What mess did you get into this time? Oh, man, let me tell you. I did not have a good morning. I didn't see that. I'm losing in the ratings to these cat grooming shows, so I was trying to improve my image by getting my picture in a magazine. But when I was trying to get ready for my photo shoot, the beauty cream I made turned me into a turkey vulture. So now I'm going to need your help, guys. Okay. okay. And it's okay. not much time, because Canine Weekly is hitting the newsstands at any moment. So Brian, Isaac, Bethany, Talia, Liza, and Sterling. Everyone. Yes. 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 This is Norm Smith, and he's waiting for all of you to retrieve your instructions from the mailbox. So go fetch. All right. All right. Nice. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye, 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 Good luck with the whole Bye. head. Ah, I even sound awful. For the six kids out on our challenge today, up to 100 points are at stake and my reputation in the triumph tally. So let's go swoop in on our fetchers. Yeah!
Okay, lotion you can wear off now, please. Hey, are you Norman? I am Norman. So we're gonna see a turkey vulture today. All righty. Ah, let's get a closer look at these birds. Take a peek through it's the door there. It's so pretty. That smell. Oh. All right, what do you notice about this bird? It has like a big nose and stuff. It's like really slender little head. Right, you see a head that has no feathers on it. Yeah. Now the vulture eats dead animals, so he has no feathers on his head, so that when he eats those dead animals that are all gushy, it doesn't stick to his feathers. <laughs> Something tells me my viewers don't want to be eating a meal during this episode. Now, how do you think he finds dead animals? You Look at how big it. his nostrils are. And it actually uses that sense of smell to find those dead animals. Doesn't that smell really bad, though? Like it smells really yeah. bad. But does it smell bad to them? But they to them, might like. it smells good because that's dinner. Well, when you think about it, we eat dead things, too. We just cook and prepare the things better. Except now that I'm a vulture, I'm only allowed to eat raw, rotten, dead things. Why is that appealing to me right now? Do you he hear that? sneezing. That's not sneezing. That's actually hissing. And he's hissing because he's irritated. The vultures have a defense mechanism where they vomit. What? And they projectile about 15 feet. What they've eaten the day before. Projectile? So the vomit will shoot straight out 15 feet. Uh, I think I'm going to throw up. Is it going to vomit into us? It's going to be very quiet because we don't want that to happen. Ruff, how would you like it if we came back to Studio G covered in puke? No, no, no. We do not want anyone getting puked on here. This is turning into a public relations nightmare for me. Ah! Now, in addition to the bird vomiting, they have some other unique adaptations as well. What exactly is an adaptation? It's a body component or the way the bird is actually built that allows it to survive in a certain environment that it lives. What do you guys do when it gets hot out? Sweat. Sweat. Well, you can imagine that if a bird started to sweat, his feathers would get very wet and he'd get heavy and he wouldn't be able to fly. So the vulture actually go to the bathroom on their legs, what? which are all scaly and exposed. And what happens is when the wind blows by, it evaporates <laughs> that pee and poop off his legs and actually helps to keep him cool. What? Oh, ew. Ooh. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? It's not what I do. So you don't think much of these vultures, do you? No. Not at all. Uh, what next? I gotta get you kids out of there. I think it's time to try and find some turkey vultures out in the wild. I have this urge to watch them from up here. Well, I'm fine. <laughs> now we're up on the hilltop. Now we're gonna look for turkey vultures, see if we can find them soaring around. Got a bird right over here, Soren. That's a red-tailed hawk. How can you tell the difference between the two? Just by looking turkey at them. Turkey vultures the sky? fly with a dihedral. They hold their wings up in a V shape, and they do a lot of floating and a lot of rocking back and forth like this. Let's see if we can scan around and look for some turkey vultures. Nice view. Do you usually see a lot of these daily? Some days you see a lot, and some days you don't see any at all. They can appear and disappear really quickly. Oh, the Henry Hotline. Hi, Henry. How's it? What? Oh, you saw my photo spread? Oh, that is not a good look for me. What's that, Henry? Am I really a vulture? <laughs> um, uh, what was that? Uh, uh nothing. <laughs> Blossom had a hairball. <laughs> you can relax, sir. I am 100% dog. What? That fact has never relaxed you? Oh. My audience has dropped off 50%? <laughs> um, don't worry, sir. My fetchers are on it. Okay, think, Ruffman. Think. I'll give the fetchers a call. Um, I think it's rough. All right, conference call, you guys. My reputation is on the line. Now, I've heard all this bad stuff about turkey vultures, so I need you guys to help improve the turkey vulture's reputation. Then, of course, improve my reputation. Okay. Norm will help you. Good luck. Yes. Okay, you got it. All right, guys, we're going to help out Ruff. We're going to break up into two teams, the two girls against the three boys. Seeing Bethany still back looking at the other turkey vulture, and we're going to write down what we've learned about turkey vultures, all those icky, gooey things. And then we're going to see if we can think of some things that are really good for their reputation. Good luck there. They're scavengers, so they eat dead, like, um, animals already dead. Okay, that's gross. Also, like, their head is bald so that the gore from the dead animals and stuff doesn't get stuck in the feathers. So, so, so they're, like, they're, like, kind of ugly. Okay, yeah. we haven't found anything nice. Do they like to knit? Are they good at lacrosse? Do they vomit on you? Actually, that might be good for them. All these things are good for them, like vomiting on predators will make the predators go away. Hissing gives the predators a warning sign to get away. Are these supposed to be good away. for us or good for the That's turkeys? a very good point. Even though these things might seem bad to us, they're really good and important for the turkey vulture. Aren't we trying to do things that are like bad for their reputation? Well, bad for their reputation, yeah. yeah. So you're writing down some things that are about bad about their oh, reputation. But it's good to think yeah. about these things and think that these animals need to have those adaptations in order to survive. Okay, so we have to turn their bad qualities somehow into good qualities. Impossible? Ah, probably. 
What about all those dead animals that are out there? What would happen if the turkey vultures weren't around to eat them? The dead animals smell a lot. And it'd be pretty smelly out there. So these guys are actually like the garbage disposals of the natural world. An air freshener. An air freshener. There's one good thing. Hey, Blossom, I'm going to get you one for your litter box. <laughs> Another interesting thing about turkey vultures that they're really good for is they eat dead animals that have diseases and things. And those diseases don't affect the turkey vulture. They have really strong digestive enzymes that actually can digest and kill that bacteria. So they actually help keeping those diseases from spreading from animal to animal as well. Wait, that's a good thing too. That's two good points. Blossom, put that mirror down. Now why would you do that? If you upset me, I'll throw up on you. And the next thing that we're going to do for Ruff is we're going to actually create a campaign about what's good for the turkey vultures. So we're going to take the cameras to shoot your spokesmodel. For the campaign? Yes. Who is it? Yeah, who is it? Who is it, you ask? And here is the hero of our story, the tremendous turkey vulture. Look at this majestic... <laughs> oh, Blossom! <laughs> oh, sweet biscuit. Our hero just threw up. Okay, there's Robin. Uh, she helps rescue turkey vultures for the Audubon Society. Oh. Do you know Ruff Ruffman? I do, actually. I need you all to put one of these on. Why is the turkey okay. vulture gonna puke on them, too? It's the Gumby Posse. Ew! Oh. Ew, you just stepped in it. I think our spokesperson has been here. That's nasty. That's pretty solid mouse parts. Yeah, mouse yeah. parts? No, Chet, don't look! <laughs> this is the most disgusting fetch challenge ever. Oh, I better give these guys a call. Hello? Hey, Sterling! Hey, Ruff. Oh, listen, I need you to get the best shots of our turkey vulture, if that's even possible, because you're going to need them for the next part of your challenge. Hey, bye. 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 This particular turkey vulture has been living here at Drumlin Farm for 30 years. Guys, wait, wait. Are you when he for... opens his wing. His right wing is actually broken. Right here, right here. Right. Oh, get the wings open. Most likely, he was hit by a car, because what are they eating? Dead animals. Where are we finding dead animals? Is roadkill on the side of the road or in the road? Oh, get a picture, get a picture. Been an awesome shot. Yes, I got it! He seems like he acts like he's on a photo shoot. He's very fabulous. He's ugly a little bit. Not ugly, attractive disorder. I actually don't think he's that bad. I think that's a compliment. Oh, here comes his good side. Yeah, right there. Oh, look right at me, buddy. Smile for the camera. Okay, you guys, if you want to come over here. Okay. So I need your ponchos. And then you are off to an ad agency to finish the rest of your assignment. So good really? luck. Advertising. That's how I'm going to make sure that I get a great image as a turkey vulture. It worked for the slip and stick slug slide. Rawr! And there's Andrew. Hello. Hi there, I'm Andrew Graff, I'm the CEO of Allen & Gerritsen. An ad agency basically helps companies or products present themselves with the best possible image. So your challenge today is to convince people that turkey vultures are a great thing. You're going to work with a copywriter and an art director who are going to help you develop an ad campaign and then at the end of the day you're going to make a presentation and a group of people are going to decide which has the best campaign and there'll be one team that's a winner and one team that loses. Come follow me. Yeah. Let's go, guys. The turkey vulture's reputation and my reputation are at stake here. Hi there. Welcome to A&G. I'm Catherine. I'm the copywriter. So I do all the words for all the ads that we do. TV scripts, radio scripts, stuff like that. And I'm Ryan, and I'm the art director. So I'm in charge of how everything looks, all the visual side of the ads that we put together. In advertising, you can never tell a lie. but you can sort of focus on the, the highlights, the good points of it. So what are some of the sort of good things that you guys have learned about the turkey vulture? They like fresh, fresh in the air because yeah. they eat the dead animals and so they stop like the odors. Yeah, because they okay. stink really bad. The best thing to do as a first step is to take all the positive points and we'll toss them up on the board and come up with some big idea. Yeah. Okay, now let's check in with the boys who are working with George, the copywriter, and Pat, the art director. We want to brainstorm some ideas about why someone would be interested in a turkey vulture. So what, make, what makes a turkey vulture cool? That they get rid of like dead animals. And they get rid of the smell too. So they're very helpful. It's almost like they're superheroes. That could be an interesting concept. They can launch We should make it like a super turkey vulture. Super. See? And that's why brainstorming is cool, because immediately it starts conjuring up visuals that you can use for your ad later. And that'll help you pick out which one of the pictures that you took is the best one to use. I like this one because it's a close-up and it's, like, clear. I like the ones where he's standing on something, like, right there. Yeah, it, you want to make sure that it's in focus. Yeah. And it's got a good representation of what the bird looks like. 
Just please don't use any shots of them vomiting. That's really good because it's nice and bright and it gives you a full picture of what the head looks like and what all the good feathers look like. Ooh, Isaac is right. That's a really good shot right there. So, check. All right, so we have six pictures. Creating an ad is all about getting a lot of stuff and then whittling it down until you get the best stuff. Right now, what we need to do is think of some fun ideas so we can take those messages and turn it into something that's going to get people's attention. Maybe we could talk about how people don't really notice them and what they do for us. Because some people might be thinking about, well, this bird can't have that much of an impact on how clean the environment is. That is what's driving our whole campaign today. Because people don't know how great these birds are, and you won't know just from looking at them. So the ad that you're going to create is going to tell people exactly that. All right, I'm starting to feel a little better here. There are some great ideas being tossed around. And now we need to decide which image we want to use here. I like this one because it looks like he's looking out and not looking, like, away. Me and Talia voted this yeah, one. I we like liked it better that. because, like, you can see the bird, and right. you, if you cropped it off, you could put mountain range. And it could just be, like, sitting in, like, kind of, like, the corner, like, it's kind of watching over the world. Because that makes people feel, like, yeah. protected, and that's sure. good. I mean, I, I like the side view idea, but this one, you have to put everything in one place. You can't scatter it everywhere, and he looks like he's looking at all of it. Yeah, and but the just... one thing I like most about this one, you still get the effect that the bird is there, but with yours, you kind of lose the bird yeah. and all the big bad ads about the bird. Ralph, you're the client. What do you think we should do? I don't know, but I do know that your ad's much better than what I had in mind, which was making a vulture swimsuit calendar. <laughs> yeah. ah! In a perfect world, we would try to consolidate it down to one image that the majority of people think is the best. Sometimes we have to make decisions very quickly and just sort of move forward with it. Does that bum you out, Bethany? Yes. I promise we'll make an ad that you're confident to get up there and present this afternoon. Yeah. You're going to feel great about this, Bethany. And at least you don't have an urge to eat roadkill. Like I do right now. What is wrong with me? Ah! Now that we have our layout, we're going to bring it to Dave, who's going to bring it to life. Hey, Dave. Hey. Okay, so what we're thinking of doing is we're going to take this picture here, and we're going to kind of blow it up, and we want it to kind of fade out into the white. We'll take this picture and make it smaller and put it right here, and then the headline, and then the smaller picture and the description. Got it. Okay, okay thanks. thanks. Thank you. Guys. Can't wait to see how it turns out. So Dave is going to take the boy's idea and then format it on the computer into a nice-looking ad. Yeah. All right, girls, you ready to see the final ad? Yeah. Oh, oh, my gosh, it's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the girls are happy, it. including it's Bethany. so good. See, Bethany, they said you'd like it. I think you guys have a great ad. I think you guys have put a lot of work into your presentation, but what's most important is that you go in and you sell it with enthusiasm. Yes. All right, let's see how the boys did. The board's ready. Nice. Cool. That was awesome. Wait. That's really going to be a great presentation right there. I think we right definitely have a chance. This girl's going I down. think we do. Whoa, this is an intense group. Hi, my name is Amy, and I am the moderator. And today we're going to be talking about turkey vultures. And I am going to play a video for you now. This is a turkey vulture. It's been called nature's ugly cleanup crew. Its head bald and perfectly formed to insert itself into dead animals, which it eats. They poop on their legs and throw up the dead things they eat and fling it through projectile vomit at their enemies. Okay, must we look at that again? Okay, the focus group reaction is not good. What are some words that come to mind when you think of turkey vultures? Gross. A turkey vulture is funny in some ways. Like when it vomits, it looks funny. <laughs> really, really disturbing. Really disgusting. Absolutely revolting. Our focus group does not like the turkey vultures. It sounds like you guys have some pretty strong opinions formed about the turkey vulture. Do you think your minds could ever be changed? No way. So let's see if your minds can be changed. I want to introduce to you the first team of fetchers. So here come the boys. So we feel that turkey vultures are very underrated birds, but a lot of people don't know of their heroic abilities. Heroic. So we thought that we would show everyone how much of a superhero these birds really are. Turkey vultures, ridding the world of roadkill, one carcass at a time. Wow, a superhero theme! The heroic turkey vulture has many amazing abilities. It protects the world by eating dead animals that carry diseases harmful to humans. Its digestive system makes it impervious to disease carried by dead carcasses. And the turkey vulture has a special enzyme, and that enzyme kills off the bacteria and viruses and other germs that would create diseases for someone like humans. And also when it rains, the diseases that are carried by the dead animals can actually be washed into the ground and can eventually 
possibly end up in your water supply. But turkey vultures prevent that from happening. In conclusion, the turkey vultures are very heroic and make the world a safer and better place. Yes, awesome. Look at that. Round of applause. Nicely done. What were some of the positive things you saw about this ad? I thought the boys were very professional and they got the point across and they just, they got it into our brains that they helped the world. Good. And I liked how they showed um, every detail of how they protected us, about like how we could get sick if the, if the disease drained through the ground into our water. So would you say that this ad changed your opinion of the turkey vulture? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they all say yes! Okay, now it's time for the girls. We decide in our ad to show how beautiful the world is thanks to the turkey vulture. One ugly bird can make the world more beautiful. Oh, that is just brilliant. Don't judge a turkey vulture by its feathers. Yes, turkey vultures eat dead animals, but by doing so, they help nourish the soil, freshen the air, and keep diseases out of the water. So look at the beautiful world around you and thank a turkey vulture. Even though a turkey vulture isn't beautiful, what it does is really beautiful. We used all the elements that the turkey vulture helps, water, earth, and air. Can't read your own handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> we hope our ad has inspired you to think differently about turkey vultures. And please, vote for our ad. Thank yes. you. Oh, turkey yeah. vulture, I have misjudged you. But I'd still rather have Ruff Ruffman's head back. How long before this potion wears off anyway, Blossom? What do you think? Has your opinion changed? It showed that, like, don't judge a book by its cover. That's right. Because even if they are scary, they do do a part in cleaning up the environment. I like their presentation, but they really didn't explain it. They just said they eat dead animals, and that, by doing so, they make the world cleaner. I mean, how does that help by eating dead animals? Can you raise your hand if they changed your mind? All of them raised their hands, even though one of the boys wasn't so sure, they changed their minds. Can each of you write which ad was more persuasive, the boys or the girls? Rough, we're waiting for the results. And it's really nerve-wracking. Personally, I would have been less nervous if it were adults. Yeah. Well, you want to hear what your peers think. And at least your peers don't eat rotting animals. <laughs> So a lot of positive, constructive feedback on each of the campaigns. So now, there has to be a winner. Yes. Oh. By a vote of seven to two, the winner is... A clear-cut winner. Who is it? The boys. Yeah. Oh, victory for the gentlemen! Yeah. Now send me in that winning ad so I can get it in the next edition of K9 Weekly. Good job. You guys all did an amazing job. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you guys back in Studio G! They're getting a good reputation for making good reputations! The PR Posse, Isaac, Sterling, Brian, Liza, Talia, and Bethany! Welcome back, guys! You guys can make tapeworms look good! <laughs> I mean, my reputation is going through the roof! The ratings are gonna jump, I just know it! Good job, guys! Turkey vultures across America say, thank you. You say you're, you're welcome. welcome. And I say, let's get you some points. Yeah! We start with Brian, Sterling, and Isaac. Of course. Outstanding ad expert presentation. The diseases that are carried by the dead animals can actually be washed into the ground and can possibly end up in your water supply. Ah! Uh, uh, um, uh, 85 points. Yes! yes. yes. Talia, Bethany, Liza, well, today's challenge wouldn't have soared really if it wasn't for your high wattage enthusiasm. Yes, I got it! Enough for 80 points! Yeah! yeah. That's good. But is that all the points a dog can give? No! What time is it? Bonus points! I get 10 bonus points going. <laughs> uh, going to the contestant who knew what he wanted and picked the photo I would have picked. That's really good because it's nice and bright. Isaac! Oh! With 95 whomping points, you're today's daily winner. Yes. Now, Isaac, I have your two samples I've collected from turkey vultures. I won't mention what these samples are, but lucky for you, I've concealed them in these boxes. <laughs> Under one, a fabulous prize. Under the other, another sample from a turkey vulture. So, which will it be? Turkey vulture sample A or B? B, go for B. A, A. I've done B a lot, so I think I'll go for A. Please step to the mailbox and retrieve your prize. Go, go, go. It's a envelope. Oh, yeah. Isaac, you have won ten passes to the movie. What? Yes! 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 That's awesome. We're going to take all five of us, right? Oh, of course. That's all the time we have.
have for today's show. I'm Rough Ruffman. Until next time, ah, I have a craving for a small mouse. Chad! Don't eat Chad! Chad, come here! Ah, don't you eat Chad! Oh, Chad, I was kidding. Bye! Bye, Bye. 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 Phew! Now that was an exhausting day. I thought that spell would never wear off. I'm going to spend the rest of the day just catching some rays. Chad, can you bring my suntan lotion? Hey, Henry. What? The vulture special was so successful my ratings went through the roof. That's great. But they want me to continue to look like a turkey vulture? No go, Henry. I am a dog and a dog I will stay. <laughs> or, or you know what, Henry? Let, let me think about it. Not the lotion I had in mind, Chad. <laughs> Rothman, and I cannot wait for this weekend! It's a Charlton Chihuahua movie marathon on Channel 51! I'm not moving from this chair till Monday! Oh no, not the ARGSHAABPO meeting! Now my weekend's ruined! What's Arg Shabpo? The animal reality game show host and aquatic bird performer organization, obviously. I have to go to the annual convention and I'm not looking forward to it! Last year was so awkward. I never know how to talk to penguins. Nice weather we're having. Nice and warm. <laughs> What's not to like about warm weather? Oh, right. Always putting my foot in my mouth. Another herring. Boy, they really go all out on the meals here. I mean, I, you probably think it's tasty. That's awful. I have a much easier time talking to Chet. Hey, Chet, how's it going? Okay. But at least you like talking to me, right, Blossom? Blossom? Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro! They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed! Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great! And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Blossom, you want to remind me why I hired Chet? And here come the contestants now! He doesn't like raw salmon. Ryan! She enjoys walking on treadmills. Not a very moving story. Talia! His mom calls him Scoop, and he doesn't know why. Sterling! The smell of seafood makes her sick. Liza! His mother was once a cheerleader. She's at home now shouting, Go Isaac! Ethany Bay speaks fluent pig Latin. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, it's Bethany! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in fifth place with 445 points. Kalia in fourth with 510. Liza in third with 535. Bethany in second with 552 and a half points. And Isaac and Sterling tied for first with 577 and a half points. Hello, Fetchers. Hey, Ross. Welcome back to Studio G. I hope you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Hey, uh, Sterling. Yeah? Why does your mom call you Scoop? I don't know. All right, what about you, Liza? You don't like the smell of seafood? No, it just makes me really sick. I have no idea why. That's a shame. Can I tell you, Blossom here eats a lot of sushi, and she swears by it. But I like my Chinese food. I like egg rolls. I love egg rolls. I think we can all agree that Chinese food is awesome. Yeah, yeah I love Chinese Excellent. food. Excellent. See, now, I have no problem talking with my fetchers. You guys are great. But it's a whole different story when I'm at the Arg Shabpo convention. You guys know what Arg Shabpo stands for, don't you? No. The Animal Reality Game Show Host and Aquatic Bird Performer Organization. What? There is a certain group of somebodies, they shall remain nameless for now, and I tell you, I clam up whenever I'm around them. So you know what I'm going to do about it? What? what? I'm going to fix it by turning it into a challenge. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Challenge number one, Isaac. How are your social skills? Pretty good. Well, you're going to go face to face with folks who just might give you an icy reception. That's okay. right. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go fetch. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you're going ice skating. Zero. You might be. Uh, who knows? Bye. We'll know when he gets there. Bye. 
All right, I'm sure this has had to happen to you guys at some point. You know, you're stuck somewhere with a stranger, and you have to think of something to say. Now, some people might call that scenario a bit awkward, but I might call it challenge number two. Yes! Bethany, Liza, Brian, everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Thanks! Bye, Bye Bethany! Bye, Bye Liza! Bye, Bye Brian! Bye, Have guys. fun! As determined by the Fetch 3000, Sterling and Talia have stayed behind in the studio this time, but they'll be eligible to win points during the Halftime Quiz Show. And of course, here at Fetch, we put the fair in fairness with the Fetch Fairness Guarantee. All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. So, for the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the Triumph Tally. Now, let's flip the switch over to Isaac, who's trying to find the man with the fish. Are you the man with the fish? I am the man with the fish. You must be Isaac. I am. Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to the New England Aquarium. Thank you. I was told that uh, Ruff feels awkward around penguins and needs to learn a lot more. Awkward is lightly putting uh, it. I guess. All right, we're going to try to teach you about how to take care of penguins and so he can feel more comfortable uh, around the animals when he goes to see them. That's right. Isaac's going to spend the day as a penguin biologist. Better him than me. So here's our penguins. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? We have over 70 penguins in this exhibit. We also have several penguins that are off exhibit right now. That's where we keep a lot of our young ones. We got to check in with the office, see how the food prep's going. Good, let's start with the food. And here's the fish. We have a very huge team of people that take care of the penguins. Oh, that's good. Don't you just want to throw some whipped cream and cherry on that? We feed our penguins all different types of fish. Ugh. Today happens to be capelin, and happens to be one of their favorite. We also feed them sardines, herring. Seems like they eat a lot of stuff we do. They do eat a lot. I guess I could talk to the penguins about fish. Ah. Go to the cafe at 74 Here's the cafe. Prospect Street and wait for Bobby and Dina at table for four. Okay, they've made it. They should just be looking for Bobby and Dina. Are in the right place. <laughs> I'm sorry, hi. Do, do you know, do these have wheat or soy in them? Um, I'm not sure. What are you having? I have no clue. Can you just leave them to their breakfast, please? You should go make friends. Oh, they might be nice. I don't want to make don't friends. Don't worry about it. Hi, guys. My son has a hard time meeting people. Your son? What? Do you guys mind if he just comes and hangs out with you for a little bit? Sure. sure. It's okay. We don't mind. Um, I don't want to. I don't even know. Uh oh, there seems to be a little tension convention brewing over here. Rock, what is this? <laughs> guys, we're Bobby and Dina. Oh, I <laughs> Are you guys actors? Bobby and I were doing some improv for you guys. Do you guys know what improv is? It's when you act in a situation that you don't have like script or anything. That's right. There's no script. So what we're gonna do today is learn how to do improv. That sounds pretty exciting. They're gonna learn how to think on their feet while I learn to think on my paws. So these are where we do all of our summer breeding. And these are all of our parents, and uh, we do have a couple chicks in here. And we have some of our African penguins. What we have to do is weigh the chicks, and the chicks need to be weighed before the parents get fed, because the parents regurgitate their food to the chicks all day long. So we want to make sure that we get a true weight before they start eating. What does regurgitate mean? Food is eaten, digested, and then thrown back up, and that's what the, the parents do to feed their chicks. Yeah, it's disgusting. Wow, I'm so glad my mom didn't do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. What's that noise? That's an African penguin. Is he getting ready to regurgitate? Tang, turn the camera away. I don't want to see this. They're famous because the bray that they make or the call is very similar to that of donkeys. Yeah, they do sound like a donkey. Why are all these penguins here? Why do you breed them? The African penguins is one of 10 species that are disappearing. And the African penguin has actually been predicted to go extinct in about 35 years. Now these chicks are just a month old. You can see how big they are, but when they hatch out of their egg, they're just about a golf ball size. So we're gonna weigh these guys. What I'm gonna need you to do is to grab those records and we're gonna record their weights. Okay, let's see how much the penguins weigh. There you go, buddy. In you go. 1845 grams today. We also just take a quick look at the chicks. Oh, peekaboo! Make sure that everything looks good. So, what's next? We have to get into our wetsuits, and then we have to go take care of the other penguins. They're going in the water! We have to wear wetsuits because the water is really cold. It comes from the harbor, and the penguins need cold water. So, our temperature in our exhibit today should be somewhere around 57 degrees. 57 degrees? That's a little chilly. So here we are. This is our main stage theater. This is where we perform some of our weekly shows. Ah, the theater. I was born for the theater. But more people see me if I'm on TV. I need one especially brave volunteer. His hand went up first. Brian so wins. He goes him. first. I want you to do this. Ha cha cha. Ha cha cha. Perfect. Ha cha cha. If you came upon Brian ha, doing this in a park, ha, cha, honestly, you don't know Brian. Ha, cha, cha. What would you honestly think? Ha, cha, cha. You think he was crazy? Ha, cha, cha. All right. Would you get up there and join him? I also would think that he's crazy. That looks fun. Now, I'm the only one in this room not doing this. And that's it. It feels weird 
Thanks for me to not be joining you. You know, I'm starting to feel weird too. Come on, guys. Ha cha 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 cha. A group of people doing one thing together, even when you have no idea what it is, is powerful. That's kind of what improv is. I don't know what we're doing, but we're going to do it together, and it's going to be fun. Our job on stage is not to make ourselves look good, but to make each other look good. We all want to support our teammates. So support leads to trust, which leads to risks, which leads to confidence, confidence in your choices. And then once we're all confident in our choices, we're having fun. Those are the five pillars of improv. So I need to be confident when I'm talking to penguins. And then I'll have fun. All right, let me try it. Hey, buddy, we're business casual on this show. You don't need to wear the tux. <laughs> Welcome that to the penguin exhibit. Cool. Okay, Isaac and Paul are going into the water with all the penguins. Whoa, nice hairdo. And these are our rock hopper penguins. Hey, I'll see you at the meeting. You gonna be there? So to begin the fee, what we need to do is kind of ring the dinner bell. I'm gonna have you record for me. All of our penguins have educational names so that when people come in to visit us, we can actually teach them a little bit about where their background is. So the first bird I'm going to feed is roast beef. Roast beef? Roast beef is named after an African penguin breeding island. Huh, he's named after Roast Beef Island. Is that near Baloney Land or Brisket Bay? It seems like the fish just slide down their throat like they don't even have to chew it. And penguins don't chew. They don't have teeth like we do. What they do have is these little fleshy hooks that are on their tongues and on the inside of their mouths. And what we have to do is get the fish into their mouth and then these hooks catch and then they bring the fish down and it slides right down. So he swallows fish without chewing. Pretty good gag. <laughs> <clears throat> Penguins are birds. They have wings, they have beaks, they lay eggs, they're warm-blooded, and they are completely covered with feathers. So what's the difference between the African penguins versus the rock hopper penguins? Well, first of all, that rock star hairdo is a dead giveaway. African penguins are found in South Africa, and then each of the African penguins has a little spot pattern, which makes them very unique because they're the only penguins that have this characteristic. Rock hoppers are traditionally found along the southern shores of South America, and they have those gold crests on the tops of their heads. Back in Studio G with Talia and Sterling. Tara. I suppose we should get to the halftime quiz show. Yes. So, let's brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available. Five points apiece. Are you guys ready? Ready. Yes. Then let the quiz begin. All right. Name two different kinds of fish that the aquarium staff feeds the penguins. Um, anchovies and sardines. Incorrect. What is improv? Comedy that has no, no script. script. No script, yes. How do penguins feed their chicks? They, they, they regurgitate. <laughs> Disgusting and true. African penguins have a call that sounds like what other animal? Um, a donkey. Yes. What is the temperature of the water in the aquarium's penguin exhibit? 57 degrees. Yes. Who is the first veteran to volunteer for an improv exercise? Right. Yeah. Nice, true, or false. Penguins have teeth. False. Correct. Give me three features of penguins that classify them as birds. Um, feathers, wings, beaks. Yes. African penguins have a unique pattern of blank. Um, um feathers. Incorrect. List three of the five pillars of improv. Okay, uh, fun. Yeah. Confidence. Um, oh, fun, confidence, um, risk. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you got that in. We are out of time. Let's check the Fetch 3000. Eight out of 10, 40 points. Very good score. Yeah. Let's go over the ones that you missed. Name two different kinds of fish. The aquarium staff feeds the penguins. You said sardines, but you also said anchovies. I was looking for capelin or herring. And then African penguins have a unique pattern of, you said, feathers. I was looking for spots. All righty. Can Bethany, Liza, and Brian think of something to say? Or are they, um, uh, come on, prof, man. All right, let's just get back to them. I want you to list seven things in the category I'm going to give you as fast as you can. There's no wrong answer. Seven things that fly. Birds. One. One. Airplanes. Two. Come on, Bethany. Chairs. Three. Anything. Uh, speakers. Four. Cars. Five. Houses. Six. Six. Tornadoes. Seven. seven. Awesome. Fantastic. Nice job. Do you guys see how much fun it is when you commit to letting anything come out of your mouth, right? Now we're going to move into having you guys do some scenes. You're going to have the first line. You're going to say something nice, but we're going to hate it. All right, we're going to choose to hate it. And we got to find creative reasons why that's true. Let's give this a go. You are not going to believe this, but Justin Timberlake is going to do a free concert at your house tonight. Stop being too noisy. I want to go to bed. Hey. That was a good one. <laughs> this idea that you, you wouldn't want Justin Timberlake to come to your house for a free concert just for you, and you were so specific about why, it's brilliant. It's really, really great. We're going to switch rooms with your sister, and you're going to have the larger room now. 
Yes, but that means I don't get the bigger closet. <sighs> Good. You've just won two weeks in Hawaii! That means... I have to be away from my fish for a week and... <laughs> hey, they're good at this. So the idea is that even if you can't always agree, you can find a way to still move forward. Because you have support and trust, that led to the ability to take a risk. And watching you guys take those risks, that's what the audience loves. <gasps> and that's what this challenge needs, an audience. So I've got some veterinary disinfectant here. You and I are gonna hop up and we're gonna clean this island and see how fast we can do it. Ready? We have to spray off all the guano. Guano! Ooh, yum yum! Is that like a dip? <gasps> oh, let me get my chips! I'm trying to wash off all the guano. That's the white droppings, right? Yep. Wait, what? So the penguins go to the bathroom all the time. Oh, it means droppings! So what we need to do is make sure that they have a nice, clean habitat for them to live in. I hope you penguins are appreciating what my fetcher's doing. He's cleaning up after you guys. Penguins, like the African penguin, are becoming extinct. People used to harvest the African penguin guano. They used to use it as a fertilizer for all their crops. But what they, when they went to harvest it, they did a lot of strip mining for it. So when people came by to take it, they'd actually uh, destroy a lot of the nests. So unfortunately for the African penguin, uh, their population suffered because of this uh, guano harvesting. Last year, the population count for the African penguin was found to be under 1,000 penguins in the wild. And about 100 years ago, uh, it's estimated that the African penguin population was over a million birds. So they went down a lot. A lot. There. So. OK, I got to call the improv team. Hello? Bethany! Oh, hey, Ralph. Hey, I got a little package for you. Package? Did you see the package? No. Perhaps Bobby knows about the package. Bobby, do you know something about package? I do. That package contains your next challenge. Ta-da! Fetch and Improv Boston presents Blank. No, 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 not Blank. You guys are going to do a show today in just a few minutes. Uh-oh. I detect horror. What? Why don't you guys to come up with a name for yourselves? Come up with a name! Quick! Improvise! Let me call Isaac. Got more for him to do. Hello? Hey, Isaac. How's it going? Hey, Ruff. What's up? I still think there's going to be a problem when I meet with the penguins. Well, you're the one with the problem. I don't see any problem with penguins. They're animals just like you and me. Except they're penguins. Listen, I got an idea. Since I need to talk with penguins, I want you to give a talk with penguins. Here's a catch. You need to come up with a presentation and deliver it to the visitors coming to this aquarium. What? Oh, wait. Good idea, Blossom. And you have to be dressed as a penguin. As if I'm a penguin? Figure out what you're going to say. You got five minutes to get in the tank and do your thing. There. They say you have to be like a penguin. Oh, wow. I got my own setup. Look at that, huh? OK. Let's get started. You are ready to teach people about penguins or go to the prom? Oh, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do, Ruff. You need to make something up. Too bad you weren't watching the improv um, challenge. OK, so what else should I do? Oh, boy, we're packing them in tonight. Uh, Ruff, I'm really nervous. Yeah. Um, with the training of Bobby and Dina, I think we'll be fine. Just remember, guys, there's, like, no mistakes. So yeah. fun, risk, confidence, trust, confidence, support. We're going to do good on this show. We are ready. BBL, yeah. guys. Team BBL, <laughs> Brian, Bethany, and Liza. Ladies and gentlemen. In this scene, Dina and Bethany are going to be their hands. Oh, they're like puppets. These two are going to be brother and sister. I told you not to touch my toothbrush. <laughs> well, I used it. Ew! I spit on that. Ew. <laughs> no, I did. Well, I'm using a special kind of toothpaste. <laughs> nice I like, I like under. Under. My name is Blossom, and I like to boogie. They're going to tell you a story, audience, if at any point they mess up. I want you guys to yell, stupefy. Stupefy! What is the name of our story? Over here. The Adventure of the Potato. Adventure I've yet to hear an exciting potato. potato story, so this should be interesting. Chapter one. One day there was a potato who was walking through the park. He spotted another potato and went over to make friends. Hello, potato. The potato answered goodbye and walked away. This is a good he book. didn't like the other potato. They were enemies and they, um, stupefy! Oh. And so the mashed potatoes banded together to form a huge potato factory, and they were going to French fry themselves. Oh, so love French fries. Walk. And the French fries went to the fair and... Stupefied! Yeah. Down between Brian and Bethany. ...of the Sahara Desert, the potato became very pleased 
with all of the people who were in his town, and he began to order them. And the potatoes have to keep a... Uh oh <laughs> Stupefied! <laughs> Bethany wins! Wow! That was a great show! And they made it up! Bethany! Can you give us the moral of our story? The moral of our story was to never give up. Ralph, wish me luck. I wish you tremendous success, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you're here for a special treat this afternoon. Isaac. Hey guys, what's up? I just want to introduce myself. Um, I'm Robin. I am an African penguin. Wait, I thought his name was Isaac. And I'm gonna let you know the life of a penguin. Oh, he's being a penguin, right? <laughs> As per my instructions. <laughs> I feel pretty lucky being in this environment. Um, this is a great aquarium. I get all the stuff I need, care. There isn't any predators. Did you know that me and my friends, the African penguins, are very endangered? We are the only penguin species out of the 17 types that are protected. So repeat after me. I'm a cool guy. I'm a cool guy. Keep me alive. Keep me alive. OK, yeah. uh, I hope you have a really good time at the aquarium. And have a really nice day. And mention my show. Really, really golden opportunity to promo the show there, Isaac. And you missed it. So thanks, Paul. I had a really great day. Oh, it's been awesome. I hope to see you back sometime soon. OK. See you at Studio G, Ruff. Please wash your hands first. Back in Studio G with Talia and Sterling, let's bring back the rest of our fetchers. Today, he swam with the birds. Next week, he'll fly with the squid. Isaac! Hey, guys. What's up? Oh, I want an 8 by 10 of that. You look good. Not only did they make things up on the spot, they Man, come on, rub something clever. Yeah, come on, rub. Never mind, guys, just come in. Bethany, Brian, and yeah. Lisa. Hey, Welcome back, Betchers. Grab a seat, make yourselves comfortable. Well, I learned a lot today. I feel now like I can go down to my Art Shab Poe meeting using my five pillars of improv. I can walk up to a penguin and, and maybe say, hey, uh, how's it going? Uh, good day to regurgitate a nice krill and sardine salad, huh? <laughs> no. 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 All right, I'll have to work on it. So uh, let's wrap the show up, OK? You know, uh, hello, 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 All right, fine. We'll get you some points. Isaac. Yes. If your penguin fact-finding mission were a cold ocean, you dove right in like a, well, like a penguin. Yeah. 40 points. Nice. nice. You cleaned up a lot of guano. And hey guys, you up? stepped out on the rocks and delivered a rockin' penguin presentation. I'm a cool guy. Keep me alive. Now, you didn't promote the show, but still, 35 points for a total of 75 points. Yeah. Now, Brian, Bethany, Liza, were you guys brave? Comes and hangs out with you for a little bit. Did you get the laughs? I spit on that! <laughs> you did! Did you get discovered by talent scouts and flown to Hollywood for meetings? No. No. Who knows? Could be soon. I mean, you are on this show. 75 points! Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Great job! But is that all the points to be found within our pillar of support, trust, risk, confidence, and fun? No. Well then, what time is it? Bonus points! Today's five bonus points go to the fetcher who couldn't be stupefied and never gave up. The moral of our story was to never give up. Bethany, with 80 points, you're today's daily winner. So Bethany, I have here two of Blossom's toothbrushes that I used on my own teeth just moments ago. Isn't that cute? Blossom's improv that she's disgusted. Anyway, under one of Blossom's toothbrushes is a fabulous prize. Under the other, well, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. <laughs> so, which toothbrush is it going to be? A or B? B for Bethany. And, yeah, B for Bethany. I think I'm going to do B. Then step up to the mailbox and retrieve your prize, Bethany. I knew it. <laughs> what is it? Oh, 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 that is not just any plush penguin. Smell its head. Did you dip it in tuna? No, it's scented with real herring. <laughs> It gives you the authentic penguin feeling, which I'm about to experience at the meeting. All right, fetchers, I'm going to set the DVR to record the Charlton Chihuahua Marathon. So until next yeah. time, ha cha cha. Ha cha cha. Ha cha cha. Ha cha cha. Come on, penguin. Ha cha cha. Boy, was this year's Arg Shampoo convention a blast. Those fetch challenges really helped me out. Who knew a taco filled with krill could be so tasty? The pool was a little nippy. But boy, can penguins do the conga. In fact, we had so much fun, none of us want the fun to stop. 
Had a herring dip again? You guys really go through this stuff. Hey, Steve, I told you before, the ice stays in the glasses, buddy, okay? Thanks. Whatever. Oh, what is it? Only the greatest Ruffman product ever invented, the Ruff Ball. It says here that I promise hours of fun. Okay, Chet, let him loose. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Look at that one! Ha-ha! Oh, and that one! Oh, I love it! Yeah! Okay. Whew! Right, hey, how long was that? Six seconds! Hold on, Blossom, there's, there's more fun in these balls. Just, you know, give it a moment. Nope, six seconds is all we got. Wait a minute, I've got it! I just need to design a game, a, a sport! No one will play baseball anymore once they start playing Ruff's Rough Ball! Take this down, Blossom. Uh, you can only touch the ball with your feet. No, your nose. No, a sausage. Yes! Chet, order a hundred sausages, pronto. Oh, this is gonna sweep the nation! Ah, Chet! You got mustard all over the playing field! Wait, that's brilliant! Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. You know, I bet Arthur doesn't have to deal with stuff like this. Here come the contestants now! One of her goals? To make a therapeutic perfume! Talia! He still remembers getting lost at SeaWorld when he was only seven! Isaac! His worst habit is biting his nails! Well, at least he doesn't bite other people's nails! Brian! She's been singing in a choir since the age of three! Bethany! He wants to be a music producer, cause making beats is cool. Sterling! She wants to go to Ireland. Liza! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in sixth place with 520 points. Talia in fifth with 550. Liza in fourth with 610. Sterling down to third with 617 and a half. Bethany up to second with 632 and a half. And Isaac now in first with 652 and a half points. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Fetch, where the you saying, know. you'll have a ball, means you'll definitely have at least one ball, probably an irregularly shaped one. Hey. So what would you say is your favorite sport of all time, Talia? Tennis. Tennis. Ball. The ball. Soccer. Hockey. Well, you see, they all involve balls, these sports, except, you know, the ones that don't. But none of them are as fun as rough ball. What's that? What's that? Uh, not really sure, because I'm still inventing it. Oh. But with a name like rough ball, it's bound to be exciting. I mean, this ball has to be good for something. Uh, what that is, I'm not sure, but it leads us to challenge number one. Yeah! Liza, Talia, you're going to meet Mr. D. He'll help you figure out what the rough ball is good for. Yeah! Your instructions yeah. are in the mailbox, and the rough ball is by the window to the left. Uh, so See, the beauty of rough ball is that it is so simple. See, you got this sausage, right? Now, you can only use your elbows. Wait, unless it's Wednesday, in which case then you would have... What's that, Blossom? You think it's complicated? It's as simple as baseball. You can learn it in an afternoon. Which brings us to challenge number two. Sterling! You will meet Matt and learn about baseball in one afternoon. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Hey. Ooh, see you, See you, Sterling. See you guys. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Bethany, Isaac, and Brian have stayed behind in the studio, but they'll be eligible Ooh, to win Beth. points during the halftime quiz show. Yeah. Unfair, you say. Not with the Fetch fairness guarantee. All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. For the three kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the Triumph Tally. So what are we waiting for? Let's get the latest on Liza, Talia, and the Rough Ball. Whoa. It's like an obstacle course. Oh, are you Mr. D? Wow. 
Yes, I am. Ruff sent us here to learn about what his rough ball is good for. I teach physics at the high school cool. level, so I'd love to help you out. Yay! What are physics? <laughs> good question. Part of physics is the study of how things move and why they move, which has a lot to do with what balls do. Here we have a lot of balls that are about the same size, and they have different uses that you're probably familiar with. Take a look at all those old-fashioned balls. Boring! There's one really important thing about what makes a ball a ball. It's I think round. this one's... Sorry, Gary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is like not round, it's like lumpy. Hello? It's supposed to be lumpy. I filled it with oatmeal. The right. texture, too. Oh. This one is like, it's like grippy. Most of, like, for the majority of it is grippy. And the top is like furry. And these are all the way around are kind of grippy-ish. This one's odd because odd. It's, 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 it has different textures, whereas these try to be reliable yeah. and have the same texture throughout. There's nothing odd about rough ball. Oh, my rough ball sausages. Whoa. Okay, there's Matt. Hey, you must be Sterling. Yeah. Sterling, I'm Matt. Hey, nice to meet you. This is Campanelli Stadium. It's home of the Brockton Rocks. Okay. We are a minor league professional baseball team. Okay. You want to learn about the game? Yeah. Well, the Brockton Rocks rocks. Now, are you a baseball player? No, but I watched it on TV. So you've seen a baseball field before? Yeah. There's the bases, and then there's the pitcher's mound in the middle of the infield where the pitcher throws the ball to the catcher behind home plate. You go to first base first, then you run to second base, then you run to third, and then fourth base. And then you run home. I mean home. And whoever scores the most runs in the game wins. In the grass out there, that's the outfield. If the ball goes outside of the foul pole... Or off the white line right there. Or off to the left of the white line right there, then it's a foul ball. That sounds Everything bad. Everything inside is a fair ball, and you can play it. Hmm. Blossom? I may borrow some of baseball's rules for my game. All right, Sterling, welcome to the clubhouse. All the players have their own lockers. Everybody's dressed, right? We have one for you. <laughs> Sterling gets his own locker! Uh, so... Got some hat, a mitt, a bat. We've got to see what kind of skills you have out there on the field. You need to have a uniform. Oh, awesome! I'm ready, Ruff. Uniforms! Blossom, we need uniforms for Rough Ball. Help me find my spandex and my leg warmers. Don't make that face. Why don't we look at the individual balls and think about what they're used for, and then we can list the properties that make them good at what they do. So I guess soccer ball would be used, obviously, for kicking. So kicking is one of the yeah. things we use at So why don't you try kicking it and see the difference? Okay, soccer ball. That was good. Yay! You can kick that. it. See, you can kick mine too. What? It's like that. like bounce. Because okay, this, the curve. Because this went against the wall. It and went like back. all the way to the wall, and then that one like turned. So this went a lot farther than this one, and this went straight too. All right, so the rock ball doesn't roll far or straight. What about the weight? Well, the weight is really light. Light enough to kick and catch? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the soccer ball is light enough to kick and catch. So let's try another ball. You want to try a kick ball? Well, clearly that's made for kicking. Yeah! yeah. My rough ball's made for... Rough ball! It's awesome! It bounced a lot on the way there. Bounciness seems to be an important property, and we call that property elasticity. Okay, so elasticity is bounciness. Well, this steamed dumpling has very little elasticity. However, still delicious. All right, why don't we try the basketball? So what do we do with the basketball? You dribble it. Dribble? In this sport, you're like holding it and you shoot it. What about the weight? It's a little bit bigger and it does have the same weight, it feels about. So it's reasonably light. light. So for passing and shooting, I guess. Right, the other two were light, so the kicking, kicking would work, whereas this is light for Hold throwing. It. But it still has elasticity, really yeah, so. And the last ball is bowling ball. It's too heavy. So it's heavy for control and so that you can give power to knock down the bowling pins. Okay. Okay, now that's dangerous. Nobody should kick a bowling ball. Roll! Now let's roll the rough ball. Come on, it's got to go further than the bowling bit. ball. Well, it's unpredictable, and that might be something fun. Unpredictability is fun. You hear that? Let's put that on the packaging, Blossom. All right, Sterling, I got your next challenge for you. All right. We go to home plate. Great, what are we eating? We're definitely going to need plates for rough ball. To carry the sausages, of course. We have set up here a batting practice mat. We're going to teach you the strike zone. Now, the strike zone starts at the letters of his jersey, and it goes down to his knees. Right. That's and then below that is a ball, right? That's right. Anything above that is a ball. The width of the strike zone is the width of the plate. Okay. So if you can imagine a rectangle from Rolando's letters, the width of the plate, down to his knees, that's the strike zone. Okay. And as the catcher sits behind home plate, there's an umpire behind him that rules the whether calls. or not... You got it. Rules whether or not it's a ball or a strike. And if it's a strike, Rolando tries to hit it. Umpires. Maybe we need umpires for rough ball. Okay, Sterling, the umpire is right behind the catcher, just like this. 
That's a strike. The ball is just within the strike zone, and since he didn't hit it, it's a strike. That's high. That's a ball. You got it. That's outside. Outside. So that's also a ball. And it's outside of the zone to the right-handed hitter. Ready to call some? Yeah. All right, now it's time for Sterling to be an umpire. See right. Good strike call, Sterling. See right. Two. Step three, you're out. Three strikes. How many outs should we have in rough ball? I say 11. Should we do rough ball? It's lighter than the soccer ball and the basketball, but not as light as the kickball. But it's a lot lighter than the football. Definitely. Ball. Okay. The two most important properties of the ball is the weight and the elasticity. Do okay. you know what exactly is weight? How can you tell something's heavier? This one, like, makes my arm, like, go... But which direction is it going? Down. Down. That's it. Oh, so it's like gravity. Pull. Gravitational pull. The gravitational pull, <laughs> thank you. Right, so weight is the force downwards on something's mass. And mass is the amount of stuff you've got. Mass is how much stuff the ball's made of. And its weight is how much Earth's gravity pulls on that stuff. <laughs> now, mass measures inertia. And that's how much an object resists moving or changing its motion. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And the way to feel that is take the ball and now just move it back and forth. So something with a lot of mass, like a bowling ball, is hard to get moving. But once it gets moving, it's hard to stop. Woohoo! Liza and Talia still need to find out what the rough ball's good for. Hi, Sterling. This is Chris Miyaki. He's the Brockton Rocks manager. Hi, Sterling. Great to meet you. Hey, coach. I'm a coach, too. Okay, team. Let's huddle up. No, instead of huddle, let's dogpile. Whee! Oh, sorry, Chet. Okay, Sterling. We're going to head out to shortstop, and I'm going to show you how to feel the ground ball and then throw it to first base. Feet about shoulder width apart so that we can get down, feel the ground ball, hands up into throwing position, take a step forward, up, and fire. Ground ball hit to Sterling, right in the mid. Sort of. <laughs> not that easy, is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we keep practicing. And I throw to first base. Much better. Infielders usually take about 40 to 50 ground balls a day to get their practice in. Oh, that's a lot. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You have to move your feet. Good. Set there up. There you go, Sterling. Throw. Now, Sterling's Great using job. a glove. Ah, if I'm going to use a glove for rough ball, it's going to have to be enormous. What? There's no money in the budget for uniforms! Use the rough ball as a uniform? How am I supposed to do that? Oh, I see where you're going. Hey, Sterling, let's go take some batting practice. There you go. Sterling's making good contact. I think I'll contact him. Hey, Sterling, it's rough! Hi, rough. You rocking the rocks out there or what? Yeah. Hey, I bet you think you're playing the game tonight. But you're not. Okay. You're not going to play in the game, you're going to do the play-by-play -play for the game. <laughs> That's right, you'll be announcing the game with Matt up in the radio booth, so have fun! That's awesome! So Sterling's going to announce the baseball game, and I'm going to announce the Halftime Quiz Show with Brian, Isaac, and yeah. Bethany, yeah. who've got triple brain power. So, let us brush up on the rules. How many points are available? 15. Ten. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. Ten questions available at five points apiece. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Let the quiz begin. The force of gravity pulling downwards on an object is called it? Weight. Yes. What two properties are most important for balls that are designed for kicking? Um, the, the rollability. It has to be rough sphere. Incorrect. You have two balls. They are the same, except that one is filled with air and one is filled with water, which has more mass. The water. Yes! What is the name of the team that Sterling is working with? The Boston the, Rocks. The, the Boston Rocks. No, it's not the Boston, it's like the Broughton. Incorrect. Name two things that make the rough ball unpredictable. It um, has it's lumpy. Shape. It's lumpy. It's, it's shape. shape and, and it's texture. Yes! Yes! True or false? Mr. D is a chemistry teacher. False! False! Correct! A moving ball that is hard to stop has a lot of... Inertia. What? Yes! What is the name of the stadium where Sterling's Challenge takes place? The stadium, the core... No! Oh, we are out of time! Whoa! <laughs> Bethany, you okay? That was horrible! <laughs> you guys got five out of ten! Yes! Yes! 25 points! Not exactly a world record. All right, let's go over the ones you missed. What okay. two properties are most important for balls that are designed for kicking? They need to be lightweight and uh, elastic. Ah, uh, that's what I was thinking. Uh, what is the name of the team that Sterling is working with? It's home of the Brockton Rocks. Uh, also, what is the name of the stadium where Sterling's challenge takes place? Campanelli Stadium. Let's start with the set. I would have never got that. So you didn't do so hot on the quiz today. It happens, but I have something that should make you feel better. Grab those helmets in the wagon. You guys are off to help Talia and Liza in their rough ball game. 
helmet. Yes, extra challenge. Go, thanks. Uh, right. okay. Bye, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. So, are Liza and Talia understanding the gravity of their situation? Let's find out. Okay, so why don't we learn more about these different properties by doing some tests? Yes. So. Awesome. Why don't we start with the elasticity or the bouncing? Okay. Let's check elasticity. So how high up it bounces back to is going to be a good measure. Bounceability. The kickball. I think the kickball bounced like 75% of the way back up. It's yeah, like, the soccer ball was 50%. Okay. It's actually completely right to say that that's 75% elastic. Really? Yeah, the height is the direct measure. All right, Italian. The bowling so ball was like 10%. 10%. So 50% for basketball, too. Here we go, Ross. All right, let's go, elasticity. Yes! Uh, that didn't work. Well, it bounces. Bounces about as high as Chet. Oh, I can't believe a bowling ball is bouncier than my rough ball. So now we know that our rough ball isn't good for bouncing. Okay, let's look at the basketball, which is something that you throw. So it's elasticity, which we don't have. Reasonably light. Oh. Yeah. So is it reasonably oh, light? Is it light yeah, enough? Yeah, this is really light. So it is. It's so actually, it has all the qualities of something to throw. Yes. So our rough so ball is a throwing ball. ball. It's a throwing ball. Yes. Now we just need to find a game that involves throwing the ball. Oh. Hey, Ruff. Hey, Ruff. Hello, ladies. Now, look, I promised hours of fun when playing with a rough ball, and so far we've only gotten six seconds. You might have wanted to have made it more of a circle. Mine's round-ish. And if your next challenge is to make up a game using the best part of the rough ball, which is throwing it, then it needs to be fun for longer than six seconds. Obviously. Now your game testers will be arriving in 30 minutes for the rough ball tournament. Use anything you've got there for the game. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure working with Thanks. you. Yeah. Here we are in the broadcast booth. Rocks Radio. And we have a great viewer right behind home yeah. plate. What do you think our number one job is? It's calling the plays and calling what happens and home runs and strikes. All right. We're going to want to hear Sterling's broadcast. I'll just tune into Rocks Radio and... Oh, wait, wait. wait. There's a lot of different tools I use to do that. You've got the most important one right here. Which is the lineup of everyone, right? It is the starting lineup for both teams. I put it in my scorebook. And what I do is I fill in the starting lineup. I write in all their names and their positions and then some stats about them so that I have stuff to talk about. For example, Vinny Pinnell hits a ground ball to the shortstop. I also need to tell them something about Vinny Pinnell. Okay. The baseball announcer has a lot of information he has to remember. We're going to start looking at their stats. Who's the leading home run hitter on our team right now? Let's see. Melvin Falou. What's his batting average? 386. He's so hitting 39% of the baseballs yeah. thrown his way. One of the best hitters on the team. You definitely want to mention that. Do you know what an RBI is? RBI? Really bad itch? Ooh, ah, right there. Ah. It's a run by then, so that oh. means like when you hit the ball, mm -hmm. and then a guy on third base runs in, but you don't make a run. Right. Yep. So you get a run batted in. Yep. But you don't always have to talk about the stats. You can say Eddie Kim is a left-handed batter. You can say Eddie Kim has his socks pulled up to his knees. <laughs> Sometimes they do. You'll see. They're... I can say that on the radio. You bet I will. Okay, so let's start thinking. Taggers might have to travel on these or something. Well, like the bouncing. Ooh, what are these? <gasps> oh. Treats. Those can be like our little obstacle cones. Nice obstacle course. <laughs> Trampoline. We should have to roll it with our heads to make it harder. <laughs> ah! Where's the rough ball? Huh, I don't see any sausages there. But while they finish brainstorming the rough ball game, we'll see how the game is playing out with Sterling. These are critical minutes because after the pregame show is over, we talk until the game is over. Wow. Okay, 15 seconds. Ah, it's game time. <laughs> It's 82 degrees at the ballpark as Brockton embarks on game number 65. All right, you're live. So. Oh, live. Stepping up to bat is Eugene Julian, who resides in Brockton, Massachusetts. Oh, I like your yeah, broadcasting right voice, Sterling. Yeah. That was a strike thrown by JC Huguet. Stepping up for the next pitch. Pop up, center field, drifting over to right field, and caught by. The right fielder, Josh, Josh Burris. Oh, he's doing great! great. What out is One that? Out. There you go. Hey, Sterling, if rough ball ever takes off, I think I may put you in the broadcast booth. Stepping up next is Dominic Ramos. Dominic Ramos has 16 stolen bases this year, so the Rocks would love to get Ramos on base. <laughs> and he throws a ball outside, right? And Ramos heads off to first base. He gets a walk. Next up is Melvin Falou. What do we know about Melvin Falou, Sterling? We know that he's the number two batter in the whole league, batting at 386. That is quite a batting average, isn't it? It is. Oh, did you hear that hit? 
from the deep to the left center field gap, racing back the left fielder Burke. He looks up and it's one hop off the wall in left center field. Ramos is around third base. He'll come in to score. First run of the game. How about that? Who is now 1 0 Rocks? The Rocks strike first. Yes. Look at you, already an old pro. Sterling's got the skills that pay the bills. Sterling, it's Rob. Hey, Rob. Listen, your announcing is awesome, but I don't want you to come back to Studio G just yet. I want you to go and play rock ball with the other pitchers. Okay. Well, well, thank you, and I'll see you later. Sounds know. good. Take care. Thanks, good man. luck. Go rocks! Oh my gosh, I'm a new here. So Do we have to wear these? First, you roll the ball with your head. This is really, okay, no. <laughs> All right, Liza and Talia are explaining right, the rules to the fetchers. get on the bouncy thing, Don't and you bounce. Don't laugh, like, All the way to the soccer ball. Then you'll dribble through the rough pictures with a soccer ball. And then you're gonna bounce again! And then you jump three times on the trampoline and shoot with the rough Three times ball. on the trampoline, and, and then you use the rough ball for throwing! And, and a great throw! I Into the goal! will be keeping hey. time. On your mark, get set, go. Sterling will be our first contestant. Yeah. Rolls the ball with his head. Gets on the hoppy thing. Kicks the soccer ball around the awesome, gorgeous pictures of me. Gets on another hoppy thing. Gets on the trampoline. One, two, three. Throw! There you go! Score! Wait, 47 seconds. Yeah! Isaac has lost his awesome helmet. Now ah, those helmets keep falling off. Yeah! Who yeah. needs straps on these things? Okay, I'm working on that. Yeah, uh, here comes Brian. Shoot the ball! And he's gonna throw the ball or his helmet. Which one? Really fun. fun. Yeah, I thought this was the best game ever. Yes! All right, see you back at Studio G, Rob. All right, guys, see you back at Studio G. Great job. Blossom, we've got a hit on our hands. Let's welcome back our contestants. Liza, Talia, Becky, Brian, Sterling, and Isaac, welcome back. Hey, Rob. Before we do anything else, I just received this urgent text message sent by me. It says, Rob, make sure to give out points. Yeah! Liza, your expert ball handling skills, and Talia, your scale of bounciness definitely merits some points. I think the kickball bounced like 75% of the way back up. Rough ball hasn't swept the nation yet, but you're still getting 75 points. Yeah. Sterling, for getting down the baseball basics and for calling strike three like a pro. Strike three, you're out. <laughs> 75 points. Yeah. Yeah. But is that all the points a dog can give? No. What time is it? Bonus points! Yeah, says any dog will tell you. When you're chasing balls, you have to hustle. And today's 15 bonus points go to the contestant who really hustled while chasing ground balls. Seeing that went straight to my heart. Sterling! Yes, sir. With 90 points, you're today's daily winner. Now, Sterlinger, I have here two completed rule books for rough ball. Under one rule book, a prize as exciting as I think rough ball is. Under the other, a prize as exciting as Blossom thinks rough ball is. Yeah. So, which will it be? Rule book A or rule book B? A, 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 B, A. A. Then, Sterling, your prize is in the mailbox. Go get it! All right. Done. Two Sterling from Rush. Done, done. You have won tickets to see the Red Sox play the Cleveland Indians. Good for you and a friend. That's right, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Enjoy. The Red Sox, darling. All right, folks, that's our show. Until next time, this is Rough Ruffman saying Rough Ball. It's going to sweep the nation. Yeah. Don't pick one up. Yeah. See you guys. Final 30 seconds here at Advanced Professional Rough Ball. Blossom has her bowl of gelatin. Oh, but it's cherry-flavored penalty. Chet gets a free kick because it's a Tuesday before 10 o'clock. The rough ball lands in the chili. 50 points. Blossom has to balance the rough ball on her head if she wants to convert her points to schmoints, which Chet can only block with an umbrella and a tricycle. Now, Blossom can bring three more rough balls into play, or two balls and one wheel of cheese, which will add 10 points divided by the number of rough goals, which will give you a total of... Anyone for checkers?
in Chinese. I don't know. What are the least laws in Ecuador? I don't know. George Washington's dog invented cable. True or false? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Phew, it was just a dream. I thought I was back at dog warts. Ah, dog warts. Rah, rah, for dog warts. We bark with pride to thee. Ah, yes, Professor Fang. Talk about snooty. <laughs> he thought schnauzers were the smartest dogs. Ah, everyone knows mutts are the smartest. Well, everybody else knows. <gasps> Ooh, check it out. My final term paper on advanced bouncy balliology. Dogs and balls through the ages. There's no grade on the paper. That's a little strange. <gasps> it's from Fang. Dear Ruffman, you said your term paper was in the mail, so I let you graduate, but I've waited long enough. I'm flunking you unless you get that term paper to me by tomorrow. Oh, yikes, I never mailed it. Here, Chet, get an envelope. And hurry, I need this paper graded. Oh, what are you doing? Not grade 10, graded. Okay, I've got some rewriting to do. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam, my destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Jack, you want to stick to filing? Here come the contestants now! He really wants to go bungee jumping! Brian! Her least favorite subject, geography! Tell ya! She says one of her hobbies is spying! Bethany! What's her favorite dessert? Her Nana's cookies! Liza! He once went canvassing for a presidential candidate! Sterling! He tends to put things off until he absolutely has to do them. Maybe that's why he's the last person to be introduced. Isaac! Let's get an update on the scores, and things have shaken up here. Brian in sixth place with 545 points. Talia in fifth with 625. Here we go. Bethany down to fourth with 657 and a half. Isaac down to third with 677 and a half. Liza all the way up to second with 685. And Sterling in first with 707 and a half points. Hello, and welcome to the only show with a host who has a diploma from obedience school. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty impressive, huh? Yeah. Dog warts obedience school. Hey. <laughs> it's too bad to go to take it away from me. Why? Why? Huh? Apparently, I never turned in my final term paper. Advanced bouncing balliology. Very technical stuff. Took me a year to write, and then Chet turned it into this. Oh, oh. Chet. Oh. Chet. 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 Now I have to write the whole thing in a day, and I need help with my research. Oh, I feel a lot of pressure. Which brings us to challenge number one. Yay! This is Chandler. He's a coach, he's an educator, and he knows all about pressure. And he's waiting for Sterling and Brian. Nice. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go fetch! Hey, hey. My educational future is in your hands. Bye. 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 Now then, challenge number two. Any of you guys own dogs? Yeah, yeah I do. I own dogs. Isaac, what kind of dogs do you have? I have three total that are schnauzers. I have a what? boxer and a Chinese crusted. You have schnauzers? I have schnauzers. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? You have schnauzers? Yeah. Oh, man! What's so bad What's about schnauzers? Well, first of all, let me give you a little backstory about myself. I don't know if any of you guys have wondered what kind of breed I am. Oh, yeah, what type of breed are you? Well, I'm kind of a melange, a potpourri of different breeds. In other words, I'm a mutt. And everyone knows mutts are the smartest dogs in the world. Although at dog warts, the schnauzers all thought they were the smartest. We're going to prove who's the smartest once and for all. Isaac, Talia, everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Hey, guys. Nice. I cannot believe you have schnauzers. Sorry, hey. <laughs> Bye. Bye. So, as determined by the Fetch 3000, Bethany and Liza have stayed behind in the yeah. studio, but they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. Oh, yeah. Our Fetch Fairness Guarantee promises all the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. So, for the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So, let's get the latest on Brian and Sterling. All right. Yeah. Oh, nice. How you guys doing? I'm hey. Chandler. How are you? <laughs> I'm a coach, and I teach a program called Similarity Awareness, and I put able-bodied kids like yourselves into wheelchairs, and I teach them wheelchair sports, and that's going to be your challenge today. Awesome. Why don't you go see the chairs over here that we're going to put you in? Are your legs disabled? 
Uh, good question. I'm a paraplegic. I was in a car accident when I was 15 years old. I was paralyzed from this level down. Um, I have full arm use, stuff like that, so I can play basketball, tennis, all types of different types of sports. How do you go to the bathroom in a wheelchair? <laughs> now that is a good question. I use the big stalls, or I use, uh, you know, it's, it's all about trying to find a place where uh, people aren't watching. Yeah, I hate when people watch me. So if I touch your knee, you won't feel it? Uh, you know, it's weird sensations. Sometimes I can feel like I can feel like the bottoms of my feet. I don't know why, but it's uh, different for everybody. So these are basketball chairs. You guys are going to be pushing around those chairs all day. Like the whole day? Like not the getting up at all? Nope. I'm going to let you get up at all. Bro, this is crazy. That's right. Sterling and Brian have got to stay in the chairs for the whole day. Now we're going to head over to the track, so try to keep up. Move, Brian. Now, before they can play sports in a wheelchair, they need to learn how to get around in one. You try. I try to push forward, drop my arms, push like that. You're causing friction when you go like this and pull back. You want less friction, okay? Okay, we want less friction so the wheels roll freely. No. Whoa, not that freely. Sterling! <laughs> Anytime, boy. Work on this. Push the chairs. And I need to work on getting something to eat. Chet, I'll bring this snack there, buddy. Thanks. People. Dr. Dodman. Hey, he's one letter away from Dogman. That would be a cool name. Uh, hi, are you Dr. Dodman? I am Dr. Dodman. I'm an animal behaviorist. We're involved in understanding how animals learn and how to teach them and stuff like that. I understand that Ruff is very concerned about his intelligence. I wouldn't say I'm concerned about my intelligence. <laughs> Uh, could somebody help me get my head out of this pickle jar? Yeah. And we have to show you how intelligent dogs are, and uh, maybe you can help Ruff feel better. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good job. Good job. What do you think intelligence is? Like, how well you can gain knowledge that can help you survive. Learning something that you wouldn't automatically know. You need to learn so that you can not make the same mistake again. over and over again. Learn from my mistakes. That's what I do on this show. <laughs> ah, curse you, pickles! I mean, if you go back to the border collie with the hike and catching the ball, why do you think he was doing that? First, you have to teach the dog like what the words mean, because obviously dogs don't know English. Hike. Yeah. Connecting a word to action was learning, where like throwing and then going to catch something is more instinct. That's right. We're relying partly on his natural behavior. Okay, natural or innate behaviors are things dogs do naturally, like fetch or chase cats. Well, I'm just saying. Some dogs will work for food, some for petting, some for tennis ball. If a dog doesn't obey, does that mean that it's like not smart or something? Not really. Dogs sometimes just choose not to do it. I mean, you might do the same thing. So a dog that performs a trick well doesn't necessarily mean he's smarter. Some smart dogs just don't like doing tricks, like yours truly. Isaac and Talia have to design a test that will work on all dogs. Let me give the doctor a call here. Uh-oh. Hello? Hi, Dr. Dodman. Is this rough? Yes, it is. I'm sending 11 dogs who applied to be interns on the show. <laughs> we couldn't give them the job, but, you know, maybe we can give them some screen time. I want you to figure out a way to test their intelligence so we can prove once and for all what kind of dogs are the smartest. Good luck controlling their enthusiasm. <laughs> Seriously, good luck. Oh, it's much easier to... Yes, it is much easier. So I think we're going to have a little race. Make it a little bit more of a challenge and get some air out of your chair. Yeah, he's, flattening, he's flattening their tires. You guys ready? Yes. On your mark, get set, go. Push, push. Oh, Brian's in the lead. Push. Look at this, look at this. I the Took you guys around 11 seconds. It was a little harder because there's no air in it. Don't you mean it was a little soft? <laughs> Get it? Because it's, there's no air, which makes it... All right, fine. You may wonder what I'm doing standing here yeah. with this. It's just a big old sheet, and we're going to throw it over each dog. And the idea is that the quicker okay. they get out, the smarter they are. So we're going to need you to time it with a stopwatch. Oh, so smarter dogs will escape faster. Well, that makes sense to me. I could get out of that blanket about half a second. Right, me too. They just did nothing. Yeah, One yeah. stopwatch. Thank you. One blanket. Some dogs. That's okay, canine number one. Ready. I believe he is a Briard. Oh. He looks like an orange ghost. First dog's looking around. Oh, it's off his back. It's off his back. Stop. 19 seconds. Man, it took him a long time to figure out how to get out. 
It's a blanket, not a locked trunk, buddy. I think we should do the name of the dog, the breed, and then the time it took. Okay, so we should probably do this a second time. See if they improve? Yeah. We can test natural intelligence with the first trial and how fast yeah. they learn with the second. There we go. What is it? What 12 is it? seconds flat. Wow. This wow. dog learns. Now, who's next? D-O-G, the black lab. His owner has a child named K-I-D. <laughs> Spells kid. No? Yeah? Yes. 3.67 seconds. We're going to do it a second time. Go. Go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he doesn't even know it's done. D-O-G, you didn't get it off. Come on, D-O-G. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Here we go. Okay, there we go. 16.71 seconds. It was a lot longer this time because he, he didn't even know he, he had it on his tail. Next, let's get the owner on the tail. No, 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 no. <laughs> Only testing dogs today, Dr. Dogman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he thinks it's a game. This is a game. This is a serious experiment. It's a new record. Just did it. Come on. 18.47 seconds. 18. That's fast. Okay, 6.5 seconds. Here we go. Finally. All right, I think that's it. Well, how do we do? All right, so let's go down this list and figure out the best five. There's a number of dogs here under five seconds. Oh, yeah, they have a lot of natural ability. I think most improved would show more intelligence. Ooh, ooh, right. They can also show intelligence by whether they learn to get out from under the blanket faster the second time. But they might improve from terrible to bad. But it's still intelligence. All right. Good point, Talia. <laughs> So the fetchers will compare all the dogs based on fastest time, which shows natural intelligence, and most improvement, which shows learned intelligence. The five dogs who are going to be staying with us are Kylie. Looks like we have a Border Collie. Bella. Ah, and a Wire Fox Terrier. Corona. The Briard. D.O.G. The Black Lab. And Comar. One of your relatives, Tank. Hey, wait, where are the mutts? We're supposed to be the smartest. So before we pump up your tire, I'm going to do a little demonstration of air pressure. Air pressure is the force being applied to the inside walls of a balloon or the inside of a tire. We're putting more air molecules into it, so air molecules are bouncing off each other and creating more pressure inside the balloon. <laughs> My ears are off. So before we get racing again, we're going to pump up your tires to get it back to 100 PSI, which is pounds per square inch, and that is the measure of air pressure. <sighs> Way better. Remember, the last time you guys raced, it was 11 seconds. Let's see if you guys can break that as fast as you can. Go. And they're off. Push it, boys. Push. Okay, let's see if they go faster with more air in their tires. No, a close race, but Sterling takes it. Well, let's just say you guys are both faster by three seconds. Nice job, guys. And now I'm back here in Studio G with Liza and Bethany. We're ready to earn points of their own during the halftime quiz show. Ooh, I like that synchronicity. <laughs> Let's brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points a piece. If you're not sure, we can skip and come back to it if there's time, okay? Okay. You ready? Yeah! Then let the quiz begin! What caused an increase in air pressure inside the balloon? Um, air molecules being pressured into the balloon. Yes! Dr. Dodman studies how dogs learn. He is called a what? Skip it. In their wheelchair race, how many seconds slower did Brian and Sterling go when their tires were flat? Three. Yes! When Brian and Sterling pull back on the wheels with their hands, they are causing what? Friction. Friction. Yes! True or false, K-I-D is a yellow lab. False. Correct. Two rewards dogs work for are... Food and... Just like a tennis ball or yes. something. Air pressure is sometimes measured in units called PSI. What does PSI stand for? Pressure... something... No, skip, skip it. Skip it. Skip it. Measuring how fast dogs get out from under a blanket on the first try, is that testing for innate intelligence or learned intelligence? Um, in innate. innate. Yes! Increasing air pressure in the tires made it easier or harder to roll the wheelchairs. Easier. easier. Another term for innate behavior is what? Innate. Is it like, um, natural behaviors for dogs? Yes! Yes! Oh, we are out of time! Eight out of ten! Yeah. Forty points! Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go over the two that you missed. Dr. Dodman studies how dogs learn. He's called an animal behaviorist. Also, air pressure is sometimes measured in units called PSI. What does PSI stand for? Pounds per square inch. I thought uh, everybody knew that. So obvious, That's all right. Hey, 40 points is a good job, ladies. So, how are Brian and Sterling handling the pressure? Let's get a tire gauge and find out. All right. Okay. Now we're off to the court, guys. From the wow. racetrack. To the basketball court. <gasps> oh, not on the hill. So what was your biggest obstacle you faced? In the beginning, anything was an obstacle. Uh, a curb, getting on a sidewalk, sand, grass, popping a tire. 
Then when you get older and older, you just realize that they're not really obstacles. Um, they're more of challenges. What's life without a few challenges? Uh, right? well, we'd have no show without challenges. Exactly. So uh, why don't one of you guys try to open that door? There you go. Oh, Doors open. Oh, wait a minute. Way. There you go. Good job. Now push your way through. Or press uh -oh. the wheelchair button over there. Yeah, maybe... Uh, and the handicap button doesn't work on that door. Imagine being in a chair and that doesn't work. That's kind of obnoxious, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Really there you go. In the intelligence test, we sorted out the five best. Yeah. And now we'd like you to sort out the best of the best. Oh, look! Treats! Okay. We could put, like, a treat here and then close it and see if the dogs go for the treat still. Out of sight, out of mind. Then the next test, what we'll do is we'll show them the treat under one of the cones, and then we'll take them for a little walk, and then come back here and see which cone they look under. So it's like memory, and memory is a part of intelligence. All dogs like food, so they're going to hide a treat under a cone and see how long it takes each dog to find it. First, they'll do the out of sight, out of mind test, and then they'll test the dog's memory. Okay, here comes Kylie the Border Collie again. Now we're gonna place a snack under one of the cones. Let our contestant discover it. Oh, she, she, she slid it. Okay. There you so go. She passes the preliminary round. Where is it? And the Briard. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, hair gets in the way. Again. Perhaps a haircut, and then we come back and try again. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Win. Oh, no. Here's the Wire Fox Terrier. Hey, where are you going, buddy? Hey! All right, now it's time for DOG, the Black yeah. Lab. Yeah, there we go. Wow. DOG found it pretty quickly. Did you get it? He did very yes. W-E-L-L. -L. <laughs> That spells well. And the bulldog. I don't think okay. he's interested in the treat. Ooh, squeaky toys work for me. Find the squeaky Find toy. It. Oh, that guy doesn't quite get this. So far, Kylie and DOG are the only ones who, who have passed the test. Yeah. Okay, it's down to Kylie the Border Collie and the notorious DOG, the Black Lab. Let's uh, talk about air pressure in basketballs. Here comes the part about balls. I better take some notes from my paper. The more air pressure you have in the ball, the higher the ball bounces. So when the ball hits the ground, you have less air like this ball. It deforms. While it's deforming on the ground, it bounces less coming up. Hey, that's just like the wheelchair tires. They lose energy when they smush and they roll slower. The basketball loses energy when it smushes and doesn't bounce as high. The less it smushes, the more energy it has for bouncing. So on basketball rules, you measure it by putting the bottom of the ball at 1.8 meters, okay? And it has to bounce all the way down and come in between 1.2 and 1.4 meters. So the ball has to go above Sterling's finger and stay right into this range, okay? Okay, not enough air pressure at all right there. Uh, let's get rid of that ball. Next one. Oop, I think it went a little too high, what do you think? Bad ball. Let's try yours. Third ball. Just that's right. Perfect. That's perfect. We have our basketball. This is the complicated part in wheelchair basketball. You have to dribble every three times you touch your wheels, okay? You can place the ball in your lap and then push. That will be once, twice, turn, that's three, half the dribble. The other rule is you cannot use your legs whatsoever. So if you move your feet off, you're using your leg to move, then it's a foul and reverse of possession. It's now between two dogs, the Border Collie and the Black Lab. It's their own mini grand finale of intelligence. Let go of his leash once he gets here. Now going for a little stroll. Please don't lick my camera. Whoa, D.O.G. pounced on that thing and okay. took the cone. He just prefers the cone to the treat. Who needs a oh, snack? That's a great toy. Apparently the cone is tastier. And that was like three like, seconds flat. His, as long as it's his motivation, he doesn't want the treat, but he wants the cone. It's still motivation. Yeah. Now let's see if our final contestant can do any better. Whoa, she went right to the cone and tipped it gently and ate the treat. Three seconds. Oh, no, it's a tie. How are we going to decide who's the winner? Let's look back at the blanket test, see who's... So, we'll take their average. Okay. DLG I'm going to take their scores from the blanket test. 3.67 seconds first, and then yeah. for... And then Kylie. take the score from the snack she hiding test. Yeah, 65 first, and then 4.87. So well, that's her even better. was a lot lower. I think we have a winner. So, Kylie's the winner. Kylie the Border Collie is the yeah. winner! Well, at least she's not a schnauzer. I guess she deserves the crown. Oh, real smart. You're eating the crown. Thank you Good very work, much. guys. Thanks. Great Thank you, Dr. Dogman. Dogman. See ya. You got it, Isaac. See ya, Talia. Well, now that you guys have a little bit of the wheelchair mechanics down, I thought I'd bring a couple of my friends out, and we'll have a little two-on-two. -two. What do you guys think? Well, Wait, let's do it. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to ref. <laughs> 
Sterling, you're gonna be on Devin's team. Cole, you're gonna be on Brian's team. And look at those awesome jerseys. First one to three wins. You guys ready? Let's get it started. Man to man coverage. Sterling and Devin are on the green team. Cole and Brian are on the yellow team. Devin with a nice 360 oh. turnaround. Passes the Sterling, wide open shot. Go? Ooh, a little much. Nice. Brian has it. Don't forget to dribble, got Joe. There it is, there it Puts is. Puts the ball on the court. Bring one, two. He dribbles, one, two. Here's Sterling with the ball, he stole it. You gotta dribble, you gotta dribble. There There's it is. a dribble, good, a turn, and a pass into Devin. Go back Devin yeah, turns, back. dribbles, turns and dribbles again. Devin puts nice. the rock in the hole, baby! Oh, Razzle dazzle, baby! Now Brian with a shot from downtown! Sterling with a one-handed pass over two defensemen, and oh, baby, Devin drops the rock! Good job, good job. Devin with a behind-the-back oh, bounce pass, and Sterling wasn't ready for it. Oh. Now Brian shoots the basket, puts yeah. it in! The crowd is roaring. Sterling steals the ball, gives it to Devin, dribbles, fades back, feeds it into Sterling, who drops it in! And a victory for the green team! Hey, good job, man. Good stuff. You guys have fun? You enjoy it? I never thought that we could wheelchairs. Come back anytime. Thanks a lot, Chandler. Okay, Blossom, you and me, B-ball, you're going down and whoa! Uh, whoa, too bad we're out of time. No time for a game, yes. <laughs> uh, now heading back to Studio G, just in the nick of time, they certainly had a ball. Brian and Sterling hey. with hey. awesome basketball shirts with nice. pictures of me on them. Nice job, guys. They proved just how smart a dog can be. Smart enough to host his own reality game show. Thank you, Isaac and Talia. Hi. Good job, guys. Good job. Now, Brian and Sterling, you were good sports about suiting up and trying something new, like shooting hoops from a sitting position. Now, you guys aren't the Michael Jordans of wheelchair basketball, but you do have 75 points. Yeah. And for being the high scorer on his team, an extra five points for Brian. Yeah. For a total of points for Sterling and 80 for Brian. Nice. Cool. Isaac and Talia, yeah. I know what you're about to say. Ruff, please. It's reward enough just getting a chance to work with dogs. I don't need points, but I think you deserve at least a few points, right? Yeah. yeah. You designed and conducted some excellent experiments, and for yeah. that, 80 points. Nice. nice. Is that all the points a dog can give? No. What time is it? Bonus points. I've got 10 bonus points today going to the contestant who nailed the winning oh, shot Sterling. for his basketball team. Oh, you're the winner! Sterling, you're yeah. today's game winner! Yeah. Now, Sterling, I have here two identical, intelligent-looking basketballs. Under one, a dazzling prize. Under the other, something pretty dazzle-less. So, which will it be? Ball A or ball B? B for basketball. Yeah, B for yeah, basketball. B for basketball, I like your thinking. Well, Sterling, your prize is in the mailbox. Go get it! Hey! Yeah, Sterling. You're gonna love this one. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so cool. awesome. Ruff, Ruff, Ruff. Ruffman's Encyclopedia of Dog Breeds. Yep, you talk about different kinds of dogs. Oh, Ruff. Ah, uh -huh. oh, wait, no. This is your cousin, Roof. Yeah, oh, yeah. Goodness. The pirate dog. Yeah, I look good in pirate suit. But the am cool. 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 Well, Sterling, enjoy. That is quite the educational experience. Yeah. So, from Studio G, I'm Ruff Ruffman. Off to get my diploma. Until yeah. next time, see you, fetchers. Bye. Bye. I sent my new bouncy ball term paper to Professor Fang, and I should be getting the grade back any moment now. Yes, a letter from Professor Fang. So what I get? A plus, A? Z minus! You have gotten the worst grade in the history of dog warts. Send your diploma back immediately. I can't believe I have to give up my diploma. Wait a minute. My term paper! Uh, Chet, remember when I asked you to hand deliver my paper? What did you actually deliver? Okay, that's liver. When I said deliver, you delivered liver. Great. <laughs> to the Fetch 3000 isn't one of the better ones. Better call my nephew. So, Glenn! What? I need you to put on these tights and be my sidekick. And don't call me Glenn. That's just my alias here on Earth. Your what? My alias! My real name is... 
Oath Wagwan, the Fendo of Poof and Freedom for all the citizens of America. You've been reading a lot of comic books, huh, Glenn? Oath Wagwan, no one must test my dual identity. Well, all you did was put your regular name into your superhero name. Ultra Glenn? I mean, come on. <gasps> but that means I put all my friends and relatives into jeopardy. Oh, what have I done? Finally lost your marbles? Don't be naive, Uncle Wuff. I've just learned that a dangerous villain named Gamma Ray Person is on the loose. Gamma Ray Person? Seriously? Yes, he is building a machine to destroy all life on Earth using gamma radiation. What? So put on these tights or I won't fix your computer. Ruffman Man. Ruffman Man? Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone and BAM! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to fine, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Uh, Chad, probably should have stuck with a bicycle. Here come the contestants now! She says she's afraid of heights. Wiza! His favorite smell? Sizzling bacon. Brian! The early bird catches the worm, but this contestant likes to wake up late. Sterling! It's a spicy paste. It's from Syria. It's Guamara. Meet the first fetcher to ever try it. Talia! Her worst habit? Fidgeting. Bethany! He wants to go to Thailand. Isaac! Let's get an update on the scores. It's Leapfrog. Brian in sixth place with 620 points. Bethany down to fifth with 697 and a half. Talia up to fourth with 705. Liza down to third with 725. Isaac up to second with 757 and a half. And Sterling still in first with 792 and a half points. Hi, and welcome to another episode of... Oh, that's it. I gotta get out of these tights. Are you wearing tights? Uh, apparently, someone doesn't want his marshmallow attachment with Anne. Ah, uh, come on, Glenn. These tights are killing me. It's Ultra Gwen. Ultra Gwen. Ultra Gwen. Okay. Everybody, uh, this is... I am Ultra Gwen. Hello, young fetchers. Hi, Gwen. You six boy fetchers must defeat an evil villain with your mutant powers. We don't have mutant powers. Mutant powers. We're just kids. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Glenn's been reading a lot of comic books lately. No, Wolfman Man, this is Wheel! Didn't you see today's newspaper? Earlier today, a suspicious person was seen performing mysterious experiments with electromagnetic radiation. Several notes and artifacts were left by the individual who reportedly wore a mask and a costume bearing the letters G-R. That stands for Gamma Way Cousin. He's planning on making a Gamma Way machine to destroy all life on Earth. <laughs> really? All life on Earth? Rob, you have to listen to Glenn. Gamma Way Person is testing all the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum to find the most powerful type of radiation. He will harvest Gamma Ways for evil. What's a gamma ray? Glenn, that's fictional. There's no such thing as gamma rays. Well, just ask Super Cat. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Call her Cat Woman Cat. Hey, hey Wazzo. Explain to Wuffman Man. Gamma rays are real? They have the most energy out of all the radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum? <laughs> oh, no. This looks like a job for the Super Fetters. What can we do to help? You need to find Professor Alyssa Goodman. She is an expert on electromagnetic radiation. Whoa. Learn about the electromagnetic spectrum. Follow the clues left by Gamma Ray Person and stop him before it's too late. Okay, okay. You two. Uh, Talia and Isaac? You are now the Incredible Fox. Nice. Yeah. Your mission is in the Chamber of Might. He needs the mailbox. And your uniforms are by the window to your left. Go Chamber get them. Oh, I see them. Chamber Whoa. of Might. <laughs> Liza and Sterling? Yeah. Deep Pit Viper Twins. Ooh, awesome. Your mission is in the Chamber of Might and your uniforms are in the wagon. Go and get them. Awesome. Oh, those are awesome. Good, good luck. See ya. Bye, guys. So, where does that leave Bethany and Brian? They are the indestructible butterflies. What? There's no superhero that's a butterfly. I, that's not I super don't. at all. They're indestructible. Your mission is in the Chamber of Might and box on the wall. Hurry, the fate of the world is in your hands. Bye. You know, I go myself, rough man man, but I got grandma.
founded for making this cape out of mom's dwapes. Oh, boy. In addition to saving the world, these six fetchers are eligible to win up to 100 wow. points in the Triumph Tally! So quick, use your X-ray vision to see how they're doing! Thanks, I'm just kind of got this computer screen. It's just as good. Here come my mighty Super Fetchers. With Super Tickets, they enter the Metro System! Oh, no, you just gotta you, you put the card in the thingy there and, uh, oh, there you go. Can they find Gamma Ray Person? Will they find what he's up to? Can they catch the train? It's Guinness, it's Guinness. Can you really call yourself a superhero if you use public transportation? So, have you seen Gamma Ray Guy? Yeah. Yes. And away they go! Hi. Hi there. I'm Alyssa Goodman. I'm an astronomy professor here. And I know you want to find out about the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, Blossom, walk me through this. What is the electromagnetic spectrum? The range of all the different types of radiation. So radiation just means energy that starts from a source and travels in waves? You mean like radio waves from a radio tower? Hey, you got it right here. Look at that. So the spectrum goes from weakest radiation to strongest radiation. So we start with radio, that's the weakest, then microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. You know about this trick? If you take a, a CD and you put it near a light bulb, you can see a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. These are all the colors you just saw that are part of visible light. The amazing thing is that that's actually just a tiny part of this whole electromagnetic spectrum. And so we have this, all this stuff here, radios, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays that are outside of the so-called visible band, which means they're invisible. Yeah? Can you actually detect any of these things, you as a human being? No. no. Not me. Some animals can see or can sense the infrared. These snakes. Oh, the Viper team, yes. Wow, you guys can see infrared. That's pretty cool. They don't actually see, though, with their eyes. They have these sensors in their cheeks that can detect infrared radiation. You're going to need some sort of special infrared sensing device. So I have the honor of giving you this high-tech infrared camera so that you can fully experience snake senses. Yes! The Pit Viper twins get infrared detecting abilities! You hawks, how good do you think your vision is? How big a thing could you see a mile away? A mouse. And could a human being see a mouse a mile away? No. No, you might need some help, right? So if you want to really experience, you know, hawkness, they have so much better vision than we do. I think I'll give you these binoculars here. <laughs> the incredible hawks get super vision powers in the form of binoculars. And then we're up to the ultraviolet. This light, you can still see it with your eyes, right? So what's that blue light we're seeing? Oh, it's just blue light. True ultraviolet, you can't see it so well as a human. That flashlight shines visible blue light that we can see, but it also shines ultraviolet light that we can't see. But butterflies could see it quite well. So I think I should give you this a little higher energy than visible ultraviolet light. Ha <laughs> ha! Ultraviolet white seeing capability goes to the indestructible butterflies! Well, do you know what these are? Does anybody know what these letters might stand for? HMS? Hms? Hours, Hours minutes, minutes and seconds. And seconds. Huh? Astronomers actually measure the coordinate that's the equivalent of longitude on the sky using time. So it's like coordinates? Like coordinates, like where you had to point the telescope. RA and DEC are like longitude and latitude lines on a map? Astronomers use them to find things in space. Thanks, bye. bye. Attention, fetchers! Wait! Oh, hi, Glenn. Snake team, listen to me. You need to go to 15 Dunster Avenue. 15 Dunster Avenue, okay. Right. Butterflies! Yeah! You need to go to 22 JFK Street. Okay. Incredible Hawks! Yeah! yeah. Find the Great Reflector! Great Refractor. Gamma Way person with clues in all these places. I am relying on you! Okay. Right. Let's, Let's go! We got this. Let's the go! The fate of the world is in your hands! You did a good job here, Glenn. I'll do it, Glenn. Here come the Incredible Hawks. What is this place? This must be the Great Refractor. That is a ginormous telescope. Okay, well, let's look around and see if we find anything. Oh, we have a stereo. Oh, yes. Play it. I C H I period C. There's nothing in there. Mm, an empty CD player. Oh, the radio? High C. High C. What does that mean? So, radios receive radio waves. H I period. What's H I period? It's like a radio station. So, it's like a number then a decimal. Yeah, but if it's a radio station, how do you get a station number from high C? Oh, H in the li in the alphabet. What number is that? A, B, C, D, D, F, G. H. It's eight. And then I, A, B, C, H, I is nine. Aha! Uh -huh. Numbers are the answer, Wolfman Man! 
89.3. Let me see. That's stable wave person! Ah! Radio waves are weak! Ah! Radio waves are not strong enough for gamma wave person! First coordinate is five hours. Five hours. <laughs> five hours. That is a clue! I should go to the Charles River! Do we have to go to the Charles River? He said he's going to the Charles River! So we have our first clue. Okay, so... Good job, Hawk Team! Come on, hurry! Meanwhile, on the sidewalk... 28, 22. Let's go. <laughs> I feel ridiculous. <laughs> oh, rough. Well, at least you're a girl. I think you look tough. It's over here. There. Oh, so let's flip it over. This is a puzzle wept by Gamma Wave Puzzle. M plus I. My... No. My cow... Micro... My microwave. 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 <laughs> Rougher? Bowler? Bowler minus ER. Bowl? Oh, microwave bowl! Oh yeah, microwave the bowl! They have to microwave the bowl? Oh, it's in ice. So we need to microwave the bowl. Microwaves! Ooh, they come after radio waves on the spectrum! All right, they have placed the bowl inside the microwave and they will press the floss! Ralph, why do I have to be in the butterfly costume? <laughs> Two people have already called me girl. It's not bad at all, Brian. There's like a hundred people in there. Yeah. There's gamma wave person in the ice! Flip it. There's a clue! Oh, it did. Microwaves have more energy than radio waves, but they're not strong enough. Microwaves aren't strong enough for gamma ray person! 34 minutes is the second coordinate. So, 34 is the second coordinate. The Museum of Science is next. We're going to the Science Museum. Ready? Ooh, power move. I like that. Butterflies out. 15 Dunstan Street. Here come the Pit Viper Twins. They're noisy tails. Okay, this must be 15. Ice cream. Looks like an ice cream shop. Yeah, oh, yeah. Puzzle. Oh, how convenient. Yeah. There's a puzzle right there on the table. Do you think we're making a gamma ray picture? Yeah. Probably. Oh, there he is. There's gamma ray person again. We're missing a piece. And there's a piece missing. It's just flavored ice cream. What, what is flavored ice cream? I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I'll go up. They'll have to figure it out. They're looking for like an evil, maybe, flavored ice cream. If you guys just maybe want to follow me this way, we actually saw something kind of hot in here earlier. Kind of hot. It's freezing here. Sterling is using the infrared camera from Dr. Goodman. We need to find something hot. They can see heated objects because heated objects give off infrared radiation. Oh! Oh, four puzzle pieces. Vanilla peach chicken. Vanilla peach chicken mint. They must scan them and go up. Cold. That one's warm. Gamma wave person must have heated up that puzzle piece. It says chicken. They're looking for chicken ice cream? Chicken ice cream. Also oh, here. Chicken. Yes. They right, found something right in the chicken ice cream. Quick, wait. And there's a gamma ray doll. There's a gamma ray doll. And the clue. Infrared radiation has more energy than microwaves, but it's not strong enough. Infrared is not strong enough. Third coordinate. Thirty-three seconds. Thirty-three seconds. That's the third coordinate. Now I should go to the dentist. Maybe we need to go to the dentist. Away, rough. Oh yes, uh, show. The Incredible Hawks have made it to the Charles River. Oh, okay. Right away, there is a puzzle. Well, it's like a code. Clearly, there are letters missing. In each color, yeah, it represents a letter. So we should probably use our hawk amazing abilities. Using their hawk vision, they are looking for clues with the power that they have harnessed from the Gwen Hawk. Looking for clues, looking for clues. Do you see anything? Anything? I don't think I see anything. Anything, guys? Anything at all? Oh my gosh! Come over here, Isaac. Clues! Where? Right on the rock. There are letters. Yes, a series of letters. Okay, so I'll read them off to you, and you keep like a little chart, okay. okay? Okay, so there's an A, and that's red. The color red is A. Orange is E. Orange is E. Oh, it's going in the color of the yellow rainbow. Is yellow is I. Yellow I is, is yellow. I. E, what's green? Green is O. Oh, it's all the vowels. A, E, I, O, U. Yeah, blue is U, and then A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes... Y. Y. Purple is Y. Okay, they have the key. Orange is E. Red is A. They are ever so close, what man yes. Yes. Blue is U. They have filled in all the missing letters. What do we have? Visible light has more energy than infrared radiation, but it's not strong enough. Visible light is not strong enough! Here's, Here's the, the next coordinate. DEC.22. 22. 22, another coordinate! Right. Now I'll check the worldwide telescope on Professor Goodman's computer. We have to... Oh, so we have to go back. Okay, to go okay, back. let's go. Go to Professor's computer. The butterflies are going into the museum. Mm -hmm. Wolfman, man. Why to be brave? Mm -hmm. 
I think we're looking for a clue. Check in the seat. Wait, I found something. A clue? It says microwave on it. Oh, I found another one. What another clue? It says radio. I got another one. I this see one another one. Visible light. Oh, and another one. I've got three, Brian. Oh, and here's another one. X-ray. Look, gamma ray person's pictures on all of them. I think that's it. Wow, he is really full of himself. All right, so let's try and put them in order from least amount of energy to greatest amount of energy. So the first is radio. Then it's microwave. Radio, microwave. Infrared, visible light, um, ultraviolet light. Infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light. X-ray and gamma ray. X-ray, gamma ray. This makes no sense. Blank. Maybe use the light? Yeah, let's use our towers. Of course. Use your butterfly ultraviolet light vision. Oh, look. Oh, awesome. There's letters. Well, that's pretty cool. The ink on those boards turns their UV light into visible light. Ultraviolet light has more energy than visible light. Not, not strong, strong enough. enough. Ultraviolet light is not strong enough. Fifth coordinate is zero. The fifth coordinate is zero, zero. Now check the worldwide telescope. What is the Worldwide Telescope? I will call them. Hello? One of my team. Hey. The Worldwide Telescope is a computer program. Oh, it is? Go to Professor Goodman's computer. We just learned this from the Incredible Hawks crew. Okay. Quickly, go. Bye. Don't forget your antenna. Come on, your hair. You have to wear the costume. Here come the pit viper snakes. Jingling, jangling. Uh-oh. Ah! Your tail there. I'm stuck in the door. Liza, we can do this. We're superheroes. Oh, it's the power thing. I'll go up. Help me pull it. Nice going, superhero. We're looking for clues. Amen. You might want to look down the hall. Oh. Uh, no. Nope. Hello. Nothing there. Oh, it's like in here. There. Go ahead, look for G. 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 Yeah, I got it. Yes. Yes, they have found something. X-rays have more energy than ultraviolet light, but they're still something stronger. Even X-rays are not strong enough. The last coordinates, something I should look into. Or maybe I should look into something. Look into something. An x-ray. So at the ice cream place, we found this in like the chicken thing. Yeah. So this was definitely there for a reason. We must have to x-ray it. Do one of you know how you use an x-ray machine? Is there an x-ray technician in the house? I do. Okay, come on down, I'll show you. This is the x-ray machine. What do you need to x-ray? This. You're gonna put an x-ray film on the bracket table and then put the image that needs to be taken on top of it. Then we all have to go out of the room because we don't want to absorb the radiation that we're gonna expose. And now we're gonna expose the x-ray and so we press this button right here. Okay. That's and it? now we'll go develop it. And it takes about five minutes to develop it. Thank you, Hey, I have your x-ray image. Here it is. Okay, so it says 55. 55. 50. Which is last coordinate. Then I'll check out the Worldwide Telescope on Professor Goodman's computer. We have to go back and give the coordinates to Professor Goodman. Let's go. go back. All right, let's see. Yeah. They're so close to stopping gamma wave person. Only one more type of radiation to go, and it's the most dangerous gamma waves. Here comes the Viper team, followed by the Butterfly team and the Hawk team. They arrive simultaneously. It's perfect television. The lesson, Goodman. This looks like the right place. Whoa. Worldwide Tele Telescope. The Worldwide Telescope. They've made it. Let's put in our okay. coordinates. We only got the first two. We have the last two. We have the middle. Okay, oh, so we, we can just all get it. All right. They have all the coordinates, nephew. All right. Okay, so, so under RA, 0, 05. 05. 34. 34. We are 33. 33. Okay, then for DEC, 22. 22. We have zero with two zeros. Zero, zero. And we have 55. 55. Go. Go. Oh, so and we're going in. Close. Wow. And wow, what is that? This is Ralph, I think we did it. Wait, this is GR. Gamma Ray person! Quick at it, quick at it! The Crab Nebula. This is the location of a star that exploded long ago. The Crab Nebula sends out gamma rays! It sends out gamma rays. Gamma radiation has the highest energy in the electromagnetic spectrum. Perfect! <laughs> Perfect for what? Oh no, who are you? Who am I? You don't recognize me? No, no, no. Should I? Let me take off this welding mask. It's scruff. Oh, 
That stands for Grandma Rothman. What did you think it stood for? Gary! My great grandma, an evil criminal mastermind. <laughs> criminal mastermind? Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm using the gamma rays to make a gamma ray oven. What? An oven? What? So I can defrost things like turkey. We got okay. these whole costume so you can bake stuff in your oven? Yeah. Don't yell at me. This is my nephew's challenge. Glenn. Bye, dears. Bye. All right, guys, we solved the mystery, but it was just a misunderstanding, so let's head back to Studio D. All right. Bye, Rob. Right. Bye, Bye, Rob. See you Bye. there. Well, I, I quite just about it. Flapping back to Studio G at the speed of light. The indestructible butterflies! Bethany and Brian, hey! Using their snake powers in the name of good, the oh, pit viper twins, Liza and Sterling! Hey, guys! Hey, right. Flying back to Studio G. Hey, guys! Hey, guys! A.K.A. Isaac and Talia! Hello, dear! Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Now, wait a minute, Grandma. How'd you learn to build a giant gamma ray machine? Oh, well, I had some time on my hands, so I took a night course at the Canine Institute. But enough about me. Are you gonna just stand there, or are you gonna award your fetchy some nice points? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Some points. We'll start with the Pit Viper Twins. Yeah! <laughs> Using your infrared vision, you found the missing puzzle piece. And employing X-ray vision, the final coordinates yielded themselves up to you! Yeah. Liza and Sterling, you're getting 85 points! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Brian and Bethany. Microwave bowl. You used a microwave to find your clue. Oh, and how do you use UV light without getting burned? By being indestructible butterflies. 85 points. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. On to the incredible hawks. We should probably use our hawk amazing abilities. For finding the right frequency and using your superior vision to scope out the solution. 85 points. Nice. Is that all the points a superhero dog can give? No. What time is it? Bonus points! Today's five bonus points goes to the contestant who practiced what all of us folks with tails were taught when we were young. Got your tail stuck in a door? Stay calm and you won't be sore. We can do this. We're superheroes. Liza, with 90 points, you're today's day. Yeah. Well, nice, Liza. Now, Liza, dear, I have here two chicken sandwiches. One chicken sandwich has mayonnaise and lettuce on nice rye bread. The other is on whole wheat. So what will it be, dear? Sandwich A or sandwich B? A. Fantastic. Okay, Liza, your prize is in the mailbox. Whoa, Whoa what is that? It's a box. It's a sandwich! I told you. <laughs> and if you're hungry after that one, of course, you can have the other one too, dear. Thank you. Well, Fetchers. That's the end of another exciting episode of Fetch with Ruff Ruff Man. I am Ruff Ruff Man Man. See you next Bye. time. Bye, Ruff. Nice, Ruff. Way to go, Ruff. Beautiful fly. Beautiful You need to practice that, You got to get out of these tights. Thanks for the chicken sandwich, Grandma. Glad to hear you're not a criminal mastermind. Oh, that was just silly. Grandma, you're not building a titanium suit of arms? Oh, no, it's just a little something I threw together. Some rocket thrusters in the feet, and I'm powering it all with a mini iridium reactor. I have to go buy some raisins at the store, and it's so hot I didn't want to walk. You built all that for raisins? Can't make oatmeal raisin cookies without them. Well, man, man, can we believe her? Doesn't matter. She makes a mean chicken sandwich. These people sent letters by Pony Express? Yep, they wrote right on the pony. Howdy, Tom. Well, shucks, what a nice letter. It was really convenient. And now you can have the same convenience sending a letter across the Atlantic with my new crustationery. That's right. Write your letter directly on our trained crustaceans like this little crab here. And ow, yikes, okay, let go, that hurts it us. It'll follow the tube right to the Atlantic, where it'll be delivered to its final destination. For long letters, lobster. And for short notes, shrimp. Crustationery, the new hip way to communicate. <gasps> My first letter. Ooh, an Alaskan king crab. Excellent selection from Blossom. Dear Ruff, below the 112 reasons why crustationery is your worst idea ever. Blossom, it is a great idea. But would you mind getting your letter off my tail? It kind of hurts. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. 
pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Ah, oh, Chet, that's seven plane. I'll cut you off. And here come the contestants now. He enjoys kayaking. That's when you chop a board in half while shouting, Kayak! No? Oh, yeah, it's like canoeing. Brian! She likes to swim, but hates getting water in her ears. Talia! He can fold his tongue in the front and both sides simultaneously. Sterling! She loves playing water basketball. Liza! She admires the French for the way they handle pollution. Louis Bethany! He wishes he had the power to make copies of himself so he could be in four places at once. It's Isaac, 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 and Isaac! Who's sitting pretty and who needs a booster seat? Let's check the scores and find out. Brian in sixth place with 705 points. Bethany in fifth with 782 and a half. Talia in fourth with 790. Liza in third with 815. Isaac in second with 842 and a half. And Sterling still in first with 877 and a half points. Hello and welcome to the most exciting postal delivery service and reality game show in the world. Yeah, yeah delivery nice. service. What? Yes, you heard right. Any of you guys have uh, have the email? Have the email? Yeah, yeah. yeah email, email. And it never works, right? Never works at all. It never works. Mine works. I love email. I, oh. I, I personally I get plenty hate email. email. Well, I guess maybe it's just mine. Well, anyway, uh, hypothetically speaking. Let's say it's your grandmother's birthday. Do you send her an email or do you mail her an actual birthday card? Actually, an email card. Okay, okay, so the majority of you would go with card. Now, instead of a birthday card, don't you think your grandmother would actually prefer a live handwritten crab? No. no. Look, I also have lobsters and shrimp. This is Ruff Ruffman's crustaceanary. Get it? Yeah, I don't. No, no, no. Oh, hey, I Blossom. Blossom. Yes, Blossom. You already told me Blossom thinks it's the worst idea ever. I don't think it's the worst idea ever. I just wouldn't be happy opening a mailbox to a crab. I love yeah. the idea, Ruff. If you idea. sent someone a lobster, then they could eat it. Would you and like they'd be happy. Free lobster. But what if they're yeah, vegetarian? Right, yeah. See? Uh, yeah. Okay. What do you usually do with a card when you get it? We put it over the fireplace in And my then house. what happens? Then, then, then you it's right out. Warm. Now, I send you a crab. You're getting the happy birthday experience. And then you know what? Lunch. Look, I'm telling you, this idea of mine is gold. Blossom solid gold. I just got to work out the kinks. That's all. So that brings us to today's two challenges. Challenge number one. Tell you. Oh. Now, if I were just talking about regular stationery, Talia, I'd be sending you right now to the paper store, but if I were talking about regular stationery, I wouldn't be Ruff Ruffman, business dog extraordinaire. You need to find J-Rod and Captain Wayne. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go fetch! All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Now then, challenge number two. My crustaceanary business relies upon two things. One, crustaceans. Tally is taking care of those. And two, a method of delivery. Now, crustaceans aren't so good out of the water. And that's where this race car comes in. The crustaceanary will be delivered by a race car. What do you think of that, Blossom? Eh. Anyway, Brian, Bethany, Isaac, you're gonna learn how to put the pedal to the metal. Tom here is the man with the speed mobiles. So look for him. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Woo. Nice, guys. Awesome. <laughs> 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 thanks. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye, guys. As determined by the Vets 3000, Liza and Sterling have stayed behind in the studio today, but they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale, so... For the four contestants out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's catch up to Bethany, Isaac, and Brian. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Hey, are you Tom? I'm Isaac. Welcome to F1 Hello. Boston. Bethany. Good morning, Isaac. Bethany. I'm Brian. Brian, nice to meet all of you. Today, your challenge is to become race car drivers. <gasps> well, I believe I'm going to enjoy this challenge. Let's head on down to the track. Okay, okay let's go. Whoa, that is some serious speed. This is Whoa. the track you will be racing on. Oh, that is so cool! We get out of time! Go, Speed Racer! Before we get you guys out there, we're gonna have to take some driver's ed. Are you with me? Driver's ed? I don't need a... Ah! Oh, okay. 
Maybe I should take a driving class. A driver has to maintain control of their vehicle at all times and also abide by the lights and flags at all times. Let's have a seat. Once the green flag is in the air, the race is underway. During the race, if the yellow flag does come back up, one of you has possibly spun up, maybe falling into an accident, possibly wedged up against a wall. What? Wait, what? With the red flag, it's a more serious situation on the track. There's something more serious than that? When you see this flag and you cross over the start finish line, you have entered into the last lap of the race. When the checkered flag is in the air, you have finished the race itself. All right, white flag means one lap to go. Checkered flag means the race is over. Green means go. Oh, oh. Okay, let's check in on Talia. Chad, can you get me out from under here, buddy? Hi, are you Captain Wayne? No, I'm J-Rod, but I can take you to Captain Wayne. Nice to meet you. Take us to your captain. Oh, are you excited about the boat ride? Yeah. This is the bow. That'd be the front. Bow to the front? And then the back, we call that the stern. The very stern back. <laughs> the right would be the starboard. Starboard right. And the left would be the port. Left is the port. Good. Where's the shrimp? Usually there's dolphins right up here. Ooh, dolphins! Did they actually come up to the boat? Yeah, they're friendly. The sharks? No, you never really see sharks. That's good, because I'm scared of sharks. Oh, all right. Oh, now they're moving. Oh, my gosh! There are dolphins over there. Really? Calvin, buddy, are you out there? It's me, Rob, remember? We're like right next to the ship. Focus, Talia, focus. We're looking for crustacean couriers, not cute sea mammals. We'll have time to say hi to the dolphins later. Are you Calvin Wayne? Yes, I am. Are you Talia? I got you some gloves and some boots. Thank you. You're gonna be my deckhand for today. Okay, cool. We put these on. Aren't these cool? Talia's gonna be a deckhand on a real shrimp right boat. Now. She'll be catching me lots of shrimp. I'm gonna say a pound. How do nuts catch the shrimp? Those big boards out there, they're called troll boards. They ride right on the bottom. When your water pressure pulls them, they spread away from each other. And then the chain pulls it on the bottom and it makes the shrimp jump into the net and scoops them up. They, wait, they jump into the net? Oh, this is gonna be so easy! Blossom, I am waiting for your apology. See how the water pressure holds them apart, makes it spread open? Oh, how long do the nuts have to stay in the water for? It depends on how many shrimp is down there. But they get filled up. Sometimes an hour, sometimes four hours. We have a little test net over here that we pull up every now and then that tells you what you're catching. Ah, uh, Chet, how we doing with my race car, buddy? Yes, you fixed it! <laughs> Oh, Chad, I need you again. <laughs> Bring your wrench. Just so we're all on the same page, I want you to get comfortable with your situation before you're actually out on the track. Do any of you guys know what friction yeah. is? Yeah, it's when um, two things rub against each other. It's the force when two objects rub against each other. Why don't you try to push this cart sideways? No, it doesn't push sideways. Can you imagine how much force it's going to take in order for you to start sliding sideways? Ah, they can't push it because there's too much friction between the wheels and the road. In this case, you've got the tires as you try to turn pushing in one direction, and you've got the track trying to push them in the opposite direction. You ready to get suited up? Try it out? Sure. Right. Let's go. Do it. No. Oh, look at these awesome outfits. That's totally sweet. Let's roll them out. And off they go. And oops, oh, they've already bumped into each other. Oh, boy. Not really moving very fast. So they're gonna take it easy their first time around the track. Go nice and slow. Okay, let me try that. All right, they're pulling over, and I'll just pull over. And I just lost two wheels. Chad! We're gonna pick the nets up. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do this, Talia. Oh, I can see the business booming now. Dear Grandma, I am currently writing you on my crustaceanary. It is my new business. I'd like to finish this letter, but a crab currently has my left paw in a death grip. Stay away from that one. Ew. Okay, Talia, what I want you to do is sit on this stool right here. Ew. Oh, you pull them until you like this. That's what they look like fresh out of the ocean? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, aren't they great? <laughs> Can't wait to write on that. Ralph, this is so gross. Ew, look at this. Oh, I don't want to touch it. I'm sorry, Talia, but you've got to touch it. I need you to bring back a pound of shrimp. <laughs> How many shrimp make up a pound? These big shrimp like this are 16 20 to a pound. Brown shrimp are like uh, about 40 to a pound. Oh, wow, that's a lot of shrimp. Having a pound of shrimp. No, Blossom, I still think this is a good idea, thank you. People will love writing on those. 
So you guys did an excellent job out there for your first time. I think what we need to move into now is improving your cornering. Yes, we need more speed. So if you're in a car traveling on the road with mom or dad, and they decide to take a left-hand turn, do you think, A, your body's going to get thrown to the left, B, your body's going to get thrown to the right, or C, your body's not getting thrown? I think it would definitely be B. Isaac thinks it's B. Car turns left, body thrown right. The correct answer is actually C. It's C? Your body doesn't get thrown at all? Because the vehicle is moving off to the left, your body wants to go straight, making it feel like your body's getting thrown to the right. Ah, when you're in a car and make a sharp turn, your body's still trying to go straight. Then all of a sudden your body's like, whoa, where are we going? Oh, okay. If the car keeps on wanting to go straight, then why does it turn? Like, what makes it turn? The tires are pushing one way as the road surface pushes back against them. It's the friction of the tires against the road that makes the car turn, Blossom? That's why your car keeps sliding forward when you're sliding on ice? Because there's not enough friction to turn the car? Does anybody know what a racing line is? No. The <laughs> racing line is the ideal, fastest way around any race course. A racing line is how to carry more speed. If you're going high speed into a tighter turn, you will likely skid out. So what you're saying is the tires do not provide enough friction to take the turn? Correct. Aha! Uh -huh. The faster you go and the tighter you make a turn, the more force you need to make the turn. If there's not enough friction between the tires and the road, you could spin out. Now let me show you what I think is the fastest way around the course. Setting up outside of a turn, coming across the center of the turn, you'll be able to maintain more speed. In a race car, Less turning means more speed. If you drive through the curve straighter, like Tom drew, you can go faster. And more speed means quicker delivery of my crustaceanary. Dad, how's the car coming? Ah, uh, there are no wheels. I, I can't drive without wheels. They're going a little bit faster now. Get over a while, Brian! Hey! Whoa, Isaac! Ooh, you took that turn a little wide. Don't forget about the racing line, Fetchers. Wow, they're getting faster. There's the checkered flag. It's the end of the race, but the start of the halftime quiz show. <laughs> We're here with the lovely Liza and the handsome Sterling. Oh, very true. You two ready to earn some yes. points of your own? Let's brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. Work together as a team. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. If you don't know the answer, you may skip. You ready? Yes. yes. Then let the quiz begin. What color flag is used in kart racing to signal that it's the last lap? The um, white, white flag. Yes. True or false? The shrimp boat captain's name is Shane. False. False. Good. Yes. What force prevents a race car from spinning out during a tight turn? Friction. Yes. What do the trawl boards on a shrimp boat do? They um, open and close to capture the shrimp. Yes, good job! Which part of a boat does port refer to? R left yeah. side. Which side? Left side. Left. Left, yes? Good. Okay. The ideal path through a race course is called what? The um, race line. Good enough. Which of these images shows the ideal path of a race car through a curve? A. No, no, B, 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 B. No, A. No, A. Final answer is which? A. You gonna go with A? Yeah. Good. Ten seconds. How many brown shrimp does it take to make a pound? Um, um, 40. 40, 40, 40. Oh, 40. 40, yes. How do Captain Wayne and his crew tell if the shrimp nets are full? Um, they have a test net. Yes. Oh, we're out of time. Fetch 3000, how did we do? You heard nine questions and got all nine right. That's 45 yeah. points. Yeah. Excellent That's work, awesome. you two. So, will Talia get the hang of shrimping? Or will she just buy a bottle of cocktail sauce and call it a day? I know what I would do. I did it! You did it, look. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe people eat these. Did you eat lobster? No, I tried. What do you eat? Chicken. Chicken? Shrimp tastes like chicken. Does it? <laughs> well, it certainly doesn't look like chicken. Well, this is a shrimp mantis. A shrimp mantis? It's like a praying mantis, the bug. Yeah. yeah. You ever seen a praying mantis, the bug? Yeah. Is it that one alive? Yeah, he's alive. We're going to throw can him I back. Can I hold it? Can throw him back. I can throw it back. Look at this cutie pie rug. Oh, that little guy doesn't look old enough to work okay, yet. Okay, nothing. Yay, we get to throw it back. Cutie pie. Freedom! Go, go live a long and fruitful life. You go and be free and be eaten by a thousand pelicans. Uh oh. Oh, he bit me. Look at there. Uh oh. He's Does a mean one. Yeah. I'll throw the crab back. Oh, the crabs can pinch you. Well, those can be for complaint letters. Oh, hi there, Crabby. I'll name it Ruffy Doodle. Don't name him. That could be another important letter. Don't get attached. Are you guys ready to find out how well you did? Yes. Okay. 
Now, Bethany, even though you did finish in third place, you're capable of doing a fast lap time if you enter in the turns correctly and come out of the turns correctly as well. Okay? I can do it. Now, Isaac, second place, Isaac, on the bottom down here, your very last lap time you did was a 20.059. Brian, your fastest lap was a 19.019. Wow. And you finished in first place. I'm ready to head over to track one. Try a new track. Wait, we're going to the track oh, over there. Oh, we're going to that track right over there. Oh. Wait no. a minute, you're going to the bigger That's... track? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> They're stepping it up. Heading for track one. Oh, and my race car's fixed. Yes. Okay, here we go. Sir, <laughs> help me get this steering wheel out of my mouth. I'm icing the shrimp down so they don't spoil. Got to keep them fresh. You don't want to use my crustacean area if it isn't fresh. How much shrimp do you bring in a day? We hope to get a thousand pounds by the end of the day. A thousand pounds? A thousand, a thousand pounds? pounds? That's like half a ton. You could write a novel on that. Six days a week. How many tons is that a, day, a week? That would be three tons of shrimp in a good week. That sounds right to me. You're pretty good at math. Thank you. This is a ribbon fish. Oh, that's 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 ugly. Look at this tea. He's bad. That was like Don't sharp. Oh, what is that? Spider crab. I don't know. Spider anything. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Oh my gosh. What is that? Uh, I've seen it before. Horseshoe crab. Looks Horseshoe. like Darth Vader's face with a million legs coming out of it. I cannot believe you're holding that, Talia. I let him go. Go and find yourself a beautiful, I don't know, horseshoe crab wife. Why? Dolphin right there. He's looking, he's looking right at you. is throwing the dolphin some fish on porpoise. <laughs> I get it. What? It's not a porpoise? Oh man, that joke would have been funny. Look at this raft. It's a big white shrimp. Okay, I just need two more to make a pound. It's actually not as bad as it looks. I thought it would be gross, but it's not. Well, there we go. I got a pound. You got a pound? I got a pound, Ralph. Okay. Perfect. That's exactly what I need, Talia. Well, did you have a good time today? Yep. Well, these are uh, sunglasses that we caught yesterday in the net, and I signed it for you. So Thank you. We'll remember where they came from. Oh, cool. This is awesome, Ralph. The next time I need a deck, I'm going to call you, okay? All right. All right. Thank you very much. See you back at Studio G. And Talia's racing to Studio G with a pound of shrimp, and we're racing to the racetrack for the final race. And, uh, uh wait a minute, Chad. Actually, I'm, I'm not, not racing at all here. Did you do something in my car? I can walk faster than this. Now it's... Let's do it, Fetchers. I like this challenge. Now your skills will be properly tested. And off they go! Oh, Bethany, get it done! Uh, Brian, you took that curve a little tight. Might slow you down a bit. Great racing line, Bethany! Final tally is in, and in the first position we have Brian. Guy's a natural racer. Whose total time on the track was four minutes and 30 seconds. Bethany was in second place. Good improvement. Scored with a total time of four minutes and 36.9 seconds. And Isaac was scored in third with a total time of four minutes and 39 seconds. All very close, all very close. So close. Thank you so much, Tom. You rule. Yeah, was thank thank you. that was, that thank was you guys. cool to do this. Thanks. See you next to you, Drive safe. Bye. Thank you. Now let's welcome back our contestants. Yeah. Racing back to Studio G at a velocity that would rip the ink right off a note written on a crustacean. Ooh, yeah, Bethany, okay. Isaac, and Brian. Hey, guys. Yeah. Wow. You guys look awesome. Yeah. Look at yeah. these outfits. Thanks. She didn't skimp on the shrimp or was selfish with the shellfish. And don't ask me to say that again. So come on back, Talia. Yeah, Talia. Oh, Talia. Hey, Talia. Hey, 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 what's that? Shrimp. I got your crustacean.
stationary material. Nice. Oh, awesome! Would you please tell you to place those in the mailbox and I will use them immediately. That is deliciously good for my stationery. Yes. <laughs> well, let's cast our net and see if we can haul up some points. Yeah! Isaac, Bethany, and Brian, your enthusiasm and bravery for suiting up and burning rubber would have made any NASCAR driver proud, and it's made you 30 points! Nice. And then what did you do? You set out to go even faster! You didn't break the go-kart speed record, but for successfully analyzing your performance and improving your times, another 45 points! Nice. Nice. For a total of 75 points! Nice. <laughs> Nicely done. Now, Talia. A lot of things live in the Atlantic Ocean, but you stayed focused on the shrimp. You helped Captain Wayne, and the haul was good enough for 70 points. Nice. And for demonstrating nimble math skills, computing the captain's weekly catch, another 10 points. Nice. For a total of 80 points. But is that all the points a dog can give? No. Yar, what time is it? Bonus points. Yes, and today's 10 bonus points go to the contestant who improved her driving the most during the challenge. That's 10 points to Bethany, which means... Bethany, with 85 points, you're today's daily winner. Yeah! Yes, go, people! Now then, Bethany, I have here two identical dishes. Shrimp a la carte. <laughs> Under one shrimp and a cart, a wonderful prize. Under the other, a prize that's just as wonderful if you remove the one and the full. It's kind of a... I dare. <laughs> I don't get it either. So, which will it be? Shrimp a la carte A or shrimp a la carte B? B. B. Well, B for Bethany. B. 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 B for Bethany. All right, Bethany, your prize is in the mailbox. Go get it. Such a go What? Well, yeah. Bethany, that was the dirt prize. You could have won your own race car. Now Chet here thinks it's his. Chet, Chet, how are you even driving that thing? Chet, Chet, don't! No! Oh! Ooh, rough. Uh, okay. I gotta go. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye. Happy shrimping! Bye! Bye! bye. bye. This is so exciting! I'm delivering my first official crustaceanary, a postcard shrimp to my pen pal Paolo in Portugal. I wrote him a nice note. I... Wait a minute. Where's the shrimp? He was here just a second ago! Chet! Blossom! Oh! I'll check Studio G. Oh, hey, Tank! Do you see any shrimp around Studio G? <gasps> Tank! Is that cocktail sauce on your muzzle? You know, the only flaw with crustaceanary is it's just too tasty. <laughs> Do you know who has a birthday tomorrow? The most wonderful poodle in the universe, Charlene. I have to buy her the perfect birthday gift, and I can't think of anything. The way to her heart is to make the gift, not buy it. Not a bad suggestion, Blossom. You didn't suggest anything? Wait, you just said... Brussels sprout cookies. Brussels sprout cookies? A vegetable she does not like transformed into something she loves. Tell me you just said Brussels sprout cookies. No? <laughs> Chad, buddy! You just said Brussels sprout cookies, right? You, Ruff, are like a big orange Brussels sprout to her. Something she does not like. And yet, you can be sweet company after a nutritious lunch. Um, okay. Dogs have good hearing, right? <laughs> so I'm just hearing something from far away. But how to bring the Brussels sprout and cookie into harmony? For she is a delicate flower that will wilt if the vegetable clashes with the sugary treat. I finally lost my mind thinking about Charlene. <laughs> yep, that sums it up. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Can somebody tell me what happened in the singing cat? Here 
Here come the contestants now! He once sold magazines door to door! Isaac! She loves tofu! When it's miles away from her, Liza! He once accidentally ate shampoo! Well, he now has the cleanest esophagus in town! Sterling! She's interested in botany, the study of plants! Bethany! He once had to perform a play in his boxers! Brian! She likes washing her hands! Are they clean now? Talia! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in sixth with 780 points. Liza has dropped all the way to fifth with 860. Bethany up to fourth with 867 and a half. Talia up to third with 870. Isaac still in second with 917 and a half. And Sterling still in first with 922 and a half points. Hi, guys! Hi! No, no, no. Flatter them. Tell them they look particularly good today. You guys look good today. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. With more feeling. Okay, did you guys hear that? No. no. Hear what? what? You didn't hear a voice. What, what are you yeah. talking about, Russ? Yeah. What? I, yeah, I don't know. On? I've been under a lot of stress lately. I have trouble talking to Charlene, the poodle next door. Talk is cheap. You will woo her with vegetable dessert. Stop saying that! <laughs> we didn't say no, that. No, no, not you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to the... You know what? Never mind. I'm just kidding. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. yeah. 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 Why don't we get to challenge number one, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I need a doctor. Here, go find Dr. Kimar. He's a doctor that'll make this voice I'm hearing go away. Voice? I do not hear any voice. Isaac, Liza, your instructions are in the mailbox, so go back. Doctor. Yes. <laughs> make sure he's covered by my insurance. Now, the thing is, this voice, well, it's been giving me advice about how to woo Charlene. Really? What did it say? Look, if you don't make her cookies, then write her poetry. No, uh, try that in season two. That didn't work. What? What didn't work? Take her mother out to lunch. Nah, it was uh, season three also. You what happened in season three? What's going on? Fine, we'll do it. Okay, guys, challenge number two. Cookies. In Charlene's mind, I am like a yucky vegetable. You need to change her mind about vegetables so she'll change her mind about me. Do the power of cookies. Brian, Sterling, everything you need to know cool. is in that mailbox, so go fetch Cookies, yes. Yes, cookies. Uh, zero, five. Bye, guys. Good luck. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Talia and Bethany have stayed behind in the studio, but they'll be eligible to win points during the Halftime Quiz Show. And not only is the Fetch Fairness Guarantee still in effect, hey, it's in sparkly lights! Yay! Wow, that's awesome! All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. For the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points, and my sanity are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's zip on over to Isaac and Liza. You yell a lot. Leave me alone! Do you know Dr. Kimar? I can page Dr. Kimar. Dr. Kimar, please report to the lobby. You can wait for Dr. Kimar right by the elevators. Thank, Thank you. you. What is that? What is what? Ah! What is that? He's only a dummy. Oh, that's so creepy. No need to scream like a baby. Hi, guys. Hi. My name is Eric. I'm one of the audiologists here at the hospital. Ah, an audiologist. Awesome, what does that mean? Oh, he studies hearing. You've met Dr. Kimar. He's actually a mannequin. His name stands for Knowles Electronics Mannequin for Acoustic Research. More like Knowles Electronics Mannequin for freaking my fetchers out. He's a mannequin that helps us study sound. When the sound comes in his ears, but it actually sends sound to a meter that we can measure, and then we use those numbers. A medical instrument in the shape of a bald man. Huh. Okay, here come Brian All and right, Sterling. So go to a park and ask people which vegetable they like the least. Let's well, oh, here. Oh, there's stuff over there. Yeah. And there we go. Nice and organized. Let's interview each other first. I like broccoli the least. I dislike radishes. Okay, so we have one for broccoli, one for radishes. What is your least favorite vegetable? Green beans. Cooked carrots. Spinach? Spinach. Whoa, spinach is on a run! Con on the clock. Rutabaga. Kale? How do you spell that? K-A-L-E. Spinach. Spinach. How about you guys? What is your least favorite veggie table? This dog is more interested in being scratched. I think he said spinach. <laughs> All right, Sterling, what was the total tally? Spinach won with six votes. Oh, I think it's rough. Hello? Hey, Sterling, you guys are doing great interviews. You're better than Oprah. 
So, uh, what did you find out? Uh, we found that a lot of people don't like spinach. Okay, spinach, unpopular. Like I am to Charlene. So you need to make people like spinach in the form of a cookie. I want you both to go to the store and pick up five bags of fresh spinach. Five bags of fresh spinach. Then, I want you to go see my friend Marissa over at Dancing Deer. She'll know what to do. All right, let's hop! And I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Halpin. Nice to meet you. Thanks He's for another coming another audiologist. Yeah. Today we kind of talk a little bit about sound and how it works. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, sound starts as a vibration. Yeah, well, lately sound starts as a Latin voice in my head. Shh, rough, please. I want to hear this. So when, like, I hit the table, you can hear it and it's a vibration. And then it sends vibration waves. When you make a sound, the particles of air clump together and we call that compression and they pull apart alternately called rarefaction so the vibration is actually alternating compression rarefaction compression rarefaction so sounds are just vibrating air and that is what we call a sound wave that's a funny looking wave it's not like an ocean wave at all so how do you know when sounds get like louder or softer the air po particles compress together and for a soft sound they compress a little bit but for a very loud sound, there's a lot of pressure. The more the air particles compress in a sound wave, the louder it sounds. Now we take that wave and we make it into one number with the help of Dr. Kimar. In his ear, there's a microphone. It puts together all the sound wave variations in a unit called decibels, or dB. So the louder the sounds, the higher up the number is. Let's put on a sound to listen to. What's it read now? About 70. Let's make it a little bit louder. That's louder. 80. Let's make it soft. 60. And that's how we measure the sound. You know, all this talk about decibels is giving me an idea. I need to go somewhere that's so loud it will drown out the voice I'm hearing. And the fetchers can help me find the loudest place in the city. But before we do that, let's check in with Brian and Sterling. Oh, look, there's some green stuff. Where's the spinach? I'm open. A new sport, spinach football. Hey, okay, five bags of spinach. Hopefully they were on sale. Let's go. Let's go. We're out. I we have five bags of speech, and now we have to meet Marissa. Hi, are you Marissa? I am. Welcome to Dancing Deer. Thanks. It's Dancing Deer Bakery. They make my favorite cookies. Next to Grandma's. Okay, before you can enter the test kitchen, we need to wear hairnets. All right, ref, sent over some special aprons. Dancing dog. Well, that's more accurate because I am a dog who loves to dance. <laughs> Hoo, ha, check out the moves. Today, we're going to make spinach cookies. What? Of course, Sterling. We're turning spinach, which many people don't like, into cookies, which everyone loves. Because a voice in my head said this is a good idea. Hey. So Ruff has sent Dr. Kimar your next challenge. And a nice hat. It's a map of several locations around the hospital. And Ruff would like you to go to those locations using Dr. Kimar to measure the decibels. Liz roll. The lobby. So now we need to measure... Take a how reading. Loud it is. All right, Dr. Kimar, you're on. 56. 56 in the lobby, that's nice and pleasant. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is wash our star ingredient. Ryan, if you could go over, work with my friend Milton over there and rinse off the spinach. Sterling and I are going to get started with the dough. You'll put the butter into the, the mixing bowl. That's a good mixer. And add all the sugar. Mm, yummy. The eggs. Bro, does this look good to you? It does! We're on the right track. Slowly pour the dry ingredients. Mm, those cookies look delicious. Rough, rough men and weird, mysterious voice here in Studio G with Bethany and Talia. Well, what do we do now? Well, now, uh, what we're going to do is have the halftime quiz show. Yeah. Ah, yes, you mentioned this earlier. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. Are you ladies ready? Yeah. Then, let the quiz begin. Dr. Halpin is what kind of doctor? An audiologist. Yes, what is Sterling's least favorite vegetable? Uh, broccoli. No, fill in the blank. Sound travels through the air as a pattern of compressions and blank. That's it. Yes, here are pictures of two sound waves traveling through air, which would sound louder. Yes. The loudness of a sound is measured in units called what? Decibels. Yes. How loud was the sound Isaac and Liza measured in the hospital lobby? 54 decibels. No. Spell kale. Kale? K-L-E. K-L-E. K-A-L-E. Final answer? K-A-L-E. Yes. Kimar stands for Knowles Electronics Mannequin for Acoustic What? Research. Yes. How many bags of fresh spinach are Brian and Sterling instructed to buy? Yes. Oh, we are out of time. Wow. That was exciting. 
What do they win? A car? No, they don't win a car. I wish. So, let's go over the ones you missed. What is Sterling's least favorite vegetable? I dislike radishes. Radishes. Uh -huh. Also, how loud does he sound? Isaac and Liza measured in the hospital lobby. You were close. You said 54. The answer is 56 decibels. Oh, you were right. So, we tallied up. What'd you get? Seven correct answers. 35 points. Yeah. Good score, ladies. Moving right along. Have Isaac and Liza come to any sound conclusions? <laughs> Your jokes are just not that funny. Well, let's tune in and find out. So, what do you think out of all of the locations is gonna be the loudest? The construction site or the subway underpass? I think that too. What do you think is gonna be the quietest? Quietest? Mm. A stone bench. Okay, we have a subway underpass. Okay, now let's wait for a train. Let's see what we it got. like 93. 93, much louder than the lobby. Okay, now we have to get to the middle of the footbridge. There we go. 79, okay. 79. So now we're headed to a covered bench. Oh, it's one up there. It's a bench that's covered. Yes, there's a okay, cover so above it. Let's get a reading. Which is about 70. 70. Okay. The stone bench looks like about 66. I think it's because we're a lot farther away from all of the cars. Do you see anything we might use as a wild card? Mm, they have two wild cards now for unexpected noise. Oh, oh helicopter, dude. It's a helicopter wild card. That was like 80. I'm thinking that the optimal amount of spinach is five ounces. Sterling, I understand that you've never tried spinach. I may want to try a leaf. He's eating spinach for the first time, folks. Want to spit it out? And I can see it. <clears throat> it just tastes bad. Spinach industry is not going to be happy about this one. Give this a good mix. Now we're mixing the spinach and the cookie dough. Milton happens to be the expert on the scooping technique. Oh, look at that scoop. Okay, you try now. Let's see how Sterling does. Yep. Fantastic! Sterling, you're a natural! That boy can scoop. So these cookies will go in for about eight minutes. Fire engine four. Wow! Deafening and yet I want to chase it. Wow, that was really loud. That was our highest reading. 129. Here's the uh, construction site. Now it's around 78, 80. So I will put 79. Okay, the cookies are ready. Wow, they smell good. Smells good. That's the first step. One. Two, two, three. Please like it, please like it, please like it. I'm good. I'm now going to taste of uh, spinach. Uh-oh. Gross. Maybe spinach is not the way to go. Spinach is the way to Charlene's heart. We still need another wild card. So wanna just kind of hang out? So without us talking, it's 50. All right, 50 in the elevator. All right, well, how did it go? It went pretty well. We got that the elevator with no talking was the quietest at 50. And then the loudest was the uh, fire engine at 129. That is perfect. I'll just hang out by the fire station and the noise from the sirens will drown out this voice I'm hearing. What's that, Blossom? Sounds above 85 decibels can cause permanent hearing loss? I better come up with something else to get rid of this voice. What can we change with this batch? Cooking it or sauteing it? We can absolutely try sauteing the spinach in some butter, maybe with some spices. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Okay, so three spices. This is the recipe for love. Okay, we're ready to start mixing batch number two. Oh, I smell it. That looks pretty good. We have one more addition that we can add. Oh, Ooh, nice. White chocolate chips. While I scoop this last batch, why don't you guys come up with a name? Oh, the Ruffles Delight. Yeah, the Ruffles Delight. Oh, I like it, Brian. Nicely done. So, guys, after this whole process, is spinach that bad? Compared to the other ingredients we had this morning, I think spinach would probably be one of the best things you could put in a cookie. Yeah. yeah. Well, your next challenge is actually waiting right around the corner for you. From the desk of Ruff Ruffman, Liza and Isaac, you must create a sound and dampening environment using a box and up to two of the materials on the table. The sound inside the box must be at least 20 decibels lower than the same sound outside of the box. Liza and Isaac have to build a box that'll muffle sound. And after they build it, I can use the box as a sound blocking helmet so I don't have to hear this annoying voice anymore. Please, Ruff, do not call me annoying. This is very hurtful. First, we should play a sound with like nothing over any part of his head. Like 77. Room noise, 77 decibels. Okay, now with just the box on its head. 68. So that's nine less. It's not enough. Now they're gonna line the inside of the box to help deaden the sound. Styrofoam. We start with the styrofoam. Let's see what we got. 70. 
Whoa! Adding styrofoam actually makes the sound inside the box louder. So what do you think is going to be even better than the styrofoam? I think the wood, because when we were outside and we were sitting on the stone bench, there was a lot of trees around us, which was pretty much blocking out the sound. It was like absorbing the sound. That looks about the same thickness. OK, they're going to test each material at the same thickness. That way they can be sure that any difference in sound muffling comes from the material itself and not just how thick it is. Looks like it's 64. A little better. I think the carpet next. It seems like it would absorb a lot of sound because it's like furry and stuff. It's 64. Carpet is also coming in at 64, same as the wood. Let's try this. It was about 64 as well. Uh, Still at 64. Try cardboard. Like 66. 66? That's a little worse. So we do not want to use the cardboard or the styrofoam. So now you can pick which two materials you want to use to cover the whole inside of the box. Meanwhile, let's call our cookie creators. Hello? Hey, famous Amos. How's the spinach cookie? Good, it's awesome. Listen, for the final part of your challenge, your cookies have to pass muster with the experts. What's the experts? The cookie experts. Marissa's boss and a couple of kids we found. Okay, Ross, you're making me nervous right now. Come on, Sterling! Where's that cookie spirit? Two, one! Here we go. Cross your paws, Blossom. Yeah, it has like a crunch on top, but then the middle is all chewy. Middle is chewy. I got a huge chunk of spinach. Brian's I mean, not liking good. the spinach. Overall, are you happy with this batch? Yes, I think it's our best. By combining the spinach with our combination of spices, white chocolate chips, we're not masking the spinach, but we chose flavors to pair with it that would really bring out the best of the spinach. Okay, guys, my boss is waiting. Let's get upstairs. Okay, the original noise level in the room was 77 decibels. Liza and Isaac need to get it down to 57 decibels. Now they can choose two materials for the sound dampening helmet. Now let's put this in. It doesn't fit. It's not fitting. Whoopsie. Guess we didn't get that right. That's Let's not use the fit. carpet. We Can't use that. Use the carpet. We'll just get this out of the way. So that leaves us down with carpet and foam. Plus making it more comfortable as well. Fifty-one. Whoa! Did you make it? Seventy-seven minus fifty-one. Twenty-six. We We've done it! That's even more than we needed! Nice job, guy. Nice! We did it. So if you go to a really loud place, just put a box on your head. Here we are, Marissa's boss. Oh, goodness. We've been waking all day on a new cookie called the Ruffles Delight. We use a regular cookie base, and then we just added some white chocolate chips, and then we put in a little bit of spinach. To yes, describe the, the spinach. ingredients, describe the process, wet the palate. Judge number one. It's good. He likes it. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Nice. Two thumbs up. Judge number two. It smells good. Likes the smell. Thumbs up. One thumb, that's all we needed. Awesome. And judge number three. And now Marissa's boss. Okay. Thumbs, yes. up. Yes. thumbs up. Oh, a little nervous. It's a little uh, wavered and then extended. I like it. I see you biggest two, Gira. See awesome. you guys. Bye, guys. You guys did excellent. All right, thanks. Thanks. Bye. thanks for everything. Bye. Dude, I gotta try this on. Oh, try it on. <laughs> yeah, this is so weird. See you back at Studio G. Liza, Liza, watch out for those trash cans! Ooh. Well, it's just the four of us here in Studio G. Talia, Bethany, myself, and, you know, the mysterious voice. Does the G stand for garage? I'm gonna ignore you on that one. And I'm welcoming back my fetchers. Hey. First, the twosome who made a pretty kooky cookie. Brian and Sterling! They know exactly how loud my voice is now! And now it's Isaac and Liza! <laughs> Eraser said to the box of sharpened pencils, you've got some good points. Do not tell another joke ever again. Isaac, Liza, I challenged you to make a soundproof box and you were up to the challenge. Oh yeah. I have here a soundproof box built exactly to the specs that you two worked out. Now in theory, the box filters out noise from the outside. So if I put it on and I still hear that voice, then we'll know it's coming from inside my head and I've gone crazy. So here we go. <laughs> I can't hear a thing. Hey. Rav, once you send Charlene the cookies, sing her a cookie love song. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I still heard the other voice. What, Rav? Maybe it's something in your ear. Something in my ear? Blossom, what are you doing? What's with the tweezers? Hey! Wait a minute. 
What is that? <gasps> it's a flea! Hello, my name is Flippe. If you don't mind, I'd like to go back here. Bing! I've been getting romance advice from a flea? Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. Oh well. Anywho, you have clearly built a soundproof box. Nice. 75 points. Yes! yes. Uh, Sterling, first. you tried spinach for the first time. Want to spin it out? Brian! I think he said spinach. You took time to consider the opinion of dogs when it comes to vegetables. <laughs> That's good for 50 points for each of you. Yeah, nice. But as the saying goes, the proof is in the pudding. Please deliver your batch of cookies to the mailbox. Chet, you're an unbiased rodent, and I trust your judgment. You will be the taste tester of these cookies. Okay, he's eating it. And now he's going away and coming back with thumbtacks. What's that, Blossom? There's 30 thumbtacks. 30 points! Yes. Yes. Nice, guys! Yes. Which brings your total to 80 points! Nice! But is that all the points a dog, or in this case, a mouse can give? No! What, what time is it? Bonus points! Today's five points go to the contestant who clearly enjoyed the fruits of his labor, especially when those fruits are cookies. I'm now getting the taste of the spirits. Sterling, with 85 points, you're yeah. today's daily winner. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, Sterling, if you want a vegetable with good hearing, get yourself an ear of corn. I get it. I told you to stop. I have here two identical ears of corn. Under one, an amazing prize. Under the other, something as exciting as kibble and a cookie. Which is it going to be? Corn A or corn B? B. B. <laughs> You'll find your prize in the mailbox. Go get it. What did you get? Oh, it? it looks like a lot of really, really good it tasting like things. It's kibble in a cookie. Yeah. Ruff, Ruff Mint's kibble crunch. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. All right, Ruff, here, you can have it. Oh, okay, I, maybe I, I don't want to eat these kibble cookies either. Well, that is our show. Tune in next time, and we'll see if I have ticks, too. <laughs> but until then, I'm Bye. Ruff Bye. See you, Fetchers. Bye. Bye. Adios, my friends. Ugh, I sent Charlene cookies made out of vegetables. I can't believe I've been listening to a flea. <gasps> Charlene says she got the cookies and now she wants to meet me by the fence. Yes! What? If you don't meet today, I'm calling the Board of Health. Your cookies were covered in fleas and you probably are too. <gasps> covered in fleas? Wait, wait a minute, I just have one flea. Felipe, you're alone, right? Eh, uh, not exactly. Awesome flowers. I've been overthinking this whole wooing Charlene thing. As soon as she opens that box of sunflowers, love will bloom. Charlene, calling about the flowers, eh? You didn't get them. You got disco music. Um, hang on. Is this a florist? An elderly woman picked up my flowers and promised to deliver them to Charlene. Well, then why did she get disco music? A flower crime wave? Seriously? Each victim is given annoying disco music instead of flowers? What? This sounds like the work of the notorious cat burglar Le Purr, who is known to love flowers and disco. Oh, excuse me, Blossom. Le Purr. Wait a minute, Blossom. How do you know so much about Le Purr? Because her real name is Duchess Petunia Cupcake Von Yum Yum, and she's your identical twin sister! So that wasn't an old woman in that flower shop at all! It was... Lippa. Chet, Blossom, I need those flowers back! And someone to turn that music off! Life was missing its mystique, my squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Last time you think my insurance will cover this? Here come the contestants now! She thinks she's graceful when she's dancing, but not when she's walking. Rise up! She says she doesn't like to dance at all. It's Bethany! Her friends call her a worrywart. Tell ya! 
He likes rap, rock, metal, and pop music. Sterling! He likes telling jokes. Brian! He's currently writing a novel called Cliff Mountain. Tyson! Let's get an update on the scores. Brian in sixth place with 860 points. Bethany down to fifth with 902 and a half. Talia down to fourth with 905. Liza up to third with 935. Isaac in second with 992 and a half. And Sterling still in first with 1,007 and a half points. Hello and welcome to Fetch, where contestants complete challenges for points, prizes, <laughs> and sometimes to help patch up my relationship with Charlene. Rob, that's Rob, what happened? I bought a gift for Charlene, but before it got delivered, it was stolen. Oh, uh, my And she was sent this instead. You're hearing bad uh, music. Uh, it's cool. Uh, what is this? It's disco music. As you can imagine, Charlene was not happy. French poodles do not boogie down. Anyway, Blossom says this heist has all the marks of the notorious disco-loving cat burglar, Le Pen. Oh! She's Blossom's identical twin sister! Oh, just like you uh, and Scrapper! Yes. Yes. It's okay, Blossom. We know it's not your fault. It's not your In fault. In fact, Blossom helped me devise our two challenges today in order to figure out Le Pen's methods and retrieve my gift to Charlene. Challenge number one! Yeah. Brian! Lipper has been robbing defenseless florists. I need you to find Mark at O'Shea's flower shop. You're gonna learn to manage the store. Keep your eyes open and report any suspicious activity. Got it? Yes. The address of where you're going is in the mailbox. So go yeah. and fetch! Good luck, Brian. Bye. Bye. Okay, is he gone? Good. Isaac, yeah. you will be participating in challenge 1.5. Blossom's twin, Lipper, is a master of disguise, and that's exactly what you need to master. You will assume someone else's identity and then try to trick Brian at the flower shop. Your instructions are in the mailbox. Now okay. go fetch! Yeah. Okay, bye, Rob. Bye. bye, guys. Challenge number two. Blossom is busy working out the location of the hideout of Lipper. Meanwhile, I'm going to need two of you to learn how to disable Lipper's security system. And those two are Sterling and Talia. Yeah, guys. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox. So go fast. Hey. Good luck to both bye of you. Guys, bye, Rob. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Liza and Bethany have stayed oh, yeah. behind in the studio today, but they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. And of course, everyone remembers that swinging hit from 1979. That fan is guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. The four contestants out on the challenges. Up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's boogie on down with Brian. So Brian's going into the flower shop. He knows it's his job to detect suspicious activity. I'm Mark. You must be Brian. Ah, now, what he doesn't know is that Mark really isn't a florist. He's an actor. You are to learn how to run a business, and I'm here to show you. Ready? I am ready. Okay, let's go. Excellent. Here comes Isaac. This is Mara. Hey, Isaac. Yeah. I'd like to welcome you to Riverside Theater. You're going to learn a little bit about acting today. Cool. Acting. Brilliant. Brian, one of the most important things about running a business is customer service. And I like to call it flair. Flair. I like that. We need more flair around here, Blossom. Answering the phone is very important in any business because you never know who's going to call. I answer the phone with my own flair. I want you to answer the phone with your own flair. Hello, O'Shea's. We're Daffodils Rock. Ooh, okay. That was some serious flair. Be sincere because that other person on the other line can feel what you're what you're feeling. Hello, O'Shea's, and roses are nice. Okay, not bad, Brian. It's I'm the best sure that I can do. It's the best you can do. Okay, well, well, it's it's a start. Okay. Theater in general is actually an ancient art form. Wait, who's that? Back in Shakespeare's day, women were not allowed to perform as actors. Oh, look, a little old lady's lost on the stage. Man, that breaks the heart. So the men had to play the male roles and the women's roles. Isn't that right, Henrietta? Oh! <laughs> Isaac, this is Henrietta, my assistant. Oh, she works there. Hey! Henrietta is actually Henry! That's not an old lady at all! That's a boy! Your challenge today is to become an 85-year-old woman. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're going to be playing Mrs. Isaacson. Hello, I'm Mrs. Isaacson. All right, that's kind of elderly. Okay, Blossom, Brian and Isaac are hard at work, so what's the latest on my flowers? You've tracked Lip to her hideout? The zone? She has a laser light security system protecting the flowers. Good thing I have Talia and Sterling learning about laser light. Hi, are you John? I'm John. Hello, John. 
Ruff wants me to teach you guys a little bit about light. More specifically, lasers. Let's start out with this tennis ball. I'm gonna put a target on the board, and I want you guys to stand where you think the ball is gonna go if I stand here and hit the target. Okay. I guess we could throw tennis balls at lift, but that really won't disable our security system. So what are we doing here? How are you predicting where it's gonna go? You hit it, and the angle that it hits the wall at is the same angle that it'll come off the wall from. Nicely done, Talia. What about light? I'm gonna put a mirror here. Do you think light bounces off things like a tennis ball would? No, yes. No or yes, which is it? The angle to the mirror from me, is that the same angle to you? Yeah. So it works both ways. Light from you is hitting the mirror coming to me, and the light from me is bouncing to you. So that means if I can see you in the mirror, then you can see me too. What's that, Blossom? You say there's a disco ball in Lipper's hideout, and they can use it to disable her security system? Awesome. We have one customer that comes in every single week, Mrs. Isaacson. You remembering that, kids? Mrs. Isaacson? Sounds familiar? Every single week, at this time, she comes in and she gets her... She has tea. Good idea, Mark. We'll give her some tea. The tea has to be exactly 180 degrees, and we measure it by here. Oh, a thermometer. Nice touch. She has a light toast with white bread, two half pats of butter, and most importantly, on the toast, after the butter is spread gently and evenly, two, two hard uh, shakes of cinnamon. Wow, she is really hard to please. I hope Isaac can pull this off. This is our makeup and wardrobe room. Where the transformation will begin. This is Heidi, and this is Sue. Okay, Isaac, here's your dress. A little bland. Shoes, a handbag, the stockings. Ugh. And you have a slip to wear. What's that? A slip. It's kind of like underwear. Great. This is a European garden. Isn't that nice? Soak it in. Very nice. Brian, soak it in. <sighs> Nah, uh, let's not overdo it, Mark. Wouldn't you love to be a florist? This is phenomenal. Yes. This is what I do. Aw, oh, come on, Brian. This is called a snapdragon. You know why? Let me show you. Here, put your finger really close up there, okay? It's a bite, does it? Oh, what's that snapdragon? What? What? It's a little florist humor. <laughs> I could go on the road with that, couldn't I? Ha, 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 Mark. This let's stick to the I training. Do. This is what I do all, to, all the time, every day. Really? Isn't that exciting? Okay, let's check on Mrs. Isaacson. Smile. Just like that. Don't move. We're going to start with the shadow first. Good. This is good. Wow, Isaac, that is unbelievable. I'll bet even Lip can't disguise herself that easily. Right, Blossom? No, oh, she can. Do you think you guys could draw where Sterling and I were standing and how the light reflected off the mirror? Yeah. Look at that. The mirror is changing the direction the light travels. Talia, what are the angles that we're talking about? The equal angles would be these ones. When we measure these, we draw what's called a normal line at the point where the reflection occurs, and the angles are measured to the normal line. So this angle right here, we would call angle of incidence. And then the other angle... Reflection. The angle. Reflection. Angle of incidence and angle of reflection. Hey, that gives me an idea. Maybe they can use mirrors to reflect light onto the disco ball and knock out Lipper's security system. I think you guys are ready for your first challenge. It's in Locker 53. Okay, I've sent them a challenge to see if they can send light around a corner. It says open me. Open me. Wait, wait. Talia and Sterling, use these two mirrors to hit the bullseye with the beam. Wait, where's the bullseye? The bullseye is in my room on the far wall. Oh, man! They've got to use mirrors to reflect light from the hallway back into the classroom. Wait, go. Yes. Okay. I have to get it into your mirror so you can right, get right. into the bullseye. Look, it's working! Is it on your mirror? Yeah. Aim it at the bullseye. They're making the light go around the corner. I right, got it. Yes! They got yeah. it! Yeah! Like, this is my life, dealing with some of these beautiful creatures. They want some positive feedback. They want what? So we're going to try and sing. You know what? What are you doing? They hear you, man. They hear you, Brian. No, why? Oh, come on. Open your mouth, just and we'll just fake it. That was great. That was awesome. Yeah. All right, let me give that a try. La -ha! Oh. Okay, now this feels really awkward. They are putting the finishing touches on Mrs. Isaacson. I like my tea a certain way. So keep it always up here, okay? Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. I like it. I'm going to get my flowers back. Hello, Chase. I thought you were supposed to answer the phone with Flair. Hey, John, how are you? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is going to be difficult, but um, okay, I'll be right there. Bye-bye. I have to run across town. I'll be back, no problem, 20 minutes at the latest. Okay. Okay. So Mark is sneaking out and leaving Brian alone in the flower shop. I will be back, okay? All right, this is going to be hard, rough. Don't worry, Brian. You're going to be great. Last touch, the wig. Excellent! Isaacson, thank you. I think Mrs. Isaacson is ready to meet the world. So we've seen what happens when light reflects off a mirror. That a mirror 
it gives you such a perfect reflection that you actually will see the image. Well, hello, you handsome dog. Most objects, like this board or your shirt, you won't get such a perfect reflection. Still looks perfect here. Some of that light is also absorbed by the object. And there is one other possibility where the light may go through the object. What types of materials does light travel through? Glass. Glass, yes, sun comes through the window. Water. Water, absolutely. Air. 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 Plexiglass? Yeah. Yes. Plexiglass? OK, so I have a laser here, which you can see coming out. Cool. And you can see it hitting rough. Yes, it is. What's going on in between? Air isn't reflective. What can we put in the air that might be reflective? Chalk oh. dust. Chalk dust. Oh, it's, ah. like, it's like, wow, it's now like, you can see it. You can see it. Ah. Oh, I can see it like, moving, too. Wow, that <laughs> chalky. OK, so now I've got the laser so we can see it on the table a little bit. I'm going to take this piece of plexiglass, which we can see through, so we know light can go through it. What do you think is going to happen when I set this down? I think it'll, like, reflect. I think it'll be obstructed. I think it's going to go right through. All right, let's give it a try. <gasps> ah, it was on yeah. rough. And then it moved. There is some reflection, and then some goes through. Now watch this. That it angle changes. As you turn it. But it does something called refraction, which is when light travels through a material, but it changes direction depending on what angle it goes in at. The plexiglass bends the light. Now the more he angles that plexiglass, the more it will bend the light. Let's add refraction to our diagram. If we make the block of plexiglass, here's the laser coming in. It did reflect a little bit, but it also went through at an angle, and this angle is the angle of refraction. Excellent, Talia. Hello, Ruff Ruffin back here in Studio G with Bethany and Liza. Oh, yeah. Who are ready to earn points of their own during the halftime quiz show. Yes. 50 points are available, and you have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at... Five points apiece. Five points apiece, yes. Are you ladies ready? Yes. Yep. Then let the quiz begin with a true or false. Light can travel through water. True. Yes. What two properties of light did Talia and Sterling experiment with to change the direction light travels? Um, they had interceding and reflecting. Incorrect, but close. John uses a tennis ball bouncing off the wall to demonstrate the way light does what? Um, um reflects reflect. off. Yes, the angle that incoming light strikes an object at is called the angle of... Reflecting? Incorrect. Name three materials besides air that light can travel through. Water and glass. Glass. I need one more thing. Plexiglass. Yes! How does Brian answer the phone at the flower shop? Uh, roses are nice. Good. What did Talia and Sterling do to help them see the laser light traveling through air? They use they chalk use... dust. Yeah, chalk dust. Yes! Oh, we're out of time. Oh. Well, it looks like you got five out of ten. Twenty-five points. Now, let's go over the ones you missed, starting with what two properties of light did Talia and Sterling experiment with to change the direction light travels, reflection, and refraction? Oh, okay. Also, the angle that incoming light strikes an object at is called the angle of blank. I'm looking for incidence. Angle of incidence. Oh, and that yeah. is the end of the halftime quiz show. So, will Brian ever find out why he's in a flower shop? Let's see if his day's looking any rosier. All right, Brian. It's all right, just, you know, if you get bored, just sing to a flower. Good job, Mark. Good job. Ah, again with the old ladies. Oh, that's right, that's Isaac. Let me give him a call. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> I mean, Mrs. Isaacson. It's Ralph. Hey, Ralph. Listen, I need you to go find Brian now. He's managing a flower shop. We're gonna play a little trick on him. Okay. He needs to think you're really Mrs. Isaacson. You, you really have to sell this. Okay. And I need you to be really cranky. All right, ma'am, go get him. Bye. Bye. Technology these days. Hello, Mrs. Isaacson. Hello, Mara. This is Gary. Hi, Gary. And Gary is going to play the part of your personal assistant. Oh, okay. Let's okay. go. Okay, guys, I have the laser set up to hit the first of the two rough targets over there. And notice the laser is right through the yellow part of his belly. Your challenge is to get the laser to hit the second rough. You get three chances to set it down in a way that makes the light hit second rough. They have to refract the laser beam from the first rough to the second rough. Number okay, one. That didn't work. Oh, up, didn't work. Oh, yes, but don't, now just pick it up and turn it more. Like this? Yeah, go. Oh, oh. We have to turn it more. So close. Oh. So almost. So it's now all coming together. Isaac is now a master of disguise, just like Lip. <laughs> okay, everybody get ready. Hello. Hey. And good. See, you notice how Isaac is not showing his face. Where's Mark? 
He's not here right now. Okay, well, we come in every week and... Yeah. And you know, we always get two dozen roses. Do you want me to go get those? Could you please? And also, tea. Yeah. 180 degrees. So. It's, it has to be very precise. Excellent job with the customer service, Brian. Now, that comes with toast also. Yeah. Okay. Yes, One toast with two... Uh, two cinnamon. Yeah, here are your flowers. Okay, great. Uh, Brian doesn't seem to suspect anything yet. Okay, he's now making the toast with the cinnamon. Wow, Brian, using a thermometer too. Very plate. Hopefully there won't be a complaint. I'm sorry, she needs more cinnamon. Okay. More cinnamon, Brian. How's that tea? It's a little too hot, so I'll let it cool down a okay, little bit. Okay, please. Is black tea okay? She usually has Earl Grey. Do you know where he keeps it? I don't know. They don't have Earl Grey. They've had it for 20 years. I know, I know, I know. Let me ask. All right, well, let me just have that then. Have you checked the temperature? It was just at 180. But quickly. Mrs. Isaacson's gonna complain about the temperature regardless. This is too hot. Too hot. Take this back. Yes, Brian, the paw wave. That should sufficiently cool down the tea by dinner. Try this tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brian's looking nervous. So My Isaac's really selling this. Maybe add some more hot water. I have been coming here for the past 20 years. Oh, well, Isaac's good. The least I can do is get enough cinnamon and get my tea the right temperature. So now is it too hot or is it too cold? I mean, this is my job here. Tally, what is the problem? I, I do not know about, uh, about this young man. He should be fired right now, Gary. Easy, Isaac. Let's not overdo it, buddy. Old ladies on the move. Old ladies on the move. Now it's time to reveal the ruse. You really need to get better at this service. I know. Aha! You suspected something. I was gonna say that was the fakest old lady <laughs> I've ever seen. How many fake old ladies have you seen, Brian? I had no idea it was you. Uh, you wanna sing to some more flowers or what? Look at that, Brian. Mark wasn't even real. Another actor. Did you think I was a freak or what? Kind of. A little bit of a freak. We'll just see you back in the studio, Jira. All yeah, right, bye. gentlemen. I mean, ma'am. Give me that. Hey, that's Mrs. Isaacson Walker, Brian. That's just mean. And now it's time to send Talia and Sterling to the zone. What, Blossom? They have to wear disguises to get in? Hmm. They need to wear something to get past that disco-loving lip. Who uh, I've got it! Blossom, to the closet. It's time for your final challenge. All right. You'll find the info in lockers 14 and 15. Good luck. Let's go. Oh, I hope Chet got everything to the locker in time. Okay, read the note. Change into these outfits for your final challenge at the zone. Ah, oh, oh, that is cute. Yeah. Beth, I love you. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Tally. I love you, too. That is going to look good on you, Sterling. That is looking fly. And it's time to boogie on down to the zone. Okay, we're at Lipper's hideout. If Talia and Sterling can find the laser light and shine it on the disco ball, that should disable Lipper's security system. Then they can get back my flowers for Charlene. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Now it's time to put what they learned into action. Whoa. So there's a the laser. Let's find the mirror ball. It's right there. Yes. There's the disco ball hanging from the ceiling. The fishbowl's right under it. Now that's a security system. To disable it, the laser has to get reflected into the fishbowl. Then it's refracted by the water like it did with the plexiglass. Then it has to be reflected straight up to the disco ball. Okay, guys, get to it! I'll try to do the mirrors. Okay. Okay, ready? Um, to the right, to the right. Use the mirrors to reflect the light into the fishbowl. Wait, wait, oh, oh. Yeah, all right, leave okay. it right there. Good, good. Right there? Okay, okay. Let's go, let's go. Right the light's right in the fishbowl. Yeah. Okay. And the water in the fishbowl is refracting the light. Just like the plexiglass did. Get the mirrors. Okay, we gotta hit the mirrors onto the mirror ball. Use the mirrors to reflect the lasers up to the disco ball on the ceiling. All right. Oh, wait, there's some laser. It's on it, it's on it. Oh, all right, there's one. Oh, okay, we got it. They got it! Yeah! They hit the disco ball with the laser and disabled the security system, clearing a path to the flowers. Take that, Lipper. Got your flowers, y'all. Go. We got your flowers, and we're heading back to Junior G. There it is. Yes! Uh, put them in water if you can, guys. And here come our intrepid fetchers now. Brian and Isaac. <laughs> wow, Isaac. <laughs> you do not look like you at all. They had laser-like uh, lasers. Whoa. Talia and Sterling. Yes, the outfit. Love the pants. Yeah. All right, let's unmask some points. Yeah! yeah. Isaac. I'm Mrs. Isaac. 
six then. A hundred points were at stake if you could fool Brian in the flower shop. This is too hot. And you did it, almost. I don't think that's real. Oh. 85 points. Let's yeah. go ahead. And Brian. Roses are nice. You ran a flower shop and were able to detect an imposter. That was the fakest old lady I've ever seen. <laughs> 80 points. Yeah. Talia and Sterling. Yeah. For applying the principles of reflection and refraction to light up the disco ball, disengage left uh, security system, and steal back my flowers. 85 points! Yeah! yeah. High five! But is it all the points that Doug can give? No! no. no. Quelle heure est-il? points! Today's 10 bonus points go to the contestant who thought that her disco outfit oh, was out of sight. Oh. Talia with 95 points. Yeah. You're today's daily winner. Natalia, I have here two identical disco balls in disguise. Under one disco ball, a prize that will make you want to dance the night away. Under the other, a prize that will make you want to dance the prize away. So, which will it be, disco ball A or disco ball B? A. 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 Your prize is not in the mailbox today. It is behind the wagon. I see it. Complete disguise kit. A disguise kit. Look at that. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Enjoy! Well, that's it for our show! <laughs> Join us next time where all Fetchers will be dressed normally! See you, Fetchers! Bye. 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 Hello! Charlene! I, I mean, uh, hey! <laughs> Finally got the flowers, huh? You're allergic to sunflowers? I didn't know that! Sorry! Wait, you've grown to actually like the disco music? Well, you know, I didn't send that. That was lip -er. But I actually do have my own collection of hip dance tracks. Here, listen. Disco dancing dog. Who's that? Disco dancing dog. Boogie woogie. <laughs> Hot stuff, huh? Hello, Charlene? Are you there? Speedy scout, scootily bop. Skip, skip, skippy doopy dop. Chop a doopy dop. Bap, 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 bap. Please. Oh, hi. I'm Ruff Ruffman, and there's nothing better than hitting the yard sales. Check out these deals. An old sock? Just one more, and I've got a pair. You know, they wanted 25 cents for that, but I talked the price up. Got it for 16 bucks. I'm supposed to talk the price down, not up? Oh. Well, check this out. A lamp, or a chair, or a champ. <laughs> Woo! An antique strudel machine! Remember, we've always wanted to make pastry out of machine! Ah, oh, Delicious! And I've been saving the best for last! A new tennis racket! Well, not new new, but it's new to me! It's gonna help me smash Spot Spotnik at our big match today! Check out this serve! Oh, it's okay. It just needs a little tape. Okay, a lot of tape. Anyway, all this great stuff, and what do you think I got it for? Okay, higher. A little higher. No, but $7,000 is still pretty good, don't you think? You don't think? Uh, Chet, I'd watch it on those strudels. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Ah! Now that one better than the last take. And here come the contestants now. She wants to learn the electric guitar. Well, until then, there's always the electric blender, Liza. Can he speak a language other than English? Well, he says no, but no means no in Spanish, so I'm confused. Sterling! She thinks evolution is cool. Well, if it leads to talking dogs, I say right on for Italia. His dog, Pizza Boy, can sit like a human on a couch. Brian! She wishes refrigerators didn't hum so loudly. Ooh, it's Bethany! He wants to be the first kid to perform open-heart surgery. Well, let's uh, get through medical school first. Isaac! 
Let's get an update on the scores. Bethany has slipped to six with 927 and a half points. Leapfrogging ahead of her is Brian with 940. Liza down to fourth with 960. Talia replaces her in third with an even thousand. Isaac in second with 1077 and a half. And Sterling in first with 1092 and a half points. Hi, guys! Hey, Rob! Welcome to Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Why do you have a tennis yeah, racket in that? Oh, uh, it's, uh, we'll get to that in a second. More importantly, I have to ask you guys a question. I need your honest opinion, okay? How much would you pay for this beautiful object? Look at the craftsmanship, okay? The attention to detail. What right? would you use? Yeah. Yeah, Details if it's a potato. It's rough. It's I wouldn't a pay, like, block. two cents for that. I'd pay, like, a dollar. Really? I, I'd pay a, a dollar. A dollar. I clearly know nothing about this type of stuff, so <laughs> guess I could learn a thing or two. All right, then, I'm gonna make it challenge number one. Okay. This is not the Prince of Pop. This is the king of pop culture, an antiques roadshow appraiser, Gary. Brian, Bethany, seek out the king. Your instructions are in the mailbox. Go fetch. All right. That's it, yeah. Bethany, get excited. Oh, man, I, I got this great deal at a yard sale. This uh, handsome yet rugged uh, wooden necklace, only $200. It looks like a tennis racket that's on your neck. Okay, guys, I don't know what to do here. I've got a big match with Spot Spotnik later today, and my racket broke. So, Liza, Talia, challenge yeah. number two is all yours. This is Ron. Hey, Ron, you making fun of me? What's going on here? Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch. All right, all right. Hey, guys, cool. Let's go. Let's go. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Now, as determined by the Fetch 3000, Sterling and Isaac have stayed behind in the studio for today's show, but they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. Hey, did you guys know that the Fetch Fairness Guarantee was rated the third most fun guarantee on television? <laughs> All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. For the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. So let's get the lowdown on Brian and Bethany. Welcome to Brimfield. It's the fabulous Brimfield Fair. I love antiques. This is the coolest thing. You Gary? I am. Welcome to my mess. This is Wax Rex, the Emporium of Popular Cultural Artifacts. Wax Rex Collectibles. Coolest name since Fetch with Ruff Ruff, man. Welcome to Brimfield. It is the largest antiques and collectibles flea market in the world. In the world? In the world. Ruff sent us because he's a horrible shopper. I think he sent you to the right place. I'm not a horrible shopper. I just could use some help from an antiques roadshow appraiser. There's three reasons people collect. The first reason is nostalgia. It makes them feel good. It reminds them of their past or their childhood. The second reason is decorative. They like to hang it up on the wall, makes the room look nice. Ruff has some really decorative things in his place. <laughs> I sure do. The third reason people collect is for investment. They buy it so that it goes up in value and they make either a profit or at least their investment has grown. See, Blossom, this stuff is going to be worth a lot of money in 400 years. When you're buying, you want to have a knowledge of supply, demand, and condition. If there's a small supply of items and a large demand for items, the price goes up. Do you ever bargain with your customers? Part of the fun of dealing in things that are not in a retail store is the ability to negotiate. Some people call it haggling. How much for that shirt? Your job is to go out on the field, use the knowledge that you've gotten from me, and try and buy something fabulous. And come back, and we'll see who did the best. Get to work. OK, thank, thank you. you. It's time to find some bargains. Oh, good, there's Ron. Hi, guys. I'm Ron. I love tennis, and I've played tennis my whole life. Now, I hear that Ruff has an important match coming up. Yeah. So what we're going to do today is you're going to test out Ruff's racket to see if it's up to snuff for his match. OK? Can do that. It's over here. Look, it's the same model as this one. You know, except it's got strings, and I'm not wearing it. We have to use that? Yeah. That's really old. It's not old. Why, that is a valuable antique racket. Necklace. Something. So I'm going to have you hit some balls with this, and we'll just see how well this is going to work for Ruff. I don't okay. know if that's going to work. What's wrong with my racket? Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. It's important to have power to bring the ball over the net, but you also need directional control to be able to aim the ball, and we've made special targets for you to do that. What, guys? Come on, it's just to help them with their aim. Okay, Liza's testing out that old racket. Over here! Tank, resist the urge to fetch. No. Uh oh she's having trouble just getting it over the net. Sorry, guys. Watch out for the spectators, Yay! please! That was bad. Oh, no. Yeah. Liza didn't even get one ball over the net. Aim at Blossom. Oh, come on. It's just a picture. This is hard. Yeah, it's really heavy. Nope. 
Okay, Tally, I didn't hit the target either. Oh, Spot Spotnik is going to destroy me on the court. I can tell you that there's a lot more to tennis rackets than just wooden strings. Really? And not only have I been playing tennis my whole life, I engineer and design tennis rackets Wait, for a living. Wait, you get to engineer the tennis Wow. So to find out more, let's go back to where I work, and we'll really look at why these rackets were so hard to play. Yeah. Wow, these girls are really excited. Now I'll give Bethany a call. Hello? Hey, Bethany, it's Ruff. Oh, hey, Ruff. And why don't you open up that envelope? Gasp! $50, Ruff, that's it? What? 50 bucks is a lot. And you gotta use that money to bargain for the antiques. That'll be the best investment. That sounds pretty easy. I like your confidence, Bethany. Okay, now I'll check in with Brian. Hello? Hey, Brian. Why don't you open up your envelope? There's $50. And I hope you folks at home notice that Brian did not complain about his $50. Thanks, Ruff. Good luck. Get some bargains. Bye. Ruff, there's so much stuff to buy. Buy it! Buy it! <gasps> Ruff, these are really old golf clubs. How old are the golf clubs? These are probably from the 1930s or so. so how much for a one club? These sell for about $10 a piece. Let the haggling begin. Um, I'm on a budget, so could you bump it to maybe $8, $7? Sure. $8 is fine. Ah, just like that, two bucks off! I forgot golf club. Wow, that was easy. Marbles. I was just looking at these marbles here. This is a hand-blown antique Victorian marble. This marble here would be worth $300. Wow. Here's marbles that were sold in 1985. I would sell this whole bag for five dollars. Offer him ten. Oh, no, wait, talk him down. So what's the best price you'd give me those marbles for? Just because I like you for three dollars. Yes, Ruff, look, I've got a bargain. Okay, but... The queen of bargains! Back to tennis, anyone? This is the racket of the number one player in the world. Roger Federer! Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I touched Roger Federer's racket. She loves him. So when you hit a tennis ball, where does the power come from? Your hand. Okay, your swing, yeah. Yeah. and there's How another. How much force you put into your swing? The ball like... that's coming in. Oh, the ball! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's like reversing the Right, force. the ball's coming to you with energy, and it gets into the strings of your racket, yeah. and it actually deforms a little bit, and then when it reforms, the energy's transferred back in the other direction. Would it be transferred back with the same amount of energy, or with, like, less energy? It's actually a little less energy. Hey, guys, over here! Hey, Ruff! Hey, Ruff. So, my racket, uh, not so good, huh? Uh, guess I wasted 200 bucks, but I got this big match against Spot. So I need you to design new rackets. Ones that would work for us, you know, average players. Nice! Yeah. And once I get that new racket, I'll be as good as Roger Federer. Bye, Rob, bye! The first thing we have to do is figure out which category we're gonna pick a racket from. I just need a racket that can beat another dog, that's it. There's three types of tennis rackets. There's a difference in weight on the three categories of rackets. Yeah. These lighter weight rackets, yeah. these are called game improvement rackets. It's kind of like throwing a ping pong ball. You can get your arm moving very fast, but what happens to the ball? It doesn't, doesn't go very fast. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't really have a lot of energy yeah. in it. Okay, so a light racket doesn't pass a lot of energy to the ball. The second type of rackets are called the high skill level, and these are very heavy like a bowling ball. And if you can get that going, yeah. then it has a lot of energy. But it's hard to but, get your yeah. arm going fast. Do you remember when you hit with this racket? Did all yeah. the balls go in the net? Yeah. You have to be really strong to swing it. So that's why my racket didn't work for them. It was too heavy. And the third type of racket, all around rackets, are kind of like a baseball, where it's in between those two. So you can get your arm going kind of fast, and the ball will also go kind of fast. Does that so make sense? So maybe we should do those. This type. Yeah. Because we're not, we're not really weak or anything. Yeah. All around rackets yeah. are the best for us. I would agree. I think this is definitely the right group of rackets yeah. for you. So they're going with the all around racket. Yeah. Let me call Brian again. Hello? Hey, Brian. Oh, hey, Rob. Hey, you see those hands over there behind you? It's like a bunch of people who are trying to ask a question. Whoa. I need a hand around here. It's like, ooh, pick me, pick me. I'm under a tight budget. Here we go. So could you bump the price down to maybe 15 or $10? Yeah, we could do 15 yeah. Maybe that'll be the bargain of the day. Now Bethany's going to try to get a better deal for the same item. Hello. How are you doing? I was planning on buying this, and I was wondering if you could sell it to me for 13 Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> OK. Bethany got a bigger hand for less money. You've got to hand it to her. <laughs> so we have to talk a little bit about something called a sweet spot. Sounds tasty. Do either of you know what a sweet spot yeah. is? Yeah, isn't that where, like, the place on your racket where you want the ball to hit it because it gets the most energy? It's the place on your racket that you get a lot of energy returned, and it's also the least vibration. Is it caused by, like, the tension of the strings or, like, how tight the strings are strung? Yes, yeah, so the strings really determine where that sweet spot is. Now this is a high-speed video that we shot. I want you to watch the ball and how it interacts with the strings in the racket. Strings are the dynamic portion of a racket. They actually move when you hit the ball. 
their main job is to store and return energy to the ball. So the ball comes in. Oh, it does flush. Yeah, it's like flattened. It's like a trampoline kind of. And notice when you hit the sweet spot like this, the ball comes straight back out. So what is that going to mean if you're aiming for a certain part of the court? It's like it's going to go there. It's probably going to go there. Yeah. Okay, so hitting on the sweet spot means less vibration and more accuracy. Now the second one here is what happens when the ball doesn't hit the sweet spot. It still squishes, yeah. but the racket is the going straight, back yeah. instead of staying. And the ball is going down instead of going straight. Hitting outside the sweet spot means more vibration and less accuracy. Less energy, too. And I noticed that the ball does the same thing, but the strings aren't going back as far. So is that more or less energy return there? Less. less. A lot less. Yeah. So what we have to do is figure out where you want to hit the ball on the racket, okay? Okay, they're going to have to find out where on the racket that sweet spot is. But first, let's do some quizzing. Back at Studio G, this is Sterling. This is Isaac. This is me. Yes, mm -hmm. let the halftime quiz show begin, but first, a brush up on the rules, shall we? 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. You boys ready? Yeah. yeah. Then let the quiz begin. What is Ron's job? Engineer. He's a tennis racket engineer. Yes. What two things do you want from a tennis racket? Power and um, control. Yes. True or false? The Brimfield Fair is the second largest antiques and collectibles flea market in the world. False. Correct. What happens to the shape of a tennis ball when it hits the racket? It deforms. Yes. True or false? Some of the energy of an incoming ball is returned to the ball after it is hit. True. True. Yes. There are three types of racket frames. Name two of them. Um, there is the... This all, all, all around. around. All around. And then there's the and professional. Then, yeah. High the, skill, high skill. High yes, skill. yes. What happens to the price of an item when there is a small supply with large demand? It, oh, it, 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 it goes, goes higher. higher. Yes. The sweet spot refers to an area on the tennis racket or the tennis ball. The tennis racket. racket. Yes. Oh. Gentlemen, let's check the Fetch 3000 and see how you did. Two questions we didn't get to. Eight out of ten questions correct. Forty points. That's not bad. That's forty points. That's not bad. That's pretty That's good. Bad. So, are Liza and Talia getting a handle on rackets, or are they feeling strung out? Let's check in. What I want to do now is I want to actually take and map where some of that energy return is. You can actually map that out? Now this here is a rebound test. There's these laser beams down here that measures the height of a ball bounce in inches. They use a laser. The ball's gonna drop, okay? And then let's try to see if we can tell how high it bounced on the rebound height. 57, I think. Actually, what was that number? 54.31 inches. Oh, wow, the computer figured it out. So we were all wrong, and it's very difficult to see. That's why the computer is really important for this test. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do now is to take this racket and make a map of the rebound height of the ball on it. Okay, so they'll test the rebound height of different points on the racket. They need to find out where to hit the ball to get a lot of energy return and no vibrations. That's the sweet spot. So it's like in the middle of it. Okay. That was 73.78 inches. Let's try the side a little bit. All right. so move it a little bit. Try it again. Right down there findings. We can try a little bit above. Yeah, at the top. 41.9. Like and now closer to the Perfect. bottom. That was actually high. 74.22 inches. That's the highest so far. So this does prove that our sweet spot is not exactly in the middle. So our scale is about 100 inches, and getting 70 inches is about getting 70% of the energy back. Yeah, that's a good point. But the top let got less than half of the energy back. So middle to the bottom seems to be the best spot on those rackets. So the vibration was happening when you heard that racket clattering? You want less help. vibration. Yeah. So it can give back more of the energy instead of turning it into vibrations. That helps get the ball back over the net. So let's go take a look at your data and see if we can make some areas that have better energy return than others. Definitely like the bottom. With the best. And how about some of the worst? Definitely the, the top. top. You measured about 10 data points. Here's a map with about a thousand wow. points wow. of comparison. Yeah, so right here was the sweet spot. I think you were very, very close. It was about the same area on our data. Yeah. They came up with pretty yeah. much the same data. I have $19 left. That's good money. What is this magnifying glass? It's good to keep an eye on somebody. You can also become Sherlock Holmes. Well, you've got the hat, sir, so you're halfway there. Something like that is $10 with the case. With the case? Uh, yeah. How about 7 or $8? I, well, I can't. I don't know if I can do that. I kind of, my prices are not too negotiable because I'm very reasonable to begin with. Whoa. But you don't have drives to. Drives a hard bargain. Ruff, you could be the next Sherlock Holmes. Ruff Holmes. Yeah. Not that catchy. Sherlock Ruffman, maybe? I think I will get 
the magnifying You're going for the mag. He's going for it. Box alone is worth $10 in my mind. It's like paying for the magnifying glass, getting a box, which could only be used for the magnifying glass. How much is the magnifying glass? Magnifying glass is uh, 15. Let's see if he agrees to sell it for less. $15? Yeah. Do I have $15? Hey, uh, no, watch no, this. No, no. He's going to try to bargain. Uh, how about 10 $10? Oh, now he's got a 10 again. Buy it! $10? That is a nice Doesn't include item. a box. Thank this you. is a string machine. To do a racket like this, you're going to need 38 feet of string. Oh. It's actually one really long piece. Can you cut 38 feet of string off that, please? How are we going to measure it? I'm going to count out like 30. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm 4 9 -ish. Oh, I'm 5 2. Well, let's just roll out a ton and then we can uh, yeah. on the ground and measure it. Yeah. Sorry, my foot so. so that's 5 feet. Good measuring technique, guys. I like it. 15, 20. Are we sleeping on the drum? Okay. Lies is a little over 5 feet tall, so the string's about. Seven and a half lies is long. So we need to pick a tension for this racket. If it's like tight enough to like bounce the ball back off, but loose enough so that the ball has some way to like squish and awesome. go back out. Yeah. Okay, so they'll make sure the string isn't too loose or too tight. And on top and we'll get on the bottom. Okay. They'll just pass the string. It's a lovely racket, Ruff. Good! I'm gonna need it to beat Spot. Well, another long day at Brimfield. Yeah, it was fun. So let me see what you got. Let's start with the hands. It was originally $18, and I got a bargain for $13. I got it for $15. $15. So you got a smaller one, and you paid more. Well, Bethany did better on the hand. Let's go to the magnifying glasses. And I got it for $10. Mine was priced at $15, and I got it for $10. And yours was priced at $10, and you got it for $10. She wouldn't let me bargain. How much did you pay for your marbles? I paid $3, and they're originally $5. It has a split in the package, so we go back to condition. But just like that, it's easily worth $10. You did very well. That's right. You have to consider the condition of the item. This right here is what we call decorative. It has really no collector's value. But if it makes you happy, that's all that collecting really has to do. Well, it makes me happy, so I'm glad you got it. Tell me about the golf clubs. I think it was originally 10, and I got $2 off it. Made in the 1930s. It's got most of the handles still, but in that condition, that one's probably worth 50 to $75. Wait, what? Yes. Wow. This is the best buy of the whole day. Well, I think Bethany haggled better than Brian, but Brian, with that golf club, got the better deal. Well, I've got some for you guys to give to Ruff. <laughs> yes, dogs playing cards. What are they playing, go fish? Well, that was a lot of fun, and thank you, Gary. You're very welcome, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Bethany. All right, see you back at Studio G, Ruff. See you back at Studio G. Now we'll put the rackets to the test in a real game. I have a friend of mine here who played professional tennis who wants to hit some balls with you. That's true. Say hi to Tracy. Hi, hi to Tracy. Hi. You guys ready to hit some? Yeah. Wait, do we have to hit it against you? Yep. You two versus me. You ready to go? No. Yeah. Hey, we actually got the ball all the way to Tracy. Most unfair challenge since Willie raced a dolphin. These new rackets are definitely better than that old racket. Come on, Blossom. Watch it! Easy there, Blossom. You have to ace every serve. You did get a lot more balls to the target area than you did earlier with Ruff's racket. And how did that one feel? It was a lot easier. It felt like I had better control, and it wasn't as heavy, too. Much better for your game. Yeah. Ruff, I'm Thank sending them back to Studio G, new and improved. See you back yeah, at Studio, Studio G, G, Ruff. Thank you. Great job. Awesome rackets. Bye. Well, let's get our contestants back in here. This duo's challenge was full of high tension. Liza and Talia. Yeah. Hey! Welcome back, ladies. Nice rackets. Oh, yeah. Yes. Brains and a good eye were their weapons of choice. The bargain hunters, Brian and Bethany. Hey, hey guys. Hey, guys. Wow. Hey. Nice. Oh, stuff. I love that painting. It's nostalgic, collectible, and most importantly, decorative. Well, as Patrick Henry's dog once said, give me liberty or give me points. That works too. Points are awesome. We start with Talia and Liza. For the successful creation of a racket really better than my old one, 50 points for each of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh, and Liza, for going the extra mile and getting down to measure out the strings, you get 30 points. Yeah. yeah. Talia, for your unfettered reaction to Roger Federer. Roger Federer. Oh, my God. 35 points! Yes. Yeah. For grand totals out, that's 3,000. 80 points for Liza, 85 points for Talia. Yeah. Nicely done, ladies, nicely done. All righty, Brian, Bethany. I'm on a budget, so could you go and maybe eight? 
you found amazing bargains. I was wondering if you could sell it to me for 13. Now, you didn't find the lost helmet of victory I've been looking for all season, but you're still getting 85 points. Woo. Nice. Wow. But is that all the points this dog can be haggled for? No. What time is it? Bonus points. Yes, yes. And today's 10 bonus points goes to the contestant who spent $8 on golf clubs worth up to $75. This is the best buy of the whole day. Brian. Yes. Yes. Your eye for a bargain means with 95 points for yes. today's game winner. <laughs> now, Brian, I have here two identical objets d'art. That's French for really overpriced things that I bought and wish I hadn't. <laughs> Under one, a fabulous prize. Under the other, uh, something you'll think is overpriced, even though you're getting it for free. Which is it going to be, Brian? Object de art A or object de art B? A. 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 I pick A. A it is. Then, Brian, will you please retrieve your prize in the mailbox? <laughs> That's a terrible French accent. Ooh, it's an envelope. Read it. You have won a miniature golf outing. Good for you, plus five friends. That's yes. right. Five friends. Thank you, Dre. Happy golfing, Brian. From Studio G, I'm Ruff Ruffman. You're the Fetchers. We're out of here. Yes. See you next time, guys. Bye. Yes, take that, Spotnik. I beat him. Well, I mean, he got the date wrong, so he didn't show up. But if he had, boy, would he have lost big. Oh, and Chet's outside. He's being so cute. He's having his own little yard sale. Check it out. Got some good deals here. Uh, antique strudel maker. Got a lamp chair thingy. Some art. And Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the same junk I already bought. Uh, Chet, old buddy. <laughs> Can I have my $300 back? Chet? Want some strudel? Sensation, Mouse Grooming with Ruff Ruffman. I got the comb, it's in the house. I got the moose, I got the mouse. Mouse Grooming! Yeah! Ruffy Millard! What are you doing to that poor wee Mercy? Well, I need more grooming on Fetch in order to compete with all the cat grooming shows. Ah, you don't need to worry about that if we could only find the lost Ruffman family helmet of victory. But it's too dangerous to talk about here. We'll rendezvous in our secluded spot tonight. I'm sending you the map. Well, how will I get there if I can't drive? <gasps> I'll use my trusty tricycle. What? You don't think I can do it? Yes, I know it's hilly, but what else can I do? What bike would you use, Blossom? Ah! ah, we gotta finish that mouse grooming commercial. Chet, come here, buddy. Well, something has to be groomed on this show. You groom me? Uh, let's see, you've groomed me twice before, so that would be a no. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Life was missing its mystique, my squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and BAM! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro! They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed! Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great! And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. I'll get the fire extinguisher. And here come the contestants now! She has a weakness for souvenir shops. Get that girl a Studio G snowy paperweight. Hell yeah! He claims he dances 23 hours a day. Let's book it down with Isaac! There's a lizard in her house named Tui. Bethany! Is she an athlete? Well, she does play a little basketball. Oh, and some biking and hiking and skiing. Liza! He knows a slap shot from a hat trick because his entire family plays hockey. Brian! He's a little afraid of mice. Sterling! Let's get an update on the scores. Everybody holding steady. Bethany in sixth with 1,012 and a half points. Brian in fifth with 1,035. Liza in fourth with 1,040. Talia in third with 1,085. Isaac in second with 1,117 and a half. And Sterling still in first with 1,132 and a half points. Hello and welcome.
welcome to another incredible episode of the top-rated non-cat grooming show on the air. How you guys doing, Fetchers? We're, awesome. we're doing really good. You kids know about ratings, right? You know, like how many people watch a particular show, specifically this one? <laughs> But apparently the hot new trend is cat makeover shows. Now, frankly, I don't get it. I mean, you can groom a cat all you want, but at the end of the day, you still got a cat. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm getting pressure from above to add a little more grooming to fetch, and I refuse to groom cats on this program. And Chet's in hiding, so mice are out, and... Ooh, wait! I forgot about my Fetch 3000 grooming attachment. date with Charlene has just left the building. And now remembering why I forgot about the attachment. Liza, welcome to challenge number one. Yeah! Nice! Now listen, I've just put in a call to Weston and Moika. Now you won't be working with cats, mice, or dogs. Other than that, I'm making no promises. Your instructions are in the mailbox, so go fetch! All right, go for it. Take care. Bye. Bye. Challenge number two. Apparently, dogs are not encouraged to get driver's licenses. I have a special mission to try to retrieve the legendary lost helmet of victory tonight! I have to travel up and down mountains and I'm not sure which bike to take. My newfangled two-wheeler or my trusty old tricycle. So Bethany, Talia, Brian, yes. or you're going to find out. Everything you need to know is in that mailbox, so go fetch! Intro. I hope Bye it's not guys. something crazy. Bye guys! Bye! As determined by the Fetch 3000, Isaac and Sterling have stayed behind in the studio for today's show, but they'll be eligible to win points during the Halftime Quiz Show. Oh, nicely done, gentlemen. And that's because we promised that all the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the... Drawn Finale! For the four kids out on the challenges, up to 100 points are at stake in the... Drawn Finale! Hey, you three for three. So let's get up to date with Liza. Yeah. Weston and Moeka are? Try the chicken bar. Do you know where Weston and Moeka are? They may be over there. Does anyone know who Weston and Moeka are? Probably in the goat barn, which is out that door. Are you Weston and Moeka? Yep, hi. Weston is a champion goat groomer. Well, this is my goat, Moeka. Today I'm going to teach you how to show her and groom a goat. Grooming goats, man. This is awesome, bro. Liza's got to learn to take care of the goat, milk the goat, and show the goat in a grooming competition. And this is the goat that you're going to be uh, showing today. Anoche. Anoche is an Oberhasli. Oberhaslis are a Swiss breed. Fitting is the process of clipping the goat. Oh, good. We're into the grooming part. Cleaning up their ears, their eyes, their nose, and their butt. Okay. Ears, eyes, nose, and butt. Wait, what? Uh, it's biting me. She's nibbling. Goats don't have any top teeth in the front of their mouth. They only have bottom teeth. They have hard gums on the top of their mouth. Well, that'll get you a 50% discount at the dentist. She is about a year. She's called a yearling. <laughs> Ruff, I like the goat. Good, nice. good. Well, Anoche likes you. Let me just send an email to my friend Pecco. There we go. And send. Send. Send! Fetch 3000! Get away from my bird! Ah! Are you Pecco? Hi, guys. I just got a message from Ruff, uh, who says I'm supposed to tell you guys about bikes. Now let's go take a look at some bikes. Okay, okay. let's do it. Everybody has to sit on this side so your backs are to the bikes. I want you guys to take the markers without turning around, so no peeking. And you have to draw as many of the components of the bikes as you remember. Ah, no problem for my fetchers. Everyone knows the parts of a bike. Uh, there's the, um... I never really tried to draw a bike before. There's a wheel. How do you connect the back wheel? I just... Wait, where's the engine? It's hard to draw it when you don't have, yeah. like, a, a model. model. Yeah. Yeah. I ride the bike a whole lot, but I don't pay attention to where the things are. You just pedal. Hey, don't forget the bell. All kids love a good bell on a bike. Now we are uh, gonna go milk the goat. Ruff, I don't want to milk a goat. Oh, come on, Liza, it won't be that bad. The goal is to get as much milk as possible from here into the bucket. Now, have you ever milked a goat or a cow or anything? No? Weston, she has All no right. milking experience. See, Liza's been on the drinking end of the milking. You want to grab the top of the teat right here and pinch it so that all the milk is sealed in the bottom of the teat. And then you're going to want to squeeze it out. Doesn't that bother the goat? No, but they actually don't mind it because it relieves all the pressure that's on their udder right now. All right. Uh, you going to roll the little squeeze the heck of a camera Seal. job there, Tank. Seal it off. There you go. Hey, you got it. Come on, Liza. In the bucket, though. At this rate, uh, you're going to be here for at least an hour, maybe two. The show's a half hour, so we need to up the tempo on the milking. Maybe I can get some helpers to come help you out. Tag team milking. This is Danica. Whoa! Look at Danica! That goat's doing double time. How you guys 
doing? I know what I put on the bike, but I don't know where to connect them. Wow, those are pretty good. My drawing's almost as good. See? Oh. I think you guys have all of the right pieces, so maybe we should draw one big bike together. Let's start with a frame. There's a bar that goes across the top, and then there's a tube that comes down like that. There's a bar that comes down like this. A triangle in the back, so this is called a rear triangle. So the frame is just a bunch of triangles. Yeah, isn't it? Triangles are strong. That's exactly why they're triangles. The middle of the wheel has to attach right there. There's the axle. Axle. And so the wheel is going to look something like that. Go ahead and put some spokes in there. Look, more triangles. Is this where the seat is? Yes, there's a little post here, and then the seat sits right there. Could you make the seat a little bigger, please? <laughs> Needs to be a little uh, roomier for me. So the handlebars must come up here. And a little brake thingy. So maybe we should figure out where the pedals go. Well, I yeah. think they might be somewhere around here. Yeah. yeah. When you're pedaling, you have to somehow make the wheels of the bike turn. The chain. The chain, exactly. Yeah. So how does the chain t attach the pedals it's, to the wheel? It's near the back, but connects yeah. to the front. Oh, are there um, gears like right near the wheel, and then the chain goes around the gears, and so when you pedal, it turns the chain? Yes. It's like a wheel, except yeah. it has little chunks cut out of it. Yeah, so now the, where is the other one? On the front wheel? Mm. On the pedal. It has to be on the pedal because you have to connect the pedal to the wheel. So that means that the back wheel is the one that moves the bike? That's exactly right. So you don't get any power out of your front wheel. Rear wheel drive on these bikes. Front wheel is very lazy. Oh, oh, real bike time. That's, that's, okay. that's so different. So you did pretty well, right? There's the two triangles, see, and the gears, and the chain that connects the pedal to the back wheel, and the back wheel pushes the front wheel. Got it. Let's think a little bit about what gears do. So we're going to start with these tricycles that we have up here. <laughs> Just to see what it's like to ride something with no gears, we're going to have a tricycle race. Set. We have a race. Go. Heather up. And Bethany is in the lead oh. on her monster Woo. tricycle. But, oh, Talia with a late first. Oh. With a photo finish. Um, Bethany won by yeah. Bethany, the tricycle champion. If you had a race and you could pick one of these bikes instead of the trikes, what would you take, the trike or the bike? The bike. The bike. Why would you take the bike? Because it has, it has gears. You keep mentioning gears. Let's think about what gears do for you. The tricycle, let's say you turn the pedals one revolution, how many times does the wheel go around? Only once. They go around once. Only once. So this bike has got a big gear on the front and a small gear on the back. So what does that do for you in terms of pedaling? Um, because when you pedal around once, this uh -huh. bigger wheel spins, goes around once, yep. and then it makes a smaller gear go around more than once. So that it's for each, gear. yeah, so that for each pedal turn, um, the wheel spins more than once. That means you can go faster on a bike yeah. with gears. So when the big gear that's attached to the pedal goes around once, the little gear that's attached to the wheel goes around a bunch of times. And that's what I need. So the other thing that these bikes have is a flywheel in the back. If I stop pedaling, the wheel can still spin, which is different than what you had on the tricycles, right? Because on the tricycles, the pedals were connected directly to the wheel. Yeah. There you go. You say hi to Hattie. Hi, Hattie. Oh, so cute. Oh, look at this little one. Who's the widow baby goatee goat? Oh, you just your widow to blow a goatee. I do what you did. I'm not doing anything. I also like the goat, and I like the halftime quiz show. Back in Studio G with Sterling and Isaac. Gentlemen, let's brush up on the rules. Okay. I'm going to ask you ten questions. Each question is worth five points. You have 60 seconds to answer as many of those questions as you can. All right, you guys ready? We're ready. What geometric shape is used in a bike frame to ensure its strength? Triangle. Wow, true or false? Pedals are attached to the seat post of a tricycle. False. Good. False. What breed is a noche? Skip. True or false, you don't get any power out of your bike's back wheel. True, false. true. Fine, true. Then that is wrong. The chain connects gears attached to the blank and blank of a to bike. To the pedal and the back wheel. Yes. How old is a noche? A um, year. Yes. Name one way gears help you on a bike. They make, they make the wheels go around more times. Yes. Who is the championship goat groomer? Um, um, the, 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 starts with an M or something. We're going to pass. When would one pedal revolution make the wheel go around once? W when there wasn't any gears on it. Right. Which are qualities of a fit goat? A, a goat that has been milked, or B, trimmed hair and clean hooves? B. Yes. Go. Oh, we are out of oh. time. Let's check the Fetch 3000 and see how you did. Seven out of ten. That's 35 points. Oh, that was crazy. No, it wasn't that bad. All right, let's go over the ones that you did not get. You skipped what breed is Enoche Oberhasley. I can't pronounce that or spell that, so. Also, okay. true or false, you don't get any power out of your bike's back wheel. It was false. You don't get any power out of your front wheel. Because the front wheel steers because it's connected to the handlebars. Who is the championship goat groomer? That would be Weston. Good job, guys. It wasn't bad. Moving on. How's Liza making out at the farm? Well, as I've been known to say, let's go to fetch. Ah. <laughs> Ah, so, so clever.
Here we have our goat clipping tools. Set of clippers, clipper spray, so they stay cool. And we also have our brush. Okay, so you're gonna wanna go against the hair in nice, long lines. Do the goats mind getting their hair chopped off? In the summer, it gives them a nice, uh, much cooler coat. Wow, Lars is good at this. Go. She can join the Los Angeles Clippers. <laughs> We're doing really good, Liza. Your show is coming up pretty soon. You always want to make sure that you keep the blades flat against the goat and going upward against the hair. But right now, you're doing a very good job. Thank you. I like this. This is good. This is good. These cat grooming shows are going to be sweating bullets. Come on, Liza, get in there. Clip, clip, fetcher, clip. So what I want you guys to do is we have a bunch of bikes here, and I want you to tell me Every time I turn the pedals around once, how many times does the back wheel go around? Okay. It's problem solving time. My fetchers have to figure out how many times the wheel rotates when you pedal. If we put paint here, every time the paint hits the floor, it'll make a mark. It measures how many times the bike rotates by how many paint marks there are. You want to measure how many times does the wheel go around every time you turn the pedals, mm -hmm. right? So if you, just, if you stop pedaling and let it coast, then that's cheating. I think we should test a couple of bikes. Trike first, then do the single speed. Okay, there's paint involved. We're putting down paper to protect the floor because I will get the bill. I'm gonna put a blob of paint right there and then you can just roll it down. All right, that's a good idea. All right, so ready? Yeah. And Every paint mark is a wheel rotation. Yep. Talia counts how many times the Seven, pedal goes completely around two, and then she counts how many paint marks four, are on the paper. Nine, 10, 11. They're both 11. The tricycle has one pedal rotation per wheel rotation. Yeah because there's no gears to make it faster. One to one ratio? Yeah, so it's like a one to one ratio. What is a ratio? Um, it's like a comparison of two numbers. So for example, in here, what we're comparing is the number of rotations the pedal makes to the number of rotations that the wheel makes. Right? But you can use ratios to compare anything. Like if I had a bag of six oranges and two apples, then the ratio would be six to two, oh. if I'm the ratio of oranges to apples. Six oranges to two apples. That means for every three oranges, there's one apple. So we've got one incredibly handsome host, <laughs> guess who, and two non-handsome non-hosts. One to two ratio. What? Okay, and now what you want to find for me is the gear ratio on the single speed bike. Two. All right, two. 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 That's two and a half pedal two, rotation. Three, four, five, six. Paint marks for wow. about two and a half rotations. On the single speed bike, the pedals go around two and a half times, and that makes the wheel go around six times. So that is a, uh, thank you, Blossom, two and a half to six gear ratio. And if I pedal only once, the wheel goes around, uh, oh, 2.4 times. And that's the same ratio. If I'm riding a bike, I want to know if I turn my pedals around once, how far do I go, right? Because you notice on your trike, if you turn the pedals over once, you don't go very far. Right, because you only go, the wheel only goes around once. Whereas if you got on the, the blue bike over there, you turn the pedals around once and you go this long distance. Those trike wheels are so little, they have to turn 11 times to go the same distance as six wheel turns on the blue bike. All right, Liza, I know she looks really good. You've done an excellent job equipping her. You ready to move on to the hooves? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go get ready for our class. I'll be back in a little while. Why do you guys raise goats? I raise goats because I like them and they're very friendly. They're yes. a lot of fun to play with. They're really Definitely the babies. It's really nasty. <laughs> Ruff, maybe you should do this. Which, why, which part are we on? Oh, hi! We're sorry. Fetch with Ruff Ruffman is currently experiencing technical difficulties. Okay, Liza knows a little more than she needs to know about goat grooming, so we should be ready for this goat show. <laughs> What's that, Blossom? What? The goat show is a goat costume competition? Oh, Chet, go get a costume and, and get to Liza. Chet, I don't care if you use the Pony Express or a speedboat. Liza's competition is in five minutes and they need costumes. Pekka, how do you know all of this? Because I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at MIT. A bike savvy professor at MIT. Maybe she could improve on my guacamole droid. Let me call the professor. Hi, Rob. Professor. How's it going, Fetchers? Great. Listen, I'm hearing what you're saying about the two-wheeled bike being the way to go, but I need you to prove that it can tackle the kind of hills I have to ride over tonight. Let me just send a picture of it. Is that a BMX racetrack? Yeah, the BMX track. Oh, that's going to be yeah. awesome. And my friends, the Bad Apple cyclists are going to be there. Chad, I said speed boat, not speed goat. Ready for your competition, Liza? Yeah. Russ sent along your costume. 
It's a costume class. You and your goat have to dress up. Okay. Is this what I'm dressing my goat up with? Yes, that looks really good. Ah, the goat is starting to look slightly familiar. Okay, we're now ready to start the costume contest. And here come the contestants now. There's a ballerina, a glamour goat, an architect, a bathing beauty. There's Grandma Ruffman. And here comes Grandma Ruffman! Chat! Where did you get that costume? Ruffy, oh, one of my dresses was stolen, and my glasses and pearls, and my backup wig! I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm, I'm just, just borrowing that stuff. Why would you borrow that? It's for a goat. What? I'm sorry, Grandma. Great. That's just great. Well, next time when you can't find your favorite shirt, it's because I put it on a rhinoceros. And who's this supposed to be? This is Grandma Ruffman. They say that copying someone is the most sincere flattery. <laughs> I love my grandma! I have her on the show all the time! Ooh, right. Bad look. Bethany. Looking good in a helmet. And Talia growling at me. And there's Pecco, extreme professor. Here are the bad apples. Oh, man, going over jumps. Whoa, he caught air! How do you like them apples? The bad. Hey, hey, uh, ride? Yeah. When this gate comes up, you're just gonna place your front tire on it, put one foot down, and when the gate drops, just go. Okay. That's it. Just that's it. It's not scary, right? Yeah. Not scary. Ready? Watch your light. like she's sitting this one out. Thank goodness she's okay. Talia and Brian are in, and we are back on the track. We have first time rider medals for you guys, Thank since you. you guys did such a good job. Thank you. <laughs> Ralph, we're gonna go catch up with Bethany to give her her medals. Then we'll see you back at the studio. So thank you, so thank much, you, Pekka. This was so fun, you guys. Thank you, Professor of Bikes, and you guys. You know what? I say you're good apples. I'm nervous. My paws are sweating. The judge is going to announce the winner of the costume contest. Oh, cross your paws, Blossom. I'm gonna give Liza the blue ribbon for the best impersonation. Liza gets a ribbon for Grandma's Yay. costume. Oh, I am so proud. My first blue ribbon. Anoche, that's Grandma's dress. Oh, no, Jay, stop that. Oh, man, don't eat your glasses. Well, Liza, I hope you had a lot of fun today. Feel free to come back and visit any time. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. I got a goat roof, so see you back in Studio D. <laughs> I get it. That's a funny one, Liza. Stop chewing on her glasses. Back in Studio G with Sterling and Isaac. Of course. Here come our fetchers now. Right from the BMX track, Brian, Talia, hey, and guys. Bethany. Hey, guys. Welcome Zoom. back, guys. Wow. She should star in that new musical, Showgoat. Hey, well, everybody, let's hold out our plates and I'll dish out some points. Yeah! Talia, Bethany, and Brian, your incisive experiments got me all geared up for my own upcoming epic bike ride, and that gets you 55 points. Yes. And then you tackled an extremely scary-looking course. 30 points worth of guts. Yeah! And ladies, that was some crash. We're all good, it's all good. That's why it's a good idea to always wear a helmet. Now, yeah. Liza, your goat grooming. Put all the cat grooming shows to shame, in my yeah. opinion. Now, it didn't knock the new cat sensation hairball off the air, but for all your goat care and goat showing skill and gumption, 75 points. Yes. Yeah. So nicely done, everyone. But is that all the points a dog can no. groom? No. <laughs> What time is it? Bonus points! I have five points for the fetcher. The bonus points go to the fetcher who honored me by dressing a goat in my image. And so, <laughs> Liza, dear, we give you one million bonus points! <laughs> Grandma, we can't give a million points. Well, why not? That Liza's a doll and that Anoche was adorable. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll give her 15 bonus points. Well, that makes you, Liza, our daily winner! Yes! Yeah. Now, Liza, I have here two miniature bicycles made entirely out of goat hair and goat cheese. Thanks, Chet. 
They look great. <laughs> Under one hair and cheese bicycle, an amazing prize. Under the other, something as useful as a hair and cheese bicycle. Which will it be, bike A or bike B, Liza? B, A. 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 Normally, Liza, your prize is in the mailbox. Not today. You just need to sit tight, Liza, because here comes your prize! Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> nice! <laughs> That's so right. so... <laughs> Oh, squeaky toy! Oh, and a bell! Oh, I love that stuff! <laughs> yes! The Rough Cycle! Now, with the Rough Cycle, you'll have the coolest bike on the block. Definitely rough. All right, guys, that's it from Studio G. We'll see you next time. I'm Ralph Ruffman, pedaling away to the mountaintops in search of the helmet of victory. Bye, guys. Bye, Ralph. You need a helmet. I know this will fit. I biked all the way to my meeting and back. Well, princess, we did find the helmet. I think. I don't know. Let me check. I'm feeling something. Oh, I'm definitely feeling something. Quick, how many more people saw the show this week? 600% kid increase. Yes, it works. Oh, kids meaning young goats. We went from one to six. Great. <laughs> Clearly not the helmet of victory. But just you wait, Blossom. I'll find that helmet yet. The future of Fetch hangs in the balance. Hey, I'm sending the fetchers to a freshly mowed lawn and they'll watch grass grow. Yeah! Ah, oh, I know, I forgot about today's show because the next show is the finale and... Ruffy, I've done it! I found the location of the legendary Helmet of Victory! Sorry, Uncle, I'm not falling for it. No, it's true! I found the legendary Helmet of Victory prophecy! It reveals the exact location of the helmet! It's safely locked away on this briefcase! Why, it's so safely locked that I've forgotten how to open it. Wait a minute, if you can't open it, how do you expect to find the helmet? Well, uh, uh... Your fetchers can figure it out. And then they'll use the prophecy to find the helmet. I do it myself, but I've got worms. Oh, no, are you okay? Eh, that's me pet worms. I can't leave them alone overnight. They're only babies. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and BAM! My destiny was calling me! Pitched my vision for a show, they loved it, thought I was a pro! They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed! Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants, all were great! And now I'm on the road to fame, I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the top. I don't like vacuums, but we're gonna need them. And here come the contestants now! His sister's dog can jump six feet in the air! Action! She claims she has a very sensitive nose! Hell yeah! She once went kayaking and fended off snakes and snapping turtles! Bethany! He's an expert at the hula hoop, Brian! She has a pet frog named Porcha, Liza! He wishes he could get eggnog year-round, Starling! Let's get an update on the scores. Bethany in sixth place with 1,097 and a half points. Brian in fifth with 1,120. Liza in fourth with 1,130. Isaac down to third with 1,152 and a half. Sterling down to second with 1,167 and a half. And Talia in first with 1,170 points. Hello and welcome to another episode of Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Hey! Today's episode needs to be confidential. At long last, I have a lead on tracking down one of the most legendary artifacts of all time. Competition with all the cat shows on TV. I need to find that helmet. Ruffy, have you told them? Hey, Uncle. I was just about to, Uncle. Well, hurry up, man. The ancient prophecy will explain how to find the helmet of victory. It's a set of instructions that'll tell them what to do. Now, I've reserved a train to take the fetchers to the town where the helmet is. Whoa. But now you can't look at the prophecy, because I locked it in this briefcase and, uh, well, I forgot how to open it. I haven't been getting much sleep lately because of my baby worms. 
How are we supposed to find it if we aren't gonna be looking at it? Excellent question, Bethany. If they can't look at it, how will they get the helmet? Whenever I look a briefcase, I always leave myself clues in the unlikely event that I forgot how to open it. Okay, Uncle, so you leave yourself clues. Check the train. It's riddled with riddles. I'm sending the briefcase new. Jack will take it to Studio G. He's a good little moosey. Okay, well, Liza, check the car. Okay. There's the briefcase. Oh, wow. Right. You won't be able to open it till you've solved all the riddles and reached your destination. You'll be meeting up with Inspector Yellow, and he'll provide the extra security you'll need. But be careful. There are people out there who will stop at nothing to get that helmet. Then let's not lose another moment, Uncle. Brian, Isaac, Liza, Bethany, Sterling, and Talia. All of us. And I should just say all of you. It would save me time. The rest of your instructions are in the mailbox. Go! Thanks! What a victory for you. Bye, Rob. Bye, Good guys. Luck, guys. Bye, Be careful. If their mission is successful, the Fetchers are eligible to win up to 100 points in the Triumph Tally. So let's check in on them now. Hey, it's Mr. Conductor. Here come my Fetchers. All aboard! All aboard, guys! You must be the Fetchers! Yeah. Welcome aboard! Oh, thank you! Have you seen Inspector Yellow? Who? Inspector Yellow. Inspector Yellow has been tied up. What? Tied up? I am Inspector Dijon. Luffy, I don't know this Inspector Dijon. Oh, he's an inspector. We oh, should be fine. Let us take the case into the train when it's a secure place to put the case. Okay. Take the case to a secure place. I'm glad this guy's here. Ruff, this guy's creepy. I don't trust him. I hired Inspector Yawa. Uh, the helmet of victory is almost within my grasp. Exactly, uh, Inspector. I just got to get the features to unlock the locks. Yeah. That's right. We need to yeah. unlock the locks. Hey, you okay there, buddy? Who's this guy? Ruffy, that's the engineer. He's got to drive the train. I don't see This way, this way. And we're walking. And we're walking. Uh, 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 the case. May I have the case? Hi. Because I'm going to put it in a secure place. Don't worry, Liza. Yes. He's going to take good care of that case. We have three locks. Word lock, we the number lock, we've got the key lock. Word lock, number lock, and key lock. Ah, oh, yes, three locks. I remember now. Oh, no, 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 it is going to be safe. Relax, Fetchers, you're dealing with a professional. There's a nice secure place. I don't trust him. Uncle, you're just too suspicious. Seven event 502, we are clear to proceed north. So we need to be looking for clues because I am clueless. Isaac, Liza, you search the front of the train. Bethany, Dahlia, you go search in the middle of the train. And Brian and Sterling, you search the back of the train. All right, Fetchers, go fetch some clues! Bethany have found cards? We're looking for the number combination. Okay, this riddle must be to the number lock. Yeah. On the number block, do you remember how many numbers there were? Four. Four, four numbers? Yeah. So then we're looking for four numbers and we need to find the right order. Oh, this one looks hard. Well, you left it. I knew. Oh, look, it goes eight, two, three, four. Which is like one, two, three, four. These numbers aren't the numbers of the lock, but it just shows what order it is. So this would be the first number. Yeah. And this would be the second number, third number, and fourth. Flip them all over. Let's see if there's like a pattern. So it's kind of obvious that there's one number yeah, in here think... that's different. So three, all of these were black except that one three. I think in each one we're looking for one that is different from all the other ones. So three so is the, the first, first number. One, yep. So three is the first number. And then the second one, three. these are all even numbers, but this is yep. the only odd number. The seven's different because it's the only odd, it's number. The odd so number. Yeah, so that's what makes it different. Okay, seven is the second number. What about this third pile? It's obviously the nine in this one because it's the only It's the only club, club. yeah. Three, seven, nine. Oh, good. There's Inspector Dijon. Oh, um, the four was... Guys, you're looking awful suspicious towards the inspector. You know he's here to help us, right? I don't know about that, Rufy. You know how the jack goes after the ten and then queen? Yeah. Okay, five, six, seven. We don't have an eight. So maybe the number that's missing in the order is the yeah. number that we need. There's seven. no eight. Yeah, there's no eight. This one would be an eight. Which means the combination must be three, seven, nine, eight. Three, seven, nine, eight, of course. That's the exact number of baby worms I have. That's why I left that clue. The briefcase is still secure. See, I told you. 3798. Does 3798 work? Okay, please, no. please. Yes! It does! It did it! That's one down, two to go, Ruffy. And quickly put the briefcase back. Good move, gals! Okay, so we're looking for 
clues. Okay, you're looking for the next clue. I think I found it. Play the first five, five notes and you'll have the combination. Play the first five notes and you'll have the combination? Wait, I don't see a piano or anything. I think we have to play these. We have to play a song on the bottles? She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Oh, I know that song. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. I guess we fill them with water and just like blow on them. Wait a minute, these bottles have markings on them. So we have two letters, one here and one here. The letters on the bottles will spell out a word. So this clue must be to the word lock. If we fill it up to the Y mark, and then it matches up with one of the notes on, she'll be coming round. Then the first is Y. Form water on a train. This should be interesting, Ruff. Well, I'm sure it's a smooth train. I mean, those are some fancy cars. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, wow. Keep going, keep going. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I hope it's not cold. Okay, I think it's to the Y. All right, so they think the first letter is Y. Okay, so. Here comes the inspector. What the hell are we doing here? Making any progress? Lots of progress. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. I don't trust him. So what's the first note? Okay, shell. Okay. okay, sounds like sounds like shell, shell, be shell, shell. <sighs> that note is off. I guess it's not Y, so maybe it's T. Almost. Yep, that's it. <sighs> She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. So T is our first note. Now on to the second bottle. R. R. Okay. Okay, stop. <sighs> Chilby, chilby. Yeah, that sounds That like sounds it. really good. Right. Okay, T R. Okay, now we have a choice between the letter U and the letter O. Okay, stop. Okay, they're stopping in the U. <laughs> chilby coming. Sounds right. right. So T R U. True. T -R -U. Or tra. So what do you think makes it be like higher or lower? I think it's because how much water is in the bottle affects how much air is in the bottle. The more water, the less air, so the less air it can vibrate, which makes the sound. When Liza and Isaac blow over the top of the bottle, it makes the air in the bottle vibrate and make noise. How much air is in the bottle affects how high or low the note is. All right, so next one, N. Okay, they're filling to the end. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. These two notes, the third and the fourth note, have to be the same note. Come in, come in. So we don't have to play all of them. That doesn't sound the same. This is a lot deeper. Yeah. That's the S. So that's more water. Patience. Yes, that's awesome. That sounds the same, so it's T-R-U-S. So far, it looks like it's gonna sub trust. So it's now either trucin or trust. I think it's gonna be trust, but we should just try. They're going up to the T. If it's T, it's trust. That sounds pretty good. So should we try all of them? <laughs> wow, that sounds perfect. The letters on the bottles match up with the song. The secret word is trust. They solved it! A code is trust. T. T. Where's the T? There's a U. S. Okay, we got it. Woo! They did it! That's two logs down, Rupi! Oh, it's a good thing I left all these clues. You know, these should be ringing a bell for me by now. The caboose should be back here. Now it's up to Sterling and Brian to find the key. Hi, hello. I'm Mrs. Kitchen. Diner? Oh, I'm starting to get hungry. We're looking for something that has a key or a hint of a key. Right, right, the key. Hey, think there's any Chinese food back there? I made some brownies for you. No, I can't have brownies. That's chocolate. This is key lime pie. Key lime pie. What do you think? What about key lime pie? Because there's key in it. It's a fork. Key it's lime fork. pie. Oh, wait a minute. It's coming back to me now. Oh, find it. Uh, you found a key. Find the key, uh. Key lime pie. I always hide me keys in key lime pie. Man, I'm starving. I better get these guys a call. Hello? Hey, Choo Choo Charlie, it's Ruff. Here, uh. These cakes and pies are making me hungry. The Vet 3000 has pinpointed the location of a great Chinese restaurant. The train will be going past there any minute now. Do me a favor, will ya? Have the engineer stop the train, you guys hop off and get me some boo shoe, and then get back on the train, okay? All right. You don't expect them to stop the train for Chinese food. Control that. Ryan, Sterling, bring me Mushu! All right, fine. Hey, hey, what is that? Hey, that's my walkabout! What is my walkabout doing by the train tracks? 
Wait a minute, the engineer's stopping for him. Ooh, that Chinese restaurant's around here somewhere. Oh, Why did he stop? Wait, we're stopped. Oh, it's okay, rough Chinese food then. Yeah, and then we'll get right back on the train. Wait, he's trying to get on the train. Oh, he can't uh, fit on the train. Uh -huh. What? Maybe oh they... Whoa. Hi. 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 Hey, something has stopped the train. I need you to go find out what has stopped the train. Right. Okay, guys, guys, let's go. All right, guys, do what the inspector says. So what has happened to my plan? Wait, wait, plan? Did you say plan? What plan? Oh, look, there's your restroom. Wow, that was lucky. I think we should try and see if anything went in front of the tracks. Okay, the fetchers are going to check around the front of the train to see what's going on. Ruffy, I don't like the look of this man. My plan is coming together. What plan? What is this about a plan? Hey, get one more luck to unlock. What is he up to? There's nothing there. Nothing Come on, guys, go back. What is going on here? You got your Chinese food, Jeff. Wow, that was quick. Thanks, guys. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you hold on? My fetchers still have to get on the train. My fetchers still have to get on the train. Wait, why, why is the train rough? What? what? Run, 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 run. Run. No. Oh, there's the walkabout. He's on the caboose. And now it's raining. And now it's raining. My food shield. Yeah. No, go. That is not good enough. Ryan and Sterling still have the key to the last lock. Poor Sterling and Brian, left along the side of the tracks. Their parents are going to be so upset. I hope this helm is a victory thing is worth it. It's totally worth it. It's, it's very important, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, look, oh, the police. Look, the police. Are you the kids from the train? Yeah. yeah. FBI. Ooh, FBI. We've been trailing Dijon for months. He's trying to steal the helmet of victory for himself. What? Oh, What's his feelings about that guy? I told you I did not trust him, Ruby. It's supposed to be Inspector Yellow. We're taking you guys to the bridge to meet the train to rest Dijon's son. <laughs> Get to me, engineering. Oh, good. The inspector's gonna call engineering and stop the train. Is the bridge up? Yeah, the bridge is up, just like you wanted. What do you mean, like you wanted? Why would you want the bridge up? The fetcher should have the case unlocked soon. And we can make our escape at the bridge. Make the escape at the bridge? What's he talking about? <gasps> Wait, Dijon raised the bridge to make the train stop? And then he's gonna sneak away with the briefcase with nobody noticing? Agent walkabout, agent walkabout. Better the news. Agent walkabout? Whoa. I, I think it's trying he's to trying to say something. Uh, run, 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 up, run, run up. What's the problem? It's all right. I speak walkabout. Excuse me. Train? Okay. Train's in danger. Huh? Bridge? Bridge is up. Okay. What do you mean the bridge is up? The bridge. The bridge is up. That's what we were trying to say. I've got to get the instructions to lower it. Run, right. sir, run. We got to lower the bridge. Dijon, it's too late to stop the train. We have too much momentum. So one more thing. The door has been booby-trapped by Dijon with a laser alarm system. A laser alarm system? Oh, looks like the laser beam starts there, bounces off one mirror, then another, and hits the target. The laser beam covers the entire door. How are they going to get through? If you interrupt the laser beam for more than two seconds, the control panel will lock, and you won't be able to lower the bridge. If they touch those lasers, they won't be able to lower the bridge. How are we going to get through the lasers, then? I've got the tools to help you right here. Baby powder? In a mirror. Well, don't I look good? Good luck, guys. What? Don't just leave them there? Uh, agent? Agent? Look, the control panel's right there. Right. Okay, there's a control panel, but they gotta get by those lasers. The lasers are hitting the mirrors, but it doesn't, it's not going through the air. Well, maybe because lasers are kind of light, so that you can't see it and it's like in the air, but if you put it against like a liquid or solid, you can see it. That's what the baby powder's for. We could use the solid to look at the light. Brian and Sterling are going to shake out some baby powder. Oh, okay, I see it. I see it. And when the light hits the little solid pieces of powder suspended in the air, they'll be able to see where the laser beam is. That's so here. here. To the opposite end. It's going like that because it's in the solid. So how are we going to... Oh, the mirror! We can use a mirror to um make the laser point to the target, and then we can just step over it. Okay. Good idea, Brian! Redirecting the laser so you can pass through. So we need to bounce the beam off the mirror to get it in the target so you can jump over it. But it can't not hit the target for two seconds. Count for me and see if I get there. 
One, two. Laser light is more orderly than light from a flashlight. So that's why Brian and Sterling can make the beam fit into that little hole. And, and just step, step, over. step over. And Sterling nice. leaps over the beam. Yeah. Yes! Now Sterling will hold the mirror for Brian. And Brian uh, only steps over the beam. All right, we're in. The train is going so fast. Here are the instructions to lower the bridge. And here's the radio to contact the tower. I'm going to go get help. What? What does this mean? They're like symbols. Stop. Run. These guys don't know how to lower a bridge. Okay, what are the directions? Just Just lower okay. the bridge, right? We gotta contact the bridge. Contact the bridge. Bridge operator. Bridge operator. We need your help. You need to lower the bridge. We have no idea how. It's Brian and Sterling. Hey, okay, yes. We'll catch up later. Let's go. Okay, Brian, Brian, you have to hurry. We have the instructions to lower the bridge. Okay. We'll tell them. The first instruction is move the power selector to normal. It's a square. It's a square. Move it to normal. Next one. Move the span motor selector. Span motor selector. Done. Okay, they're supposed to move faster than this. Now turquoise circle, and it's release the machine brake. Release the machine brake, do it. Number five is a yellow square. Yellow square. Set the span to the lower position. Lower position, guys. Done. Oh, bless them all, mate. The sound horn. Press the run button. Press the run button. Suspense is killing me, Rob. Oh. Wait a minute, look, Uncle, the bridge is starting to lower. Yes! Put the rail lock to neutral. Neutral! The very last one, set the machine brake. Do it, do it, do it! Will it lower in time? Yeah! It did, right? You did it, you did it! We did it, guys! Yeah! We yeah. did it! The bridge is doomed! They're all yeah. dead! Oh, the train didn't crash into the river! Wow! That would have been, that would have been really bad. Yes, good job, Sid. Thank, thank you guys so much, you totally saved us. No problem, guys. Yeah. Great job, Brian and Sterling, you saved the day. Oh, guys, and we also learned from the police that Dijon is a bad guy. We oh, knew it, we knew it, guys. Yeah, like I've been saying. Dijon, FBI. <laughs> Man, everybody's in the FBI. I want to be FBI. We thought you could get away with it, huh, Dijon? And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for the Fetchers and that meddling dog. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> you mean, like, the walkabout or, or me? I can meddle. Ruff wants you back on the train for instructions. Pete, let's get that. All right, let's go. Back on the train, train guys. Wow, an unprecedented moment in Fetch history. Triumph tally time on the train. I see that you have the lock case. Two of the locks are open. That means we have one more lock to go. Blood, Dad, not open the lock box. Wait, Sterling. Lyra. I might have booby trapped it. I don't remember. I need more rest. It's hard to bottle feed over 3,000 worms, you know. Okay, we'll wait till you get off the train and we have our experts analyze it. Triumph tally time! Yeah! We're going full steam ahead, We're staying on track, hard. and saving the train with no formal training. Yeah! 85 points for everybody! Yeah! But is that all the points a dog can give? No! What time is it? Bonus points! We're coming up with a cool way to see the laser beam using baby powder. That's what the baby powder's for. We could use the solid to look at the light. Five bonus points go to Brian! Yeah. Brian. That means Brian with 90 points. You're today's daily winner. Yeah. Now, Brian, I have your two identical engineering caps. Under one of these caps, there's a fantastic prize. And due to the hazardous nature of today's challenge, there's a fantastic prize under the other cap, too. So, which cap will it be, A or B? I'll pick B. All right, Brian, I'm sending the prize to the mailbox. Ruff, there's no mailbox. mailbox. You're on a train. Man, how am I going to get you the prize? Do not worry, Ruffy. I always leave myself a prize to open after I've solved all me clues. A reward, you know. <laughs> Brian, check around, lad. Right there. Oh. Ah, oh. oh, that's it. It's in the hat box. Very nice oh. box. That's a chew, chew, chew toy. <laughs> I am clever. Enjoy it, lad. You'll get some good chewing out of that one. Well, so much for a good prize. Sorry, Bri. Would have been better if you were Doug. Uh -huh. All right, Fetchers. 
When the train comes to a stop, you guys get off the train with the case. And at that point, the Fetch Grand Finale will begin. So until next time, yeah. take yeah. care, Fetchers. We're going to find that helmet of victory. So listen, Bobby, I know how you can make it up for missing my birthday. A helmet of victory. Darling, my birthday comes before hers. You owe me special present. Sheesh, sometimes relatives are a real handful. Hey, what you drawing there, Chet? Chet, you too? This finale's gonna be tricky. With that helmet, I'll never be a woozer again. A loser? Woozer! Scruff, leave Glenn alone. Anyone need tickets to the finale? Yo, I got primo seats for cheap. Blah, if it's television, you don't need tickets. Simple Blossom, the Fetchers protected a locked briefcase from the master criminal in disguise, Inspector Dijon. And the briefcase contains the answer to finding the helmet of victory. So the Fetchers now are on a train chartered by my uncle heading to... I have no idea. Uncle! I think it's safe enough to tell you where that train is heading now. Old Sturbridge Village. The tune that time forgot. Your ancestor, old Jebediah Ruffman, was the last to possess the helmet of victory. Deciding the helmet was too dangerous, he left it in Old Sturbridge. Oh, so the briefcase contains a map showing where the helmet is. Nay, it contains Jebediah's prophecy. Okay, so no map? Prophecy. Prophecy. Well, Blossom, this is the grand finale. We have just one show to determine the grand champion and get the helmet of victory. I want that helmet. Not that helmet, Chet. Life was missing its mystique by squeaky toys. It lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam, my destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find, to their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show, and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. Uh, Blossom, does Chet have a pilot's license? Ah, uh, here come my fetchers. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Open it up. There it is! Oh, hi! The prophecy, Ruffy! Don't touch it, Brian! We is need it, Brian? it exposed to the air for at least one minute. Well, that's just enough time to go over the standings. Yeah! yeah. With 1,255 points, she's in first place, and that's just how she likes it. Tell ya! Yeah. With 1,252 and a half points in second place, Sterling! Yeah. Yeah. At 1,237 and a half points in third place, Isaac! Yeah. At 1,215 points in fourth place, Liza! Yeah. With 1,205 points in fifth place, Brian! Yeah. And at 1,182 and a half points, don't count her out just yet, Bethany! Hi, hi. Now, let's get to the business at hand. The legend states that the helmet can only be claimed by the two who are most worthy. Okay, Fetchers, you've been dropped off in Old Sturbridge Village. Now, the helmet has been somewhere in this village for 200 years. It's been guarded by the dangerous General So, and the helmet can be claimed only by the two people most worthy. This is also the grand finale. Yeah! A grand champion must be decided today. And the winner will have their portrait hanging next to the portraits of our three other champions on the Fetch Wall of Fame. You can't have a grand finale competition and find the helmet. What are you going to do? The, uh, prophecy will tell us what the challenges are, and then the Fetchers will find me the helmet of victory. <laughs> Let's see what this prophecy has to tell us. First, pigs and cows must fly, must fly. On the shoes of a horse, don't ask me why. When ring it by pig or cow, and drive it away, so hop to it now. Okay, that part of the prophecy makes uh, no sense. Uh, cow and pig, shoes of a horse. Horseshoe, like horseshoe, like horseshoe, like horseshoe, like horseshoe. Can't you see, Ruffy? It's a game of horseshoes. But we're needing a pig and a cow. Pig and a cow. Ah, I've got it. Fetchers, I have arranged to have 
some outfits for you. Just look for the stagecoach. Brian, Bethany, since you're in fifth and sixth place respectively, Brian, you will be the cow. <laughs> Bethany, you will be playing the role of the pig. Good luck, guys. Did we get in this? Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Which way? <laughs> Here we go, fetchers. What is this stuff? Wow, you guys look much better. Yeah, thanks. Elimination round number one. In those basins are horseshoes. Brian and Bethany, you need to fish out the horseshoes from the basins and throw them at the stakes. The first to get a ringer moves on. Now a ringer happens when the horseshoe wraps around the stake completely. If you complete this challenge, I am, I mean we, are one step closer to the helmet of victory. Ready? Yes. Set. Go! Throw Piggy! Pig! Oh, Brian Milan! Again! Yeah. And she throws! Oh, look at the arm on that pig! Come on, guys, you can do it! That's it, let's go, Moo Cow! Ah, oh, she missed! Just put more of a buck into it! Oh, this the action! Ah, so what? to see how amazing you were this whole season. You were really awesome. Thank you for being on the show, Bethany. Blossom, roll the tape. It's not that bad. My arms are tired. <laughs> yeah! Bethany, yes! Bethany, you're gonna get to watch the rest of the proceedings from the comfort of Studio G. Under my careful direction, Chet is transforming Studio G as we speak, and it's going to be fantastic! So, Bethany, we will see you back in Studio G. Brian, you have earned the chance to go up against Liza in the next grand finale elimination round. Okay. Triumphant pig or conquering cow. Find ye an ox and get thee a plow. Compete by completing the furrow that's straighter. And five become four, you'll learn the rest later. Ah! What's a furo? Oh, this one makes no sense either. Furrow! It's a trench made in the soil by a plow. You know how you like attach a plow to an ox yeah. and then you plow the fields? Yeah. They're gonna have to compete by plowing a field. Ah. Is the helmet in a field? Well, I need that helmet. Go, go to the field. Ah. There's our ox. Good day. Good work, fetchers. Good day, sir. I've been waiting for you. The contest today involves guiding a plow as it is pulled through the ground by our mighty oxen. We will judge based on who has the straightest furrow. The winner will advance to elimination round number three. Brian, since you're in fifth place, you're going to go first. I hear them. On your marks, get set, plow! Yeah. Oh, that's it, lad. Never thought I'd be seeing a cow driving an ox. Don't fall down. Easy, Brian. Whoa! Oh, Brian's plow came out of the ground. Not good. Go, Brian, yeah, Brian. go! Nice recovery. Yeah. That's yeah. better a lot. Nice and straight. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's see how Brian did as he looks back at his path. Awesome! And now it's time for Liza. Are you ready? Yep. Get set. Go! There you go, Liza. Oh, that plow, Liza. Oh, that plow. There you go. Harder than the hooks are up. Ah, they'll be blunted squash. Right, you did it! Not too bad. Both of you did awesome. Yeah, But it's right. not up to me. Ah, look at the way they're analyzing it. Those are professionals. Both of you had very, very straight furrows. So what it comes down to is the number of times the plow popped out of the ground and skipped over some dirt. Liza, the plow popped out of the ground twice for you. And Brian, it popped out three times. And this makes Liza our winner of the plowing yeah. competition. Liza, you're moving on to the next round! What can I say, Bri? You were such an awesome fetcher, and you will always be an awesome fetcher. Roll the tape, Blossom. Run, 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 and open. Cha -cha. I'm an official farmer. Indestructible butterfly. What? Have you seen Gamma Ray guy? <laughs> um, yeah. Ryan, you go and relax with Bethany back in Studio G, buddy. Is that cheese? Chad, why is Bethany wearing Swiss cheese on her head? Chet's Cheesy Cheese Spa? Chet, you set up a cheese spa? Hey. 
Tiger! Tiger! Hey! Bye-bye! And now, without the third part of the prophecy, we're getting so close to the helmet of victory. Oh, I can just taste it! Now, four turns into two against two, and Old Sturbridge sees something strange and new. Corn-carrying carts that comes in a box, and powered by light, no horse, no ox. The swifter chariot will bestow the means to lure away General Tso. Okay, and yet again, I have no idea what this means. So I think now what we split teams? up into two teams. Corn carrying carts, powered by light, no horse, no ox. So maybe like, there's a light that we have like to put power. in. Like a solar power, solar power. Profit, they have to construct carts that draw power from the sun. And they have to hold three ounces of cracked corn. You guys head back to town. Let's I'm sending Tank back out with supplies and we'll meet you there. It's corn, because we have to carry it. Elimination round number three. The contest must now be two against two. You're going to have to draw quill pens. Two are orange, and two are blue. Yes! It looks like Talia and Sterling will be the blue quill team, and Isaac and Liza will be the orange quill team. You'll have to construct a cart that draws its power from the sun in order to haul three ounces of cracked corn. All the materials you need are on the benches to your left and right. Okay. Cool. The two who build the Swifter Chariot will go head to head in the final bench face off! Nice! Let's build those carts! Yeah. Okay, this, I think it's a car and the solar panel yeah. I think goes on it. This is the solar panel. What this is doing is it's collecting all the light from the sun and it's converting it into energy. It attaches here, the wires attach. Yeah. Hey, solar panels! Like on my cousin Roof's doghouse. They convert light into electricity. It's a mirror. Yeah. It's a mirror for solar power. Maybe so we can reflect light. the sunlight off this and make it stronger. On the laser light challenge, do you remember we used like the angle? Good thinking, Talia. You can reflect light just like you did on the laser light challenge. So what do we want to hold? If it holds weight down on that, then it'll go a lot slower and we need a lot of speed. I, I think we should do this one because it's light. Hey, so do you want to test it out? I think the racetrack is behind us. It gets stuck in the cracks. If we put some of the rubber bands around the wheels, would that help at all? Maybe they'll act like tires because they are rubber. I bet the rubber will add more friction between the wheels of the road, like in the racing challenge. OK, the small wheels. Want to just put like some tape on it? Maybe the tape can add friction, too. Well, maybe the high plate's affecting it. So let's just test it without that. And of so course, wait, now it doesn't work. Maybe we should tape like the bigger wheels. So I think if we kind of like tape these over like it has here, see how it's like a flat surface? then it'll roll over just like when those roll over. Okay, they added rubber bands for more grip, but the wheels are still getting stuck. Liza and Isaac are gonna replace the rubber bands with tape, because it's flatter. Here go. Yes! Okay, you got sunlight for power and tape for traction. Now let's check it on Talia and Sterling. What if we put this tape on the wheels to make friction? Well, that's the same idea as the other team. All right, let's test it out. It's going, but it's really slow. Okay, nice, good. but how are they going to hold the corn? Maybe the corn's supposed to go on here, Sterling. Use this, it's really light. Stick it on. Yeah, that tastes oh, oh, good. Okay. Talia just spilled some corn. Uh, and then it gets stuck. This is frustrating. So maybe we should replace the tape with a rubber band. Talia wants to try the rubber bands. These rubber bands are like acting as tires. Yeah, like the tire tread things. It creates like traction, which is like gripping and stuff. And so it like pulls it along. Well, let's see if they have more luck than the other team. So try to get it in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Please work. Yay, it's going to Oh. OK, guys, the actual race is going to be on the benches, so you have two minutes left. I'm going to go get the corn. My guess is the pan will probably make it harder because that's adding weight. My idea is we take one of the plastic cups, yeah. so that's a lot more balanced. Probably lighter, too. We can even take this just around there, and then it can pick up all the extra sun and bounce it back. The pie plate might actually reflect more light onto the solar panel. I mean, it's moving. Cool. We did it! OK, the orange team looks ready to race. We're going to prop up our solar panel with this so it faces the sun. It gets all the energy it can. All right, ready? OK. It's turning a little bit. Oh, shall ya? <laughs> what, do you got the spills today? It's not quite straight, so it's turning. I think this is a little not straight. I think we need more tape. Let's try it. Please don't fall off the edge. It's Yay! not going off. We did it! All right, testing is now over. We have two solar mobiles. You went with similar designs. It's time to see which will win in the great cracked corn carrying cart race. When I say go, the sun takes over and will send your cart over the finish line. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yes. Yep. On your marks, get set, go! Go, 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 go. I'm just really slow. Crap. Go, 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 go
Dahlia and Sterling's cart seems to be in the lead. Are the rubber tires better than the tape? Oh, it's turning, though. But wait! Oh! It's pulling to one side! No, it's gonna fall! It's gonna go oh, no! Oh, Talia spills the corn one last time! There is gonna win. Yeah, guys! There's the finish line! Yeah. Yeah. And we have a winner! Yeah. Yeah. You two are now going head-to-head -head in the Fetch Final Face-Off! Great job, Talia and Sterling. We'll see you back at the Cheesy Cheese Spa. Bye. Bye, guys. It's now time to read the last part of the prophecy. General Tso, she's the helmet's protector, and only corn has the power to affect her. Bring her the corn, that's your last chore, then claim the ancient helmet of lore. Ah, this one I get. Bring your cracked corn-carrying cart, and let's go find that general. She's got the helmet. Hey, do you know where General Tso is? Thank you. Thanks. The general's in the barn. The helmet of victory! The helmet of victory! On there's General So. Where? Behind that chicken? General So is the chicken. General So is a chick. General So is a chicken? A chicken! Night, now, now, Rov. Uh, she's a very powerful chicken. Uh, all right, all right, Fetchers. Distract the general with the cracked corn and grab that helmet. Right, this is for you. I'm going to put that there. And we're going to take this off. Good. Yeah. Okay, now don't open that box. Okay. That helmet's fine, you know. <laughs> uh, back to Studio G. Hey, guys. Welcome to the cheese spa. Yeah. Are you guys okay? Are you comfortable? <laughs> yeah. And these cheese hats are pretty cool. Wait, Rufy, look. Whoa. That's yeah. What's up, man? Welcome you back, back you guys. Know. Now just put the helmet box on the wagon over there and uh, nobody touch it, okay? <laughs> Why don't you come around front to the monitor? Sterling, you rock the mic and the guitar this year, buddy. I am gonna miss you. Right. Blossom, roll the film. Step three, you're out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Control him, Sterling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> Sterling. Sterling, that was awesome. And now we move on to Talia. Tals. Talia, you were fetcherific. You were fetch-tastic. You were fetch... Ah, just roll the tape, Rofi. It says it better than you. Roger, better. Oh, my God! <laughs> Ralph, this is so gross. Ew. Ralph, this is disgusting. This is fun. You are now the incredible fox. <laughs> oh, this is cute. Ralph, I love you. That was awesome. <laughs> Talia. Great job, Talia. Now go have some cheese. Yes! Yeah. Chad, you better hope they like cheese. All right, Fetchers. Welcome to the Fetch Final Face-Off. It's been the best Fetcher. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. If you know the answer, you may buzz your burger. The burger will then light up the gnomes of knowledge. Each question is going to be worth 25 points. Whoever has more points at the end of the face-off will be crowned the Fetch Grand Champion and receive the incredible grand prize. Okay. Your solar car victory earned you each 100 points. Isaac, that puts you at 1,337 and a half points. And Liza, you're just 22 and a half points behind with 1,315 points. Are you ready? No. A little nervous there, Isaac? Yeah. All right. Then let the final face-off begin. The biggest bargain that Bethany and Brian found at the Brimfield Fair was on what item? Isaac. Golf clubs. Correct. Who is this person, really? Let me take off this welding mask. Liza. Gamma Ray Person Man, otherwise known as Grandma Ruffman. Nicely done, Liza. Uh. If you were to write down the names of all the season four fetchers, what letter would appear most often? Liza. A. Yes, the letter A. Yeah, Liza. What are the initials? of my nephew's superhero identity, and what do they stand for? Isaac. UG Ultra Glenn. Correct! What is the name of the cat burglar who stole the flowers I got for Charlene? Liza. Lep. Lep. <laughs> is correct! What two senses do turkey vultures use to find food? Liza. Sight and their smell. Correct! What animal featured in Super Fetchers can see in the infrared part of the spectrum? That's mine! Isaac. Uh, the snake. Correct. Also would have accepted pit vipers. Who does this voice belong to? The helmet of victory is almost within my grasp. Liza. 
Inspector Dijon. Yes, correct! What secret cookie ingredient caused this reaction in Sterling? It just tastes bad. Liza! Wasn't it celery? Incorrect. Isaac! Spinach. Correct! Last question, Fetchers. Name each Fetcher and the challenge I sent them on by themselves. Liza. Brian was ballet. Sterling was the baseball challenge. Bethany was the conduct in the Boston Pops. Talia did shrimp boating. Isaac did penguins. And I did the goats. Yes! Wow! Yeah. Yeah. This is an extremely tight contest. Liza, with 1,465 points, and Isaac, you are a mere 27 and a half points behind with 1,437 and a half points. The final part of the final fetch face-off is worth 100 points. Yeah. yeah! Isaac, if you look to your left and Liza look to your right, you'll see a stack of blocks with words on them. They're not just any words. They are nothing less than the entire electromagnetic spectrum. You must stack the blocks in order from lowest to highest energy, but watch out, because some of the blocks aren't part of the spectrum at all. When you think you have the block stacked properly, we stop and we will check to see if you are correct. My team of experts, Blossom and, well, Blossom, will confirm your achievement. If you've gotten it wrong, then both of you must keep going until we have a winner. You two ready? Yep. Yeah, we're good. Set, go! Yeah, Yes. 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 Remember to stack them on the red mat. Four. No, wait, camera is one. Oh, yeah. 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 Go. You got this, guys! Now I can't remember what I did. Um, you guys got this. Ooh. You got this. Oh. Okay. All right, bro. Oh. 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 You got, got it. it. Liza says she's done, so stop building, stop building! Okay, we've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation. Then we go up to visible light, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, then ultraviolet light, x-rays, and finally gamma rays. Blossom, final verdict. Blossom says Liza's tower is correct. <laughs> Liza is our match grand champion. I want to that is absolutely unbelievable. I'm going to sit down. Oh. I am sending your wall of fame glossy right now. Really? Congratulations, Liza. Thanks, Ra. Great job, Isaac. Thanks. And I don't just mean today. I mean through this whole turkey vulturing, incredible hawk costume wearing season. Rafa, roll the tape and play it for the lad he wants to see his highlights. You're going to be playing Mrs. Isaacson. This is too hot. I'm a cool guy. Keep me alive. Yeah! Yeah! You totally saved us. We should probably use our hawk amazing abilities. Ugh. Liza, Liza, have a look at this, my champion. I'm gonna cry now. Buffy's <laughs> awesome. Buffy's awesome. Oh my goodness. Buffy's awesome. Buffy's awesome. He's a bad dog. He's coming. He's coming. I'm stuck in the dark. Yes, sir. Yes. And now it's time to present the grand prize. So sorry. I, I, I've been thinking so much about the helmet of victory. I, I didn't get a grand prize this year. Oh. Blossom, what do you mean I have a perfectly good prize to give? The helmet of victory. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. You know, she may be right, Ruffy. Oh, yeah, but. <sighs> okay. Liza, all season I've been watching you and the rest of the fetchers perform the most amazing feats of skill. And, well, if anyone deserves the helmet of victory, it's you. <laughs> So try it on, Liza, because it's all yours, champ. The season four grand prize. Whoa. Whoa. Rob, this is wow. awesome. Oh, Thank you. On. Well, it would have looked pretty good on me, I'll tell you, but yeah. it looks great on you, Liza. <laughs> and so it's another season of Fetch with Ruff Ruff Bay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Miss you. Bye, guys. need a clean up in the studio. Ah, uh, Blossom, what started as a dog without a helmet of victory ended as a dog with the helmet of victory, who then decided to give up his helmet of victory. 
Man, my mom and pop would be so proud. But they disappeared when I was just a pup. Ah, alive! Alive! What? Who is? Mom and pop! Alive! Alive! Ah! Mom and pop are alive? Blossom, Chet, this season may have just ended. But next season's adventure has just begun! Uh, but maybe we should make some lunch first. Yeah, 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 yeah